All right, gang. What's up? As you can see, we're starting right on schedule today. Not even a single drop of sweat was had. Let's get rid of this. Alright, and we pull it across to this one. Not playing on the PS4, but I've got it set up for my PS4 tab at the moment. Let me just adjust some things here, put some clothes on, fix my makeup, etc. Alright, bang. Nice. Hello. Welcome. I've had an extremely lazy morning. I don't know what would have given that away, but let me just adjust my volume sliders here. I'm going to make the volume loud and then I'm going to make it kind of quiet again. All right, just bear with me. I'm not going to keep it at this level. So if we put this up to like here, and then what I'm going to do is take down the sound of Final Fantasy a notch. Now, the weird thing about this game is that you can actually customize the audio settings from the PC port menu. Um, which is probably because it is that, a PC port, it's not, this was a console game and normally console games don't let you really, maybe modern ones do, like let you go into the settings and like take down a, a bunch of sliders, but like, there's not actually a, I'll show you guys soon, in case you don't believe me, there's nothing in here that allows me to like turn down the game's audio, so it's just kind of fixed, um, luckily I have been able to adjust it via Windows as kind of mixer thing, which is nice, but I don't know if it's quite, ideal you know but uh welcome guys thanks for coming to visit today who have we got today in the chat let me just i've got a weird setup where this game's like kind of bordered it's kind of like borderless full screen so i do have to like sh alt tab every time i want to like scroll across but it should be fine uh, i've just realized we got a we got a host from jimmy the hot pocket and we've also now just had a host from spyro so thanks for that guys i massively appreciate that um, we've got Nye in the chat, we've got Serenity here, we've got Mr. Snowblower, we've got Spyro, and Riley as well. <laughs> Welcome, gang. How's things, how's things? Wait, this isn't PUBG, I think you made a mistake, Wolfie. Snowblower, I think you're obsessed with PUBG, dude. I'm starting to worry about you, you're gonna need some sort of weird counselling. Save me, Mr. Snowblower, I'm beyond shit, says Serenity. I've just entered, hold on, let me see. I've just entered PUBG on training mode for the first time. It's terrifying and I can't find the ammo. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> All right, gang. Welcome, 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 welcome. We'll probably um, see a lot of random people in and out the stream today because we are doing a bit of change of pace. I mean, yesterday we were playing God of War. We finished that game up, did most of the stuff in the game. And uh, now we're moving on to something new. I really was debating for a long time last night what I wanted to play next. Um, I've wanted to play Final Fantasy XIII for quite some time with you guys. It's a game I've played before in the past. I'll talk about this a little bit more later because when we start the actual gameplay, I will give you guys like a full kind of rundown. We'll, we'll obviously be starting a new game today um, from the beginning. I played it in the past, but again, I'll, I'll discuss all that shit later. Um, the only thing that was holding me back from playing this game um, on PC is that the the port is a bit jank. I mean this game I think it was released I mean it says down down the bottom here under my face uh, 2009 2010 2014 I think the game came out in 2014, but um, That's something I'll need to check when I do my my YouTube VODs later on I'll, I'll probably edit all that info into the description of YouTube, but um yeah the PC port is a bit weird for frame rate, and I don't know how good we're gonna end up having this game but hopefully um, it's been patched a couple of times since the last time I played this. I've got about, I don't know, I want to say like two hours PC time, but obviously I have played the game before in the past. I've never actually finished the game, so this will be quite a good experience. So uh, yeah, I didn't know what I wanted to play today, and I was trying to decide last night, but I think this is one of the best options we've got. It shouldn't take us too long to get through it, but it will keep us um, busy for a few days at least. And then in addition to that, I also think that it'll be a nice change of pace from all the hacking and slashing that we've been doing with God of War. Now, maybe that'll, um, maybe I'll come to change my mind about that later on, but for the most part, um, yeah, I think it'll be an alright run through. We'll see. I don't know how to help. I'm at work. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I will die with honour again and again. Now I understand when, when you said I'm beyond shit. But alright, nice. Don't worry, me and Skilltree did that last night when we played. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I actually uninstalled PUBG last night to install this game. So, uh, whoops. I'm starting to wonder if this, uh, how much of the audio in this game is going to be copyright on YouTube. So we'll, we'll have to figure that out uh, when the time comes later on. But for the most part, it should be alright. 
Um, this game is heavily, heavily story driven, obviously, being a Final Fantasy. There's characters that are going to have mood swings, there are characters that are going to um, deal with a bunch of emotions and stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think how to describe it without talking too much pish, but um, my point is that it's quite it's one of these games that when we're grinding, there'll be plenty of time for us to talk. But obviously, during the beginning of the game, particularly when the scene is being set, when the environments, the, the beginning environments are being set, it will be quite hard for me to chit chat with you guys. So I will apologise in advance for that. Emotions, gross. Hey, Jerry, what's up, man? OMG, playing my favourite game, and I can't even watch sad face, sad face, sad face, sad face. Jerry, welcome, man. Are you at work just now, dude? Or are you just heading out to work, I guess? Uh, that sucks. Um, yeah, we'll have to do... I'm just... What I'm doing right now, guys, is I'm just looking at my audio sliders and just trying to gauge how we're going to try and adjust this as we play, but... We'll figure it out as we go. Jack, when the clock strikes midnight on March the 12th, all uh, I'll be leaving Kansas for good to move back to my hometown in Denver, Colorado. Are you travelling back to Denver, Colorado on a pumpkin, Riley? Why why is why are you waiting uh why are you waiting midnight? Why why do you have to wait until midnight to travel? That's a bit bizarre. Mm-hmm. Because I'm moving. Well, I hope the I hope the journey goes well, Riley. I hope everything goes smoothly and that you and your folks get on okay. Are you looking forward to going back to Denver or nah? How are you feeling about that one? Talk to me. Alright. Let's do a couple of disclaimers, guys, for the start of our YouTube VODs, because I always try and put this in at the beginning. Um, this will be a brand new Let's Play from the start of the game. We'll be probably playing on normal mode, although I may adjust some of the battle speeds and things like that as I play. I played this game when I was very young, when it first released on the PlayStation 3 back in the day. All of my mates got it. I, I got it. Um, my initial impressions of the game when I first got it was that there were aspects I liked and aspects I didn't like. We'll see how it holds up today. Obviously, graphically, uh, the game's still pretty stunning and probably still way above some of the more modern games, which is a bit incredible. I always thought that the cutscenes and the music, in particular for Final Fantasy XIII, um, were pretty spectacular. I mean, look how good this game looks. It's actually it's actually incredible. Um, I never actually finished this game when I was uh, younger, though. I didn't actually see the end, and I got to the final chapter, and then I just forgot to go back and play it one day, I guess. Which is probably not a good sign if we're getting into it now, but this game is, despite being controversial when it first released, is beloved by a lot of fans, and so I'm going to try and play it with as much of an open mind as possible. Um, some people love it, some people hate it. I think I was kind of somewhere in the middle when um, when I uh, first played it, but we'll get into all that discussion as we play through, because we'll have plenty of time later. Um, I'm going to cancel this just now and put us into the new game menu. I will be adjusting things as we play through, folks, so if my webcam is too big or it's overlapping some of the, the overlay, some of the HUD, you can see right now I'm blocking like the new game, load game, things like that. When we get into the combat, into the fight, if I am um, blocking some of the, the game, I will readjust all of my stuff. Uh, I'll move some of my overlay, I'll move me, and we'll try and find a spot on the screen where everything is comfortable. Uh, similarly with our audio levels, if the game is too loud as I start to play, don't worry about it because we will adjust moving forward. Again, this game's got a kind of weird, awkward um, audio system in terms of like being able to adjust it. There is no way for me to adjust it in the game itself, so I'll have to do that through Windows. We're playing on the PC version, and uh, I have got a new game slot, but it's only like two hours in. We're going to be starting from the beginning, obviously. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all that you guys need to know. I think without further ado, we should just dive right in. Hey, Ollie, welcome to the stream. Jimmy's here. Personally, fair, um, f personally, Final Fantasy XIII gets too much hate. Yeah, as I said, guys, I know a lot of you guys like it. A lot of you guys are going to be a bit mixed. But um, I think this is worth our time. I think it's worth trying. We'll see how we get on. And once we finish the game, I'll be able to give you guys my updated, um, fully personalised opinions of the game and tell you whether I thought it was good or not. Okay? But, um, yeah. I say we just go for it. You guys comfy? Make yourself comfy. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and go on normal mode. There's no way I'm playing this game on easy. Um, let's try it. You've selected normal difficulty for battles to change this difficulty any time. And begin playing on normal, yeah. So we can adjust it if we need to, but that's not probably going to happen. If we come across an enemy that is too hard for us, we most likely will just uh, grind up somewhere and try and, you know, improve our characters. But here we go. Opening cutscene. Um, I will probably get out of the way for this, just because it's, I mean, the cutscenes in this game are fucking absolutely top-notch. So, uh, yeah, here we go. The beginning of the end. You guys in the chat, let me know if you want uh, more volume, okay? The 
if anybody doesn't know the premise of Final Fantasy XIII, don't worry about it, we'll get into it as we play, okay? I'll be learning a lot and remembering a lot as well, so we can kind of do like a kind of understanding together. Just gets hit in the face by a signpost. Decapitated before the game even begins. Give me that. What the I meant away. All right, straight into the action. If you guys have no idea what's like, if you have no idea what's going on, guys, don't even worry about it. All right, we'll talk about it in a minute. Welcome the other one one eight to the stream and to everybody else who's just popping in. It's good to have you guys here. Is that the guard sword? The guard scorpion? Did not die in Midgar. Hey, hey, Couple. been a long long time since I did this battle system so here we go I guess there is some sort of tutorial to take us through active time battle tutorial all right uh, I'm gonna actually view this guys I know this is gonna be miserable for a lot of players but just bear with me the time gauge uh, the, t the time flows continuously through the gauges watch as they slowly charge so this is uh, this is how this system works characters perform actions by ex uh, expending charged ATB gauges which means consuming them basically okay and it depends on which one you select. Select auto battle to queue up commands tailored to your situation, then set abilities to specify individual commands as you see fit. Cool. For now, try the auto battle. Go. Two attacks have been placed in your command menu. As you learn new abilities, you'll be able to do new commands. So right now, all we do is push the X button and there's like a basic kind of slappage that goes on. Um, again, I'm just try trying to figure out a way where I can not be in front of all this to let you guys see it. Um, I'll just feel like my mouse is also moving the keyboard. Or sorry, moving the thing. What about if I make myself like kind of um I don't know how good this is gonna get guys, but we can as I said we can fiddle about with this as we play on. I'm just trying to find something to get us started for the begin for the beginning of the playthrough at least. We'll we'll sit here for a minute. It's probably gonna be annoying, but we'll figure it out. Next you'll need to choose the target um 
need to choose the target of your attacks when fighting multiple enemies. Select your target using the... Yeah, 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 okay, okay. You can only face this enemy or one enemy at a time, so the choice is simple. So here we go. Once you finish your attacks, enter more commands and continue fighting until you've defeated the enemy. Note that you will only be able to control lightning. Good luck. So we're going to send lightning into attack. Uh, she looks like she actually got cancelled there. So I'm going to go in again. She's getting kind of slapped here. I don't actually know if she's landed any attacks yet. <laughs> there we go. Oh shit, dude. Is this real? So much madness. Yo, Jcram, thank you for gifting a sub over to the other 118. The, the other 118, welcome to the stream, man. And uh, welcome to the Wolfpack. Jcram, thanks for kicking off the, the streaming style. Alright, let me focus for a sec, guys. Alright, okay, yep. No, right through my cutscenes. Yep, no. Really? We're doing, we're doing this now? We're doing this now? Right through it? We, sh we literally just started. Alright, we literally, thank you for the gifted sub, Jimmy the Hot Pocket, welcome officially to the Wolfpack, man, J-Crab, thank you for uh, the two gifted subs. <laughs> so huh? Alright, oh, I'm only missing you, thank you, man. So this female here, guys, that's hanging out with the afro guy is Lightning. Lightning is obviously the main protagonist of this game. Very controversial character, but very strong as a female character and very useful in the game. And this is Saz. They perform different roles in terms of the battle system, but uh, you'll figure that out later. Alright, here we go. Round two, I guess? Alright. So as you can see, the, the interesting thing about this fight is that there's this charge bar at the top kind of right. Can I do an ability here? Let's do Blitz. See what Blitz looks like. So instead of just queuing up... Couch Potato, welcome to the Wolfpack, welcome back. Four months with us, you've been J Cram. Thank you for the, the third gifted sub. You guys are crazy. I'm really grateful. Alright, let's just mash our way through this. The interesting thing I wanted to point out is that up in the top right, guys, you see this kind of stagger bar that's building up. Um, it, right now it's filled up with 115% out of 300. We're getting kind of close to dying here. I don't actually know if I have any items, though. Well, oh, I do. Alright. There we go. So we got a 5 star rating for that. Um, I guess that gives us more um, money, I think, later on in the game. I actually can't remember how the battles work in this, but... Anyways, boss defeated. We also got 6 potions for that fight, which is a bit crazy, but okay. We used 2 in the fight. See you later now. Take it easy. I forgot how great the music is in Final Fantasy XIII. Yeah. Since Sidious, welcome, man. The music is top notch. It is pretty, pretty spectacular. And there you go. I mean, you are Sanctum, aren't you? What are you doing trying to stop the Purge? Why don't you tell me that? I was a soldier. Hey, where do you think you're going? Man. <laughs> Chocobo, we just can't catch a break, can we? Yeah, that's a good question. So here we go, Hanging Edge. This is us actually getting to kind of start to play the game a little bit. As with a lot of games, they want to, f I guess they, when they were designing this, they really wanted to throw the players right into the deep end with a kind of epic kind of boss fight. They really want, like, 
They want critical fans of the series to obviously enjoy these kind of moments, but then obviously they're trying to encourage new people to get into the franchise, so if you've got your average Joe picks this game up, they want to feel like they're getting a bit of bang for their buck, I guess, which is why they kind of throw you in at the deep end, but uh, current control scheme seems fine, let's keep that. Um, we can always adjust this if we want to later on, I'll go for standard, um, sure. This is probably something I'm going to get need to get the hang of as a playthrough anyway, but we'll see. You possess an advanced digital journal known as the data log. So this is one of the things that's interesting about Final Fantasy XIII. The game actually gives you all the information you kind of need to understand what's going on in this game because there is a lot of kind of confusing uh, themes going on. Some people might argue that it's not confusing and it's straightforward, but I think for me, when I was playing in my teenage body as a youngster, trying to come to grips with a lot of the terms in this game can be a little bit overwhelming. If somebody told me that, I wouldn't argue with them. Um, but the dialogue here is basically your way of keeping up to date with everything, so we'll probably use this feature a lot more than I expected we would. Sure we can get through here. Um, if we, I mean, if we go into it right now, how to actually get into the dialogue uh, triangle. You're going to get so much information that, you know, arguably the game should kind of teach you as you play through, but um, at the same time, it's nice of them to put this in, I guess. We'll, we'll discuss this in a little bit more. I don't want to get too bogged down in it right now, but um, yeah, events, chapter one. The fires, uh, the fires of fate. So you've got this kind of beginning to the game where, again, Lightning and Sazer are two characters that we know so far. There were other car uh, characters in the train at the beginning. Lightning is your main character, okay? For anybody who's never seen this game before or getting introduced to it just now, Lightning is your main character. Uh, she is very comparable to how Clyde, uh, Cloud, Clyde, Cloud Strife kind of acts at the start of Final Fantasy VII. She's like a male version of Cloud, right? She's kind of, she's a very strong melee soldier. She uses a sword. She's got blonde hair. She's very standoffish. Our friends try and talk to her and she's quite a hard ass most of the time, but we'll see how that develops in the future. Anyways, Lightning and Sazer held aboard a military purge train along with a group of civilians destined for exile. In stark contrast to the uncertain and despairing people around her, Lightning appears determined and focused because, again, she's a badass. She seizes upon an incident of uh, inattention to disable a guard and her impressive display inspires Sazer and the other civilians to take up arms against the soldier. So, all we know right now is that we're on a train bound for a purge, whatever that is. Let's just play and find out more. You guys alright? You guys are doing a lot of talking right now and I apologise for not um, interacting, but I want to keep this flowing as best I can. Um, the other 118 actually says, Star Rankings affects TP regen and the item drop chances, so there you go. Let's uh, let's have a look around. Now, this game is kind of... Um, do I want to... I don't know if I want to have... We, are, we have got like a, a weird kind of inverted camera. And I don't know what my frame rate is in this area, but the, port, the PC port can be a bit jank at times. It feels weird being in the centre of the... Uh, it feels weird being in the center of the screen as well, but we'll figure that out later. Alright, so here's our save options. We are going to go ahead and just save over this one. Fuck it. Chapter 1. Alright. Uh, I think I will actually um, just quickly adjust my... Uh, get away from me. We can also buy potions and shit there as well, guys. I just want to go into my settings and fix my camera controls. Um, standard? Is that going to be like up to... It's still down, uh, up to go down and down to go up. Why would that be the case? Maybe not, actually. All right. Frame rate seems and feels a bit laggy, but hopefully it looks okay for you guys on uh, on Twitch. We'll, we'll talk about it later on. Um, many and various enemies stalk the roads that you must travel upon entering the enemies. Uh, this detection radius, the mini-map in the upper right corner of the screen will flash a warning coming into contact when issue a battle. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, that's how this game kind of works. You just run into your enemies. It's a bit, a bit strange, but we're just going to auto battle. Let's go for the, the Warden A here. So I think what this game tried to do when it first kind of introduced this battle system is it kind of wanted to make you kind of feel like you were actually, um, I don't know, there's a lot more running and moving about, whereas obviously the older Final Fantasy games that kind of preceded this, all the characters would stand in a line and wait for their turn to attack, whereas this one they kind of run in and out, which is kind of nice, um, I guess. All right, we're going to accept all that. Again, guys, tell me about the audio and we can adjust it as we go through. Um, I just want to check because I remember there being like kind of uh, items dotted about on this bridge. Can I do another one with this? No. Alright, we're going to get items in a minute, I would imagine. Hmm. Game feels alright ish. Again, we are playing on the PC version, guys. We can't. Uh, I would have had to have got my PS3 out if I wanted to uh, play this game old school, but. Hopefully the game will be all right. We'll see. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's kick our ass 
the kick, kick these guys in the butt. We're going to just make our way quickly through this kind of bridge area because it is fairly straightforward. Um, Final Fantasy XIII, I feel like, went under a lot of strain, and you guys can tell me what you think about this. I'm totally open to discussions about it. I don't have, like, a really solid opinion on it, but when this game came out, it got kind of cri uh, criticised for being, like, super, super linear. You know, a lot of your paths are a straight line. Um, but in, in all honesty, a lot of Final Fantasies kind of follow that suit um, up until this game's release. Um, again, there are other issues at stake, but I, uh, I, we'll see how much it bothers us in the long run. Sometimes having a straight line game can actually be quite soothing. Um, but yeah, we got our blitz off here. Just go for regular attacks, I guess. I don't know if she actually uses one ability. If you kill someone with your first attack when you've got two lined up, I wonder if she carries the second attack across to the other enemy. Alright. Cool. And another potion for the road. Now, do I have to check if Lightning is, uh, what is her HP like right now? 200? Is that, is that full? 220. I don't know if her HP goes back to full after each battle or not. It's been such a long time since I've played this. Alright. We will be keeping an eye out for, uh, items lying about here. No, I don't want to do that. There, there we go. There's one right there. So these are the item chests in the game, guys. This is what we're looking out for as we travel through. These things are going to contain some, some goodies. Take the potion. Alright, guys. See you later. Take, take it easy, Spyro. Thanks for hanging out, man. I will be doing a lot of webcam flickage, guys. I do apologize. Let's see how we go on here. Do we want a blitz here? I kind of feel like I want a blitz. If they stand still, it'll be a good blitz. Yeah, there we go. That's fucking clean. I'm gonna do that again, actually. Try and get a. Oh, never mind. That was a fail. Alright. Get him, get him, get him. Alright. There's a stagger coming through. It's pretty nice. Not that it matters. We'll have a look at the stagger bar a bit more as we play through later, guys. This guy's pretty tough. But he missed his attack. You see that Saz is kind of ranged. He's just chilling in the back, pinging people with his pistols. He's going to end up doing that um, pretty much the whole game. He's not a melee kind of fighter. He's got his own role, as I, as I discussed earlier. You, what you have, guys, is in this particular Final Fantasy, you have characters who perform certain abilities when they're fighting. Um, not too unlike other Final Fantasies, but this game has a very kind of unique system. Um, we two potions for our troubles here. Saz is, I, I believe Saz is a Ravager, and Lightning is a Commando, uh, or a Commander. I can't remember how it's pronounced, but we'll get into that later. Uh, you have other characters later on that are going to be like tank um, characters, you're going to have healer characters, uh, you're going to have... Um, people who buff your team with um, like kind of uh, speed buffs and things like that, and then you're gonna have people who debuff the enemy f enemies. If that the enemies. So, what can I buy from the shop here? The unicorn mart. Let's have a look at this. Buy. We can buy a phoenix down, but we don't have enough money. We only have 200 gil, which is down in the bottom left, um, and we don't need to buy potions because we have 19 of them. So let's just keep playing. We'll be able to discuss and chit chat a little bit more once we get out of this area. I am going to fight as many of these guys as possible to try and get some XP and whatnot. We got a preemptive strike here where basically all these guys are very close to uh, being staggered, which we then get off. Staggered enemies take extra damage, I believe, so. Yeah, there we go. We want to try and take him out of the game ASAP. Unfortunately, we missed the stagger on this guy, but I think it was better to prioritize the big dude than to. Uh, yeah, really clean fight. That was nice. Yeah, 13 buffs and debuffs, Craigasm. Mm -hmm. Blitz is always good. Yeah, I agree, guys. Right now, they're just regular folks attacking. No paradigm shifts yet, says Ollie. Yep, spot on. Paradigm shifts we're going to unlock in a little bit, guys. Uh, right, I can go up here to the left, or I can jump over that. I think there's a chest up here. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy. Iron Banco. All right, nice. I think I can equip that straight away. Um, inventory? Or would it be actual, it might actually be equipment. 
Um, let's go ahead and put this on lightning here. Iron Bangle gives us 50 plus HP. Why, why not? Good find. Um, if we go along here, is there any difference? I don't think so. One would have let us jump over and you could potentially miss a bangle there if you're not paying attention, so... We gotta keep our eyes out for little little bits and bobs. Um, there's... I don't know how Saz got in front of us here. Am I running backwards? No, no, we're going the right way. Alright. Do I have something in here? Yeah. Well, I am heading away here. 50 gil, which is our money. That's our currency in the game. If anybody's never played Final Fantasy before, that is our currency. Alright, but why does uh, why does he have a chicken in his hair? It's a chocobo. It's a little baby chocobo, Serenity. Those are, um, although Final Fantasy, ha um, each Final Fantasy has different characters for the most part and different kind of uh, environments and worlds, some things are consistent amongst all the Final Fantasy games and um, certain creatures and whatnot. Um, chocobos are a consistent creature. They're, uh, they're normally, in fact, they're almost always really good things. I don't think there's ever been an evil chocobo, although I could be wrong on that front. Um... I guess Chocobo is just like a nice way to kind of, if you're a fan of the Final Fantasy franchise and you pick this game up on release, it would be nice to see a Chocobo quite early in the game because you're like, ah yeah, this is Final Fantasy, this is what I was signing up for when I bought the game, so. Alright. Preemptive strike. Rebels. So much for the element of surprise. Okay, that was a fail lightning. A preemptive strike is what we did earlier where um when you um when you bang into enemies and they're not aware, you get like the chance to instantly stagger them. So unfortunately, we we didn't get the chance to to do that. Even though Lightning quite blatantly <laughs> she quite blatantly shouted preemptive strike and probably announced the fact that they were going to try and a sneak attack, which is kind of ironic. But uh, I'm going to just view the tutorial for items, even though we kind of know how items work. Um, go ahead and do so. It looks like you have some potions to restore HP when consumed. The number next to the item's name tells you the items or how many you have left. Um, Press enter. I want the game to tell me if it uses one or two. Uh, it says all allies. Okay, potion heals your entire team. You do not need to specify a target. Use, does that count as one potion? Whenever you find yourself in a pinch, don't hesitate to use a potion. Remember, if your allies are still standing, it's game over if the enemy manages to KO lightning. So again, lightning is who you need to keep alive at all times. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but... Alright, maybe I should have went for the little soldier guy first. I don't know. No, that's not. Oops. Well, I didn't mean to do that. That was uh, silly. There we go. Don't know if we'll get... Oh, we're still fighting. Holy shit. I don't know if we'll get a five star for that one. That seemed like a bit... Oh, we did anyway. Okay, cool. Wicked Fang and pushing. Nice. Alright, so I'm going to run up here quite quickly. I am not going to run up there quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't actually get any CP during chapters one and two. Okay. There's no time. Thank you, guys. Then what do you suggest we do? Quiet. Okay. Hey, hey, hey! Wait! Uh, <laughs> hey, leave me! Uh, let go! The hell no! Uh, you're my only way out of here! Uh, uh, no! Uh, 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 uh oh, you broke it. Hey, that might get us across. Right there. So as you can see, Lightning's quite a cold ass. She was happy to just leave Saz there. Right? Looks that way. Oh, look at the disgust in her face. She's so angsty. Alright, I'll let you guys decide if you love it or hate it. Right, so against Lightning's trained, I think what she did there was some sort of like magic ability. Um, she was going to use some sort of magic to like travel across. She is a soldier. She's been trained, obviously, for combat. She knows what she's doing. Um, let's just fight these guys. Again, if we don't get any XP for this, it doesn't make a lot of sense to uh, to fight these dudes. But we'll do it anyway. Give us a bit of practice. I think Blitz is insane in this fucking starting area, so I'm just going to keep using it over and over. It also looks like it's staggering the, the bad guys quite quickly as well. There we go. Alright, right in the middle. I will use a potion here. There we go. So I guess we only use one potion when we heal both of our team. Alright, 
bullets again. Sure. I thought he just really wanted fresh eggs. I mean, there might be that involved. Who knows? Maybe he's uh, he's simply carrying his chocobo to stay full. I don't know. <laughs> I can't imagine the chocobo produces very big eggs, though. There we go. Staggered and dead. Cool. Maybe it's both. Nah, there's no evil chocobos to my knowledge. Always been faithful companions, yeah. I guess by fighting these enemies, we do actually get some resources, guys, which isn't bad. I relax, as I just want to have a little peek around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been this way, right? This is the way we came from earlier. I think the camera just inverted itself when the thing crashed in. And the bridge broke. Okay. So, I was going to travel up here earlier, anyway, before the cutscene happened. So, let's just go ahead and do so. Seems to be in working order. Yes, we save our game here. What I would love to set up, guys, but I feel like it's going to take too much time to do it now. I might do it during a cutscene, but... I need to set up like three different camera scenes. I need to set one on the left, one in the middle, and then one off so that I can sit and watch the cutscenes with you guys while not blocking the subtitles because that gets really fucking annoying. Um, just bear with me and I'll try my best to kind of accommodate the game. This this game takes up quite a lot of space. Um, admittedly, when they made it, they probably didn't expect a little ginger fuck to be sitting talking shit over their game, so it's understandable. I could go up in a top corner, but then it makes my green screen look like I'm floating about, which is a bit bizarre. Whereas chickens are the worst, uh, the work of Satan, says Serenity. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to have a lot more cutscenes coming up, guys, so I'm just going to push through for the time being. Try and adjust as we go. Alright. Yikes. Pretty sure Lightning would have just been absolutely destroyed there. Oh look, he he, he politely took time to uh, not attack us head on like he was about to. Uh, view the tutorial, sure. To initiate an attack, use auto battle and select attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll just auto battle here. See the displayed beneath your target's name is known as, as the chain gauge. Yeah, yeah. So this is the percentage bar, okay? I don't know why it starts at 100%. It doesn't really make sense. I don't know why they didn't just work up to 100%, but it is what it is. Um, so when we attack, we build that mirror, is what the game's going to tell us now. Uh, when you attack an enemy, it's change gauge fills. The percentage is called the chain bonus damage. Uh, they'll take more damage. Um, the more times you hit an enemy, the more damage it will take from subsequent attacks. Continue pummeling the Marauder and chain your bonus until the gauge is full. So let's get, go ahead and do that. I've almost actually propped them immediately, which is pretty good. If that bar falls down to zero, guys, it will actually... Um, cancel your chance to stagger them. So you want to try and maintain damage in the same enemy as as the game suggests. Once the gauge is full, the further um, the one further blow will stagger your foe. A staggered enemy takes great damage when attacked. Chaining, chaining attacks to stagger powerful advers uh, adversaries is essential to defeating them. So that's what you want to do in your bosses. Basically, you want to try and stagger them as often as possible, and then basically when they're staggered, just kick the shit out of them because it's going to do um, it's going to do the most damage. Once they're staggered, by the way, you can't like, um, it's not like you can maintain the stagger or anything like that. It just will drain until they're, until they're defeated. So we're just going to let, um, I don't know why Saz is being picked on right now, but he is. We just need to keep an eye on him and hope, hopefully he doesn't go down. As soon as we kill this guy, we should be uh, in a better spot. In fact, I might not even have to waste a potion here. Nice. Alright, that was pretty smooth. We're going to get another cutscene here, I'm not entirely sure. We get a credit chip for that, whatever that is. All right. So, soldier, what's your angle? I'm here for the last donut. What? Classified military info? Huh? What's the matter? You quit, didn't you? Did you think I'm gonna go out there and just? Tell everybody your secret. My angle. I'm after the foul sea. Possibly the most bizarre ignition system ever. I've just realised, guys, my audio is going to be a little bit out of sync, but I'm going to fix that in a second as well. I forgot to adjust that today before I started streaming. I'll do it right now, actually.
choosing to leave Cocoon and participating in this migration. <laughs> migration? More like extermination. Huge. You stay here. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. These people need heroes. Oh god, I forgot about this. Here. You keep your cool, and they will too. You got it? Got it. So this is snow, guys. What's our motto? The army's no match for Nora. Jesus, that needs work. <laughs> All right, snow is uh oh god. So I'm hoping that I have a better impression of snow this time around when I play the game, and I'll explain why. Um, the whole, the whole these people need heroes angle is one of Snow's favorite things to start uttering in the beginning of the game. So prepare for that, guys. He's gonna say that quite a lot. Um. So here we go, we get control of snow, Saz and lightning get a chill for a bit. Let's see what we can get here. We get any upgrades? 50 gil. Delightful. 50 gil was honestly kind of sucky. Um, one quick note guys before I play on and before we talk about the game anymore. Um, I have actually adjusted my audio real quick. Um, we were playing on the PS4 yesterday and because I was capture card on the PS4 I've got this delay setup where the audio and the game are all put together in sync so everything looks nice. And when I came back to PC I actually forgot to change it so if it looked like things were happening before I was reacting to it or if I was reacting before things happened and um, if any of you guys are quite fast with your eagle eye there was like a three a, a three quarters of a second delay but I've adjusted it now so everything should be totally in sync. We're, we're completely live when I play okay so I should be reacting as you guys see things now. Um, but yeah, this is Snow. Snow is actually quite a baller character, and I was actually... Snow was one of the characters that actually brought me back to play this game, because he is one of these dudes that just literally fights with his hands. He has no weapons, as far as I can remember. When he goes into combat, he literally just punches the shit out of things, which is actually really cool, in my opinion. Um, the downside is Snow starts off quite... Um, he starts off quite kind of... Uh, He's very loud and obnoxious, shall we say. Not in a rude way, or he's, he's not trying to be an arsehole. He's just, he's just kind of like really naive. Um, again, people will have different opinions, but I'm kind of looking forward to playing as Snow. When the combat comes later on, I'm pretty sure Snow becomes just a full-on tank. I think he's like a kind of tank character. Um, or a sentinel, as they're called in this game. So we'll see. Hey Vince, what's up man? Welcome. And Lawless as well. Hey guys. <laughs> if you have to acknowledge your, yourselves over and over that you are the heroes, it's kind of it's kind of worrying. It's kind of cringe, but you also kind of learn to love it a little bit. All right, just go with it, guys. These characters that are with Snow in the background, by the way, um, these like this girl on the right who has the gun and your friend with the with the red hair on the left, not important characters, guys. Snow just has like a little posse. He's got a little band of amigos that he kind of leads in the beginning, um, and although you might see them from time to time. They're not important characters, so Snow is who you need to be focusing on here. You can like the other characters for sure, but I'm just, uh, before anybody becomes too attached to uh, the ginger guy or whatever, for whatever reason. Can I get a preemptive strike here? Nope. Did that work? No, I don't think so. Alright, so Snow just punches things. He's also got hand grenade. Let's go ahead and drop that. That was actually kind of sick. Lawless is saying, I always thought this game got over-criticised. Yeah, I think it, back in the day it, it certainly did. I think people um, kind of grew to love it a little bit more, but again, that's for you guys to decide, not me. Um, I can only give you guys my opinions on the game when I first played it, and my opinions today once we complete it, okay? But I will wait until we play the entirety of the game before we decide. <sighs> there are soldiers everywhere. Yo, boss. What's the plan? <laughs> Yo, Waka, what's up? <laughs> he does look like Waka. There's Naruto. I don't know who the fuck this is. Staple booby character. Alright. Once I fight some of these enemies, guys, I will run backwards and uh, actually check for uh, missed items behind us. 
Let's go ahead and throw our hand grenade here. The hand grenade takes quite a while to go off. Um, but I might actually use it a couple times here just to see what it's like. How much damage does it actually do? Oof, there's the stagger. Yeah, there's something sexy about like punching things to death in these kind of games. You feel the power of his punches as well. It makes like a really satisfying noise. I was actually genuinely excited to come back and play as Snow, which is bizarre because I never ever used him in my original playthrough when I was a youngster. So uh, yeah. Same plan as always. Hit him hard and hit him again. Sounds like the way I like it. Okay. The army's no match for Nora. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> He's uh, he's very lovable Snow, but as you're gonna as you're gonna see later, like Snow is your tank character. He's your big buff, punches the shit out of things character, right? But later on, you're gonna have interactions between him and Lightning that just makes you kind of feel bad for him. Um, I won't spoil too much, and we'll let the story reveal itself. But I don't know, man. I never ever used Snow um, when I was younger, which is so bizarre. Um, so maybe maybe I'll use him in this playthrough, and we'll see how good he is, how good he can be. Um, his grenades actually proven to be pretty useful right now, actually. You're getting a lot of value off the damage. There we go. It's quite nice because you can actually stagger the enemies. You can see that some of these soldiers are going to shoot, but then when we hit them, they seem to be kind of delayed a little bit, which is nice. The, ween squ the weeb squad, YOLO. We are, we're the weeb squad right now. We're Snow, snow and his weeby friends. Um, but don't even worry about it because uh, don't you kids go behind the one of the weirdest things that me and my friends used to point out in this game is Snow's uh, relationship with one of the other characters who at this point in the playthrough we haven't met yet so I won't mention who the character is but um, there's a bit of a weird dynamic going on between oh, yeah. two characters and um, maybe maybe you guys don't think it's weird maybe you guys think it's sweet and you really ship them or whatever um, I never actually ended up playing um, Lightning Returns or the third part of this 13 kind of installment, so maybe there's more development between the characters there or whatever, but I always just thought it was a bit strange. We'll talk about it when it comes, okay, and then we can have a full kind of open-minded discussions and you guys can give me all your thoughts and feelings about it. Because um, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm the weirdo, I don't know. I would be uh, first to put my hand up and admit that. Steven, what's up man, welcome. Mine was 12, but we all start somewhere. This was my first Final Fantasy, says Serenity. I did struggle to get my head around it, yeah. You'll see that there's things that happen sometimes, guys. Um, quick pointer, right? There's like the bit earlier where Lightning's like, um, first of all, they're coming for, they're coming on the purge train. They're going to pulse, whatever pulse is or whatever pulse is. And then when Saz says to Lightning, why are you here? Um, we don't even know who they're attacking, by the way, or why they're attacking, but obviously they've they've raided the city and they're attacking it. It's under attack. Lightning's kind of leading the charge. There's now rebellions from the citizens here, which is snow. Um, and Lightning says to, to Saz, she's like, I'm here for the foul sea. And everybody else is just like, what the fuck is going on? You know, there's so many things at play here. Um, so we'll just let it play it and we'll talk about it later. We can also use our data logs to try and get a better understanding as we play through. <laughs> Don't worry. No one's moving to Pulse today. We'll clear you a path out of here, so be ready Wait, to... Wait! Let me fight yeah, with you! You can't expect us to just sit here! <laughs> Could help. Yep. Please, let us help. You know the little hoods that they were that they're wearing, guys? Okay then. Volunteers front and center. See the little hoods, like that guy there. The little onesie looking thing. That looks so cozy. Oh god. Count me in. Here's yours. Take care now. Uh oh. Mel Finn coming. Don't worry, son. My life in the supermarket, this my whole life has trained me for this moment. I'm a cashier, but I can fight. Uh oh. Yeah. Moms are tough. Oh yikes. Right. It's the last one, boss. Alright, last one. Somebody take it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Duh. Yep, that's right. Hand out the um the guns to the children. Keep them safe. First impression of snow? All Alright, lay low 
and you'll be fine. We'll clear out the area. Okay. More and more characters are appearing now, guys, and some of them are actually important. Going home together. Come on, everybody up. Right. New recruits on me. All right. Ooh, we touch on the shoulder there. That's kind of hot. Don't worry, I'm going to make you a brother. Time to go, kiddo. <laughs> Ooh la la. Mum trying to find a new man. All right, I respect that. So, the two hooded characters, um, the girl that stood up and was, uh, you heard the little baby narration where she's like, my first impression of Snow that it was all talk. That's Vanille. She's important. We'll talk to her a bit more later. Got another iron bangle here, so we're gonna go ahead and equip that ASAP. Uh, equipment, we'll put it on snow for sure. The other characters can suck a dick. Um, as much as we like them. And also this mum is important as well, but I won't I won't go into it too much. Right, so for some reason... For some reason snow doesn't take up arms against these guys. He just decides to punch them to death, which is kind of manly, but also kind of like, I don't know if that's potentially an effective... Maybe he's just really bad at shooting. I don't know what his plan is here, but... You can see we've now got three characters in our roster as well, taking part in the fight. We've got uh, Godot and Lebro. Lebro? Lebro sounds better, I think. Kind of reminds me of Lebobs from Final Fantasy X. Hey, yo, Cory, what's up, dude? Nice beard, Jack? Oh, God. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, the beard. I, I don't know. It's needing tamed, for sure. But then that's what I always say. Welcome, guys. It is, it's LeBro. Because he's a bro, I get it. Alright, here's the dog things. More fighting here, guys. We just gotta push through, honestly. Um, I promise this isn't the entire game. This is just you kind of settling in. There's a lot of kind of simple and straightforward fights here. Not too much going on in terms of the story, so... Well, there's actually a lot going on in terms of the story. That was a fucking lie. But, um... The game's just trying to ease you into fighting over and over again so you feel comfortable. But mom, we have daddy back home. Daddy back home. Dude, you can tell that, um... That, uh... Mom of... Character we've not met yet is, uh... She's out there. She's... She's putting in a shift. She was like, how can I impress the dude in the trench coat with a, um... The bin bag on his head? Let's, uh, let's pretend that we can fight. Just shoots his own plane at the sky by accident. Uh oh, you guys are gonna like this. Oh my god, Dad, is that you? Oof. Heroes don't run from fights. Dude, it's the guy from Crisis. All right, let's punch the shit out of this thing. So the aim here is obviously to stagger this as uh, as quickly as possible. We want to try and get the beta, the beta, the beta behemoth. <laughs> I just realised he's called the beta behemoth. I think I want to use my grenade to try and stun, uh, try and get his stagger bar up as high as possible, because it looks like it does big. Maybe not actually. Maybe we're just literally fighting the share of this guy. Well, somebody else healed us there. That wasn't me. Oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to stagger this thing actually. So just punch it right in the face. There is an explanation as to where these monsters come from, guys, and how the monsters exist in the world alongside the soldiers and what whatnot, but we'll we'll get into that later. Let me go ahead and just drop some more grenades on this guy. I don't know where Snow carries all of his nades, but um I also don't remember as well, this is really bizarre, but I don't remember Snow having like a big bear on the back of his coat. Maybe that's because I just didn't use him. Oh god. We gotta kill this guy fast. Punch him in the face. There we go. That was close. You can exploit that weakness against the dogs. Hand grenades are fire elemental here. Okay, Roger. So we get four four star for that fight, and um, probably because Snow took a lot of damage, or we were too slow. We also get five potions for our troubles. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember the the design on Snow's jacket. Dude. That 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 seems. Uh, that did not exist in my memories. I thought you just had a plain white coat. Oh no. 
No kidding. Uh oh. Stay down. Oof, we touched there. <laughs> he fucked up. He was too busy trying to be a hero, guys. Oh no. Vincent Vex coming in with a sub. The gifted sub from Corey. That's a uh, four gifted subs we've had today, guys. Uh, four gifted subs. Three from Jcram. One, th one from uh, one th from Corey. Vincent, welcome back to the Wolfpack for eight months. Thank you so much for that, guys. Much love. Okay. Convenient rocket launcher there from Mom. Oh, I told you, didn't I? Dude, look at her bazookas. I mean, what? I don't know where she learned to shoot a rocket launcher, but she could do it. Uh oh. Oh no, 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 no. Wolfpack love. Thank you, Corey. Much love, man. Oh, oh, how did you get here? Oh god, you're dying. My uh, boner has been killed. Oh dear. <laughs> Yay! I'm, I don't know why I'm laughing. All these people are dying mercilessly. I do apologize. Oh god. There's only two big things weighing her down. Unfortunately, she can't get rid of them. I'm sorry, I'm being really rude right now. Don't you fucking think about it. You hi, hi. Stop it. Oh, not like this, dude. God forbid whoever she lands on, that person is doomed. Yo, Kyle, what's up, dude? Uh oh. So there we go, that is son of Big Boob Mom. Uh, feels bad, man. You would just watch this mom die, along with uh, Snow, who's also dead and never comes back for the rest of the game. No, I'm just kidding. He'll be alright, guys, don't worry about it. Heroes never die, am I right? Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, if only I hadn't fucked up the rocket launcher roll. Oh well, onwards. Pretty hype start to the game, in all honesty. Even if you don't have a fucking Scooby, what's going on? The cutscenes in the combat feels pretty smooth. It's an out -out massacre. Most people won't even live long enough to die on pulse. That was the idea. What? Sanctum logic. They conjured up the courage to eliminate a threat. I mean, why carry the danger all the way to pulse? Why not just stamp it out here? Well, I mean... Execution, masquerading as exile. Yeah, that's all good and stuff, but... That's all the Purge ever was. <sighs> Relocation to Pulse. How does the government get away with pulling crap like that? And you, you knew this was gonna happen? Maybe. The Purge was Psycom. Private Sanctum troops, not the Guardian Corps. Psycom, Guardian Corps. Soldiers are soldiers, aren't they? Pulse Foul C and their Lassie are enemies of the state. Tell a soldier to kill an enemy, and you really think it's gonna matter what uniform he's wearing? Might have mattered to that one. Couldn't shoot. Got himself shot instead. Rip. How about you? Hmm? Order say shoot, you pull the trigger? Fine. Forget I asked. 
Saz is quite ballsy right now. I know he's got a lot of emotions and in, in, pent up inside him, but like, would you really fuck with lightning like this? What if she just killed you? Oh my god, it's Rollerblade Eagle Boy. My only weakness. I liked how there was a bit in that cutscene, guys, where Li Lightning was like, why? And I get the point she's making, right? She's like, why would they bother taking all of the hostages to Pulse when instead they could just execute them here? And th my answer to that would be, well, look at all the fucking infrastructure damage that's happened because of the battle that's took place inside the city. Did you see that bridge a minute ago? You think that's cheap to replace? Hard taxpayer money. They should have just put them on the train. It would have been so much more sensible. All right. Let's fight this guy. This is a uh, Mur Myrmidon. Let's see if we can uh, stagger this bitch. Saz has taken a lot of damage already. For some reason, the enemies in this game love targeting Saz. I don't know why. Alright. The only thing we've got to be careful of is in case this uh, this guy pulls something big out of, his, out of his back pocket and then both our characters are killed. I think after this blitz, we uh, use an item here. There we go. Stagger? Nice. Alright, you should take a lot more damage now. Which is nice. I thought it was following you already. Apparently not, says Ka. Well, welcome. <laughs> I like how you've been subbed, Ka, and uh, the follow comes through after. That's uh, that's true respect right there. Nice. Oh, wait, you're talking to Vince? Oh, yeah, you're talking to Vince. Sorry. God bless. Alright. That makes a bit more sense, though. You know they do actually explain stuff, stuff in the cutscenes, says the other. Yeah, I know they do, but think about, um... Like, I, d I don't know how to explain it. Like, we, c we they do obviously explain kind of what's going on, but they throw around so much terminology without actually visualising what they're talking about. It's quite hard, you know? If they had, like, two concepts that they were introducing every chapter, it would maybe be easy to keep up with, but... I mean, why, why Lightning's here? Who she's working for? Who she's fighting? Um, the Lassie, Pulse, Grand Pulse... Um, all the people who are being taken out um, and exiled, like, there's so many questions that you might have as a player and sometimes, although they explain it, you not, you might not be able to, as a new player, um, see what they're talking about and know that that actually represents something um, that would answer, a, like, one of these many questions. Uh, if that makes any sense, I know I didn't really explain that well, but my point is, it is quite convoluted, in my opinion. Um, and although on second and third playthrough, maybe you know what everything is, so you can start to track it as they explain it, but I think for new players, it's a bit whack. Um, just my opinion, you don't have to agree, but uh, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. What's that? What's up? Uh, what's up with the orange bandaid, Jack? Oh, I cut my finger yesterday. I uh, was uh, out fighting crime with my samurai sword, my katana. No, I was. Uh, I was trying to open a box and I cut my finger. Oh, hi. Here. <laughs> Here's a machine gun. Pull the trigger. It kills people. It's too much, isn't it? <laughs> Face it later. Uh. Ciao! <laughs> hey, wait! All right, so that's Vanille. You said it made you happy when I smiled, didn't you? Vanille was the one that... Oh. I was afraid. I was always afraid. 
I'm sorry. I keep talking when they're talking and it's fucking annoying, I know. I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop. Vanille's the one that pointed the gun at Snow and pretended to shoot him with it, uh, which is kind of... I don't know, that's kind of kind of whack so for the, how do you figure that post -file scene the environment we're in. From the sanctums. All things being equal, I just as soon keep one of Time to jump. Yeah, I know. Hey, hey! Hey, hang on! Yeah. <laughs> what the... Hey! Uh -huh. Lara Croft cosplay. Damn. She can do it, so can we. Oh, not like this says. <laughs> wow. I am pretty sure, guys, right, that Oh, we'll talk about it in a minute. It's too much action. Come on, uh, come on. Uh, uh. Budget Waka. What about the others? They didn't die. They couldn't have died. Of course not. Hey, get a grip, <laughs> man. What's wrong with you? Uh-oh. Snow's losing his mojo. Get who home? Uh oh. I'm telling you, come on, are they trying to tell me this is cheaper? Is this cheaper than Catch. just exit like taking the prisoners to the exile camp? Come on now. Supposed to be the hero. <laughs> She's waiting there, ain't she? Your lovely bride to be. Isn't it about time you picked her up? Yeah. Guys, I'm just gonna tell you right now. If you have a friend, if you have a friend who points a gun at you as a joke mid combat, and smiles. They're not your. They're not really your friend, okay? Don't take that shit. Snow should have took the gun off him and beat the shit out of this guy. <laughs> now you're talking. Not cool, bro. Not cool. All right. In the cutscenes, we can definitely see that there are um, little items kicking about. So we want to try and pick up as much of these Stop as possible. Stop the sulking, bitch! I'ma slap this guy. I swear. All right. So what's kind of strange, guys, is that you know how Saz... Oh, here's the here's the power circle. I think that's a new weapon. You know how Saz fell from a, a great height and then the gravity caught him um, and Lightning's little... Like, our little gravity detector thing that stopped him from hurting himself? I'm pretty sure if your organs were travelling at the speed he was falling at and then he is caught and stopped suddenly, I'm pretty sure your organs would crush themselves against your the inside of your ribcage. Just, just saying. Alright, equipped. Uh, he's got Wild Bear on right now, but we have Power Circle, which will give him strength and a lack of magic. Um, I don't know how much it goes down by. Oh yeah, so we gain a lot more strength. Using this latest military amp technology then will boost the physical power of wearer. We're going to put this on, because Snow um, is not a magic user. He is a, he, a brute force tank. So we're just going to... I guess we save as well here. That was a bit much. I don't know what that's... Our, our friend's obviously getting geared up. <laughs> He's getting amped up for the fight, did you hear that? Sound like he was squeezing at a really painful number two, what the fuck was that? Stop it, behave yourself! He's just trying to scare the enemies, don't worry about it. Oh, almost got a preemptive strike. Alright, we're gonna use our, our hand grenade here. I don't know if our new ability buffs our hand grenade attack, but we're gonna try and punch something to death as well. Wait, has, has his... Dude, has Snow's design changed on the back of his coat? I feel like he had a bear, and now it's not a bear. Dude, I'm, I'm going insane. Why did I think it was a bear on his back? I don't, I'm, I'm actually drunk, I don't know. I need a nap, just going to close my eyes for uh, a snooze over in the corner. 
No probs to Annie. Uh, oh hey, Snow's best STR weapon this early. Now Snow is incredibly versatile. All right, maybe I uh, maybe I'm wrong then. Maybe we'll see. As I said, guys, I didn't use Snow too much in the class, so uh, I've got a lot of learning to do. I'm gonna go ahead and use a potion here. All right, the dot here at the back. I guess we've lost uh, Labro. I think she she was the girl with a gun. She must have obviously um perished in the wreckage or some shit. Or she's gonna turn up later. I I can't remember. You've gotten an, uh, a preemptive strike, if only Godot wasn't talking shit. Yeah, exactly, right? I think so too, Ollie. I think so. <laughs> he's too busy screaming. I don't know what he's doing. He's just trying to get hyped. Uh, I can hear an item here. Oh, I feel like I'm, I can hear an item. It's down in this little alcove. Down here? Yeah, there we go. What we got? 50 gil. 100 gil! I'll take it. Alright, let's go. Uh, nothing behind us, right? Okay, the highway to hell continues. I want every weapon ready to fire. Stay sharp. Alright, on my go. Right. There's a bear there, Vince. Don't don't even at me. Go. I think he had a bear, but I think he changed it. Yo, J Bob, what's up, man? Slap him! Alright, we'll drop a grenade here. Boop! Don't know if that was the right enemy to, to grenade, but there we go, we interrupt. Another nade for the road. I kind of wish the grenade would go off a little bit faster, though. Okay, that was a sick fight, holy shit. Clean as a whistle. Nice. One potion. Okay, are we going to be able to get this out of the way? That's a sad sound. Where's the soul? Hey squad, what's up, Jay? Oh. Okay. Hey, Gado. Yeah. If you don't know who you've got to save, you just protect them all, right? <laughs> Something on your mind? You got plenty of time for thinking on the way, hero. Oh, yikes. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine, like, Godot just crashed into a wall. <laughs> Imagine he said all that and then they have the kind of smirk and then he just plows into a wall. Would you not laugh? Convenient. Richard, what's up, man? Welcome. Welcome back, sir. How's things? Love those velocycles. Oh, she's alive! Dude, how short are those shorts, though? Asking for a friend. Since when do you care about kids? Well, I have eight of them. Uh oh. Things are about to get awkward. Didn't you have something to tell him? Yeah. All right then. But I. I'll go with you. What? All right. Trying to become Hokage. I mean, what? The army's no match for Nora. Oh no! Stop that. All accounted for. Okay. Let's keep it that way. All right. Uh oh. <laughs> Does anybody uh, who likes vanilla in the chat and who doesn't like vanilla? Hands up. I'll swing by the vestige. Keep the kids out of trouble. You 
One in the chat if you like Vanille, two if you don't like her. <laughs> you go skirt chasing, I take care of the kids. Some husband. <laughs> Dinner's on me. Better be home cooking. When's the wedding, lover boy? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry, none of you are invited. We're still going. Hey, <laughs> you serious? <laughs> what about me? Catch you later. Dude, I feel like Vanille done a huge bag of mushrooms before this game started. Like, the wild mushrooms, you know? So here we are, we're playing as Hope now. Um, this is obviously, it was Hope's mother that was dropped off the bridge. Um, not on purpose, obviously, by Snow, but he has just lost his mum, so... Not only is Hope one of the youngest characters in the that's going to become a part of the main party, but he's also very... Um, he's very emotional and he fluctuates quite a lot. He's, he's called Hope for a reason and you guys are going to get to see that. Um, I actually used Hope a massive amount. I used Hope a massive amount when I played this game before. And I, I also used Vanille actually a lot. The characters who I used the most when I played through my first uh, file back in the day, I used Lightning obviously, I used Hope, I used Vanille and I used Saz. Those four I used and I kind of swapped um, a couple of them in and out because I think you can only have three in a party. Um, later on there are other characters who I would kind of dabber with a little bit, for the, but for the most part those are the ones I used over and over. Um, so we'll see if that changes. There's other characters that come in again that are uh, really good as well, but I, I won't talk about them just yet. We're gonna go ahead and save our game here. I, I won't keep saving over and over, but I'll, I'll do it because there's a lot of cutscenes and stuff, and I'm scared that we uh, we lose a bit of progress or something. So right now we're traveling. We're kind of traveling in, in pairs. So you've got um, Saz and, and Lightning. You've got Hope and Vanille here, and then obviously you've got Snow and his mates as well. But they're not really a, a duo. Let's see what happens. What? You okay? I want to tell him. It's just that. <sighs> Say, you know how to fly this? Yeah, I think so. All right. <laughs> In you go. <clears throat> That way. Hmm. Uh, no. Uh, huh? If we go in there, that thing could. It could make us lassie. Uh, this is. I don't think I can. You can do it. Uh, what are you two doing? Uh oh. Here we go. Uh, Light up. Uh -oh. Get back here. You hear me? Hey! Sorry, we're going to get some messages. We'll be back around dinner time. It held our future and our fate. All right. Here we go. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Don't blame the, v the voice actor for her squeakiness. Blame the voice director. Yeah, actually, I have heard that before. I've watched an interview. It's funny you mentioned that the other 118. Maybe maybe we've um, maybe we've seen the same interview, but I actually did see Vanille's voice actor, uh, or actress, I guess. I don't know how it works, but um, she mentioned before that she was asked to speak exactly like Vanille speaks. Um, it was not because she chose to do that, it was just that was the instruction she was given, so like like the other says. Um, yeah, interesting. Well, she... Just us. What did you expect? Uh. Even soldiers 
know not to go near the foul sea. You become a pulse, Lissy, and you're finished. What do you mean, finished? Haven't you heard, Miss... Vanille. Huh? My name. And yours? Hope. <sighs> Thank you. What were we thinking? Well, since we're here, let's look around. Uh. All right, guys, I'm just setting up. If you can hear me clicking, it's not because I'm fucking around. I'm just trying to set up some uh, new windows. I'll show you guys what it looks like in a second once I add some hotkeys. Oh, check this out. Hey, uh. Vanille, where are you? Vanille does a lot of moaning, guys, which is a bit strange. Just prepare for that. She's very kind of. It does get a bit weird. All right, just you just have to go with it. That's. Alright, let's see what this looks like. Just give me one second. Uh, I'm gonna pause this. Let me just check something real quick, guys. So we've got a webcam here, webcam middle, and I've lastly got no webcam. So this is gonna be a little bit better, I think. I should be able to stay on during the cutscenes now by kind of... Look at me go. Dude, I'm a fucking ninja. You can't even ca keep up with this. Alright. Uh, here we go. So we've got Vanille. Vanille looks like she has a... Uh, three attacks based on her bar and how it builds her ATB gauge uh, which is very good but it's also uh, a very slow gauge to build and when Vanille attacks she doesn't do too much damage she's just got a very unique weapon I don't know why it's a set of deer antlers but that's that's something that exists I've never played any Final Fantasy says so Richard completely lost and I'm okay with it Rich don't worry about it mate if you're gonna stick around like if you find that this particular playthrough if you catch it from time to time and it interests you we're gonna be doing a lot of learning as a group anyway so this game starts off kind of all over the place, but we will try and make sense of it as we go. I'll try and explain the characters and what I know of the story and anything else we can learn together, like, as a community. So, just don't don't even sweat it, right? We'll try and figure shit out together. What could this mean? Wolfie using double team. Uh, excuse me? Okay. There we go. This is better. So, we have just landed on the Foul Sea, I believe. Um... Let's have a quick peek. Maybe we can actually do a bit of learning just really quickly. For people who are huge fans of the series and this particular game, you might know all this already, but I will try and um, try and explain things And uh, for those that don't, basically. So uh, let's have a look at the events here. So we're in Chapter 2 already, which is quite nice. Um, there's so much info that the game offers you. I mean, the Defiers of Fate, um, we obviously heard about that one already. The Fields of War. So Lightning and Saz are basically on the purge train that is going to Pulse. It's going to take all the exiles to Pulse. We don't know what Pulse looks like. We don't know what happens in Pulse. But we know that um, the city here was escorting the civilians to be exiled um, to, pu to Pulse on the purge train. Okay. Field of War. Suspect citizens of Cocoon are wrenched from their tranquil existence and threatened while exiled... Um, with exile to the world of Pulse, the purge has begun. So the purge is obviously all these citizens getting kicked out to Pulse. The land below is said to crawl with unknown perils and terrifying civilian, um, terrified civilians begin to rebel against the purge. So basically, the reason that there is an onslaught happening in the city is because the civilians don't want to be exiled and so they're standing up against the bigger, mightier force which is like the military presence. Okay, a revolt also occurs on the train transport and purge deportees as lightning battles against the guards um, galvanizes the other prisoners into action as well. Okay, so I don't really understand what the world that we're on is called. Are we on Pulse, guys? Is the city that we're on called Pulse? I'm actually not too sure, but there's like levels of this world and the lower down you go, the, the more hairier it gets. But how are you folks enjoying Pokemon Home? I need to set it up, says Vince. Same. Let me just have a quick peek here. The peaceful citizens of Cocoon, so this is where we're on. The world is Cocoon, obviously. Constant fear of invasion by the forces of Pulse. The world um, below and supposed home of terrors unknown. So that's where all the civilians are getting transported off of Cocoon to Pulse, which I guess lies below Cocoon. Um, where, a, where even a single Pulsian agent to be discovered on Cocoon, panic and civil unrest would be sure to follow, threatening the very fabric of society to prevent such a calamity. The Sanctum, Cocoon's governing body, initiates the purge. So um, the, the Sanctum are the, the government, I guess, 
and there it's those guys that are in charge of the pulse or, or sorry the purge the purge to pulse all right bear with me um the wayward path the purge is a sanctum initiative designed to protect the stability of cocoon so again the government i guess is trying to like keep all of cocoon in in place by getting rid of people who get inflicted with the disease or whatever the people who are getting exiled i think However, the relocation is a simple facade to cover up the massacre that ensues, so they tell them that they're exiling them when in actual fact they just kill them, um, which is a bit gross. Having discovered this horrific truth, Snow and leads the members of Nora against the government soldiers of Psycom. Cocoon citizens have always been terrified of Pulse and the mysterious horrors that are said to stalk its hostile wastelands. Am I right, guys? That's the only bit I don't really understand. Is Cocoon and Pulse the same planet, but Pulse is like way down lower, or is it actually off of this planet? Because I think we're in Cocoon right now, right? But like pulse is like way below the depths and that's where all the monsters live i think um i'm pretty sure that's how things work but you guys can fill me in in light of this fact the sanctum orders the purging of a uh, bottom in an effort to remove all the potentially pulse tainted victims so again yeah pulse tainted pulse and elements mm -hmm. the fear is so great that as if cocoon natives or if a cocoon native were to even uh, the briefest contact with the pulsing elements former friends and neighbors would become to become corrupted and dangerous so again it's this kind of feed of disease and the spread of like people becoming pulsing um you guys are going to see what that looks like later because the pulsing monsters are kind of scary the falsi awaits a massive object is transported through the sky over the hanging edge the object is a pulse vestige a lower world artifact that had uh, been nothing more than a bottom landmark two days ago it was discovered that the vestige housed a long dormant pulse falsi so pulse is obviously the scary area and a falsi is like a ginormous kind of creature monster i guess the falsi has slumbered undisturbed on the outskirts of the cocoon for centuries the sanctum decrees that the presence of the pulse entity and its corrupting magics have tainted the entire population of the city and orders the purge so you guys understand what's going on now basically there was a huge landmark they thought it was just a statue kind of floating chilling um artifact but it turns out it's actually a ginormous monster and so as a result they're trying to like exile the entire city Snow still cannot shake the feelings of his guilt, so that's to do with the mum dying, um, Hope's mum specifically. For centuries a pulse falsi has slumbered undisturbed, we've just read this, the government judges the citizens to be tainted, so they're going to kill them. Um, sweet, so chapter 2, in pursuit of snow, so this is where we take point, or we take point now. Hope has fallen into a panic in a single minded pursuit of snow, he has rushed into the, uh, the lair of a falsi and is only now recalling the terrible nature of the beings that lurk within. The pulse entity could now could use its power to curse them to turn them into Lassi. So Lassi is when they actually become like monsters and shit. Um, it's all going to be explained in a little bit, but yeah, that's pretty much us caught up. Um, we'll do more explaining as we go and a bit of learning, but that's pretty much uh, the general gist. We won't take too long fucking around here because it can get a bit monotonous. Um, yeah, so we're in control of Vanil, which is kind of nice. We've not played as Vanil yet. We've played as Hope, we've played as Snow, we've played as Lightning. Um, let's see what we can find. Have a little look here. Alright, 30 gil. Not exactly what I was hoping for. I was hoping for some sort of like bangle or something, but yeah. Couldn't say Jack, been a long time since I played this. Yeah, sorry guys, don't don't worry about it. Let's uh let's do some hope vinyl combat, which is not particularly thrilling, but um yeah, I guess we get it done. We've got a save option and some items over here, so we will we will fight some of these creatures here. Uh, again, I don't think we get CP yet because technically we don't have our skill tree. So these battles are kind of a waste, but we are gaining some resources. We get money. We're getting money from this and we're also getting some uh, items as well, like potions and shit. So it's not too bad. Uh, what abilities does... Vanille can only attack. She can't actually use any magic yet, so... I'm not an FF person, so no idea what's going on, so it's no bar. It's, uh, it's pretty good. I like it, guys. I think it's a nice setting. Um, not too bad at all. I am going to try and pick up as many of these items as possible. Pulse uh, is the land down under, basically, yeah. So it's like the kind of um, the slums below the city, I guess. That's something that I kind of struggled to understand when I was younger. Um, I always thought that... We'll, we'll wait and see in a minute, guys, because there's going to be bits where we kind of zoom out of the realm that we're in, and you're going to get to see what the world kind of looks like from the outside. And then maybe it'll be able to, it'll be easier for you guys to visualize what's going on. Four potions from that chest, not bad. Alright. Um, is there anything over here in the corner? I don't know if I want to go over there if we don't need to. I don't think we do. Let's just go down here to the left. We'll try and push on a little bit. All enemies guard areas limited by their fields of vision um, or other means of deception upon entering a guarded area. There's a chance that the enemy 
will take notice. If your trespass is observed, a warning icon will appear. That's fine. If your party leader comes in contact, you'll fight. Certain enemies, enemies like the Zwerg Scandroids have extremely narrow fields of vision and can be easily approached unnoticed. It's always advantageous to do so. So let's go ahead and try that then. I don't know how you detect... How these guys that have a detected field of vision... Do we get a preemptive strike here? Nope. You're gonna regret this. I guess you have to come in from the side, maybe? We'll see. We're not gonna be troubled by these guys. None of these enemies are actually threatening to us. We're just having to fight them for the sake of practice. You can see that Vanille fights with her little three kind of pronged whip and then Hope's got some sort of weird boomerang, which is unusual, but kind of cool. You'd expect Vanille to have the boomerang being uh, Australian and whatnot, but I guess not. Let's uh, go ahead and equip that new bangle that we've just got. So as Vanille is who we're playing as right now, we'll go ahead and stick that on. Iron bangle just gives more HP. I mean, technically, maybe it's better to give that to Hope, actually. Can I check how much HP he has? He's only got 170. I actually think we give the bangle to Hope um, with that in mind. Uh, let's go ahead and remove that. Um, and we'll equip it on Hope. So he's using the air wing, a sports hunting model. Boosts magic, uh, physical and magic resistance when the wielder is severely wounded. So we don't get that proc until he's weak. But uh, now we've given him more HP. Hopefully, if that's a percentage, then he will get that proc more often now, which is nice. Uh, Vanille only has one attack ability, etc, etc. Can I inspect this? Or... Nope. We just gotta ignore this for the time being. The camera's kind of wild, guys. The camera kind of flicks. Kind of hectically. Um, it's a bit bizarre. Sometimes you'll be walking and you turn it gently and it'll just whoosh, flip round out of nowhere. Alright. Let's come attack, get some attacks in here. I think I can sit here for the time being. I think this is okay. Hopefully I'm not covering up too much of the battle system, but again, if we get into any important fights, I will move my webcam a little bit. Nice. Panther on B. Vanille's attacks come out very slow. Despite the fact she charges three hits, she... Uh, she does tend to attack very slow and her damage is kind of mediocre. Uh, when you get to Pulse, you see Cocoon in the sky just like the moon. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of then. Alright, here we go. Aren't you scared? Not so much. You really don't get it. Pulse Falsy and Lissy are bad news. That's why Cocoon kicked them out. Live too close to the Falsy, one way ticket to Pulse. That's the purge in a nutshell. If they catch us here, they'll purge us too. And What's then. What's your problem? What's my. Pulse is hell on Earth. Hmm. Huh? <gasps> we'll be okay. Calm down. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Get off me. <laughs> Hope has just lost his mum, so he's still kind of bit. He's kind of grumpy. Can you hear me? Where are you? All right. So we found snow a little bit further on ahead. So the reason that we're on the giant being in the sky, the monster guys, is because we're following snow, and snow's trying to get there because uh, of Sarah. Your hero is on his way. Sarah is Snow's fiance, and you guys are going to get to see what Sarah looks like soon enough, but for some reason Sarah's on this ship. I don't know how she got here, what that's for. but uh, maybe that'll be explained later. Maybe it's already been explained. I don't know. I think... Yeah, I, I honestly can't remember, and I don't want to make an effort at explaining it, because I'll probably be wrong. Alright, so we're back with Snow. Snow's on his own right now, though. He doesn't have any allies with him, I don't think, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, also, as well, guys, I don't think it'll be too long before Lightning turns up on this uh, on the foul seat either, because Lightning is obviously trying to get there, and she's got Saz with her in, in tow, because Lightning's trying to get to the foul seat for her own reasons. We don't know why, but that will, again, be explained pretty soon. I know why she's wanting to get here, but I won't explain it until that, that point is revealed. Um, let's go down here, get in some more fights. Have we got any more items kicking about here? I'm just constantly looking for, like, little uh, things lying about. Alright, time to beat him up with snow here. 
Alright. Let's go into the center. I'll let you guys see what it looks like. I do think that the HUD of this game looks smooth, even if certain people don't like the battle system. I feel like it does look nice. The whole ATB charging and things like that, it's all very clean. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to call it simple, but it's nice. Alright. I think at this point, the reason that Snow is... Uh, the reason that Snow is on his own is because he did actually get quite a powerful item that makes him strong, so he can kind of handle himself for the time being, which is nice. Alright, I think I just leave myself in the middle. I'm trying not to move the webcam all about too much because it does get a little bit distracting and I, th I don't want that. Okay, so we can go left, there's nothing there. Is there any chest over on that side? Or is this just a dead end as well? Obviously our mini-map in the top right, guys, indicates that we're going directly center. You can use the mini-map as much as you want. Just trying to check for hidden items and shit. Just hold on, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Ollie says, I was always sure that Cocoon was within Grand Pulse. This is really messing me up. Yeah, it's a bit weird. It's a bit, um... I, d I don't know, Ollie, honestly. We'll have to wait and see. Like, I always knew it was in the sky, but I thought this it was a planet, like, within a planet. Yeah, that's what I thought as well, to be honest. Um, That's what I thought, Ollie. I thought that Cocoon was in the sky and Pulse was, like, below, but... We'll wait and see. Maybe we can make sense in a little bit. Still won't budge? Uh, I think the door is winning. Why didn't I listen? Beg your pardon? It was me. This is my fault. Beg your pardon? Cover your ears. Huh? Oh, oh last charge? Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> All right, hold, hold, hold. All right, go for it. Make it happen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please let me in. Please? Kun, I can believe is outside of Pulse is the one that Lightning returns. Um, I knew it was in the sky, but I thought it was like a planet within a planet. I don't remember the airship going into space to get to Cocoon, says Ollie. Yeah, it's more it's more like the sky above Pulse that is the space, I assume. Yeah, 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 I get it, guys. Um, you did see below, when they were fighting in Cocoon, there was obviously the kind of pathways uh, that everybody was travelling on, and then down below, there was just darkness. I guess um, Pulse is just straight up below. Shrouds can special single, uh, sorry, Shrouds are special single use ass aerosols that can only be used outside of battle and they grant the party tactical advantages. Uh, Forasol and Aegisol bestow bonuses at the start of battle. Deceptisol, on the other hand, shields the party from enemy detection. Cool. Um, enemy, enemies like Pantherons, whose field of vision allow them to monitor wide areas, normally turn hostile and display warning icons. Apply Deceptico, uh, Deceptisol, however, and you will have no trouble again again in a preemptive, or preemptive strike, rather. <laughs> To open it, push the tab, we'll explore in. I don't know what that is on my... I don't know how to do that on my controller though, it's still keyboard and mouse. Um, is it R2 maybe? Oh, it's L1, there we go. Sure, so let's go ahead and use Decept is all. But I think when we... Do we when we use the, the... I think when we use the save machine, it actually... Um, I think when you use Deceptizol, if I remember collect correctly, and then you use the save machine, I think it actually, um, I think it actually removes it, right? Am I just tripping balls? I'm gonna keep using Blitz. There we go, AoE. Just where we've got them staggered makes them look a lot of sense. Cities look nice, it's a shame Insomnia is not explored. Mm -hmm. I think 13 is the best looking, FF 14 and 15 are bland, says Vince. 
I mean, 13 did look like an amazing game. I mean, it looks good just now, even when we're playing it, like, years later. Um, okay, we could save our game here, but I think we just run up the stairs and just push on a little bit. I'm trying to get to the point where we get past all these kind of hallways and actually start to get into, like, a kind of... a wider kind of setting with more of the characters and allow us to, like, choose our guys and whatnot. Alright. Alright. Obviously, if you use Blitz, there's a chance that you AoE stagger, but then there's also the chance that you lose your stagger bar as well. So you gotta keep an eye on that. Alright. Saz should come in here with a hit. There you go. You can see that Saz builds the stagger bar pretty fast, but his lightning just kind of hits harder. There we go. So, Wolfie, what times are we starting the KFC dating simulator tomorrow at being Valens Day and all? Um, I don't remember agreeing to the KFC Dane Simulator, Snowblar. Are you drunk again? Are you drunk, Snowblar? First PUBG, now KFC Dane Sim. I keep trying to get preemptive strikes on these little guys, but it's not happening. Alright, we can blitz them. I don't think these enemies are particularly strong enough. <laughs> They're getting one shot. Feels bad. Alright, so let's shoot them. There we go. 6, 7, 8, 12, and 13 did have an element of realism in their worlds. Alright. Get some freebies. I've got a boss guy over there. Let's fight these guys. Alright. Let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's blitz these guys. I think what I might use is our, uh, our item that we have to... We've got this new ability to use our to get gain boost at the start of fights. I might use that on this guy, perhaps. I could also keep it Phoenix down, okay, in case we lose the fight, I guess. All right, so let's try it. Let's um, let's put on our uh, yeah, let's put on that. Fuck it. Fight this guy. He's going to be a bit harder. And somehow we got a preemptive strike as well. Feels good, man. Nice. No, I don't drink. Not drunk me. I always call these enemies the potato ring, says J-Bob. <laughs> Tomorrow is Lara Croft's birthday, so I'll be playing Tomb Raider 2, says Ollie. Nice. Good stuff, guys. But no, I don't know what I have planned for tomorrow. I don't think me and Mrs. Wolf are getting up to anything exciting. Um, I am glad it's Friday, though. It's a good day to go out on a hot day. What about you guys? You, anybody doing anything special for Valentine's Day? Anything exciting? Or are we all just uh, in, in fucking... <laughs> are we all just engrossing in video games? Hmm... Kapew! Shoot him! Staggered! There we go! Clean! Onwards, onwards, onwards... There's another Fortisol we pick up from that guy, so we've got another one if we come across a particularly hard boss. What have we got here? Why do I remember this being a weapon or something? Gladius, yeah. I thought, dude, something in my memory was just like, hmm. Blaze Fire, so we get Gladius here. It gives us less magic and more strength, which is good right now because we don't have any magic on Lightning, so we'll go ahead and equip that for sure. Sounds like Gladiolus. Are we going to fight both these guys in this fight? I think we are, yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and target the little guy. Oh, that's not the little guy. Uh, I guess we could blitz here, maybe. Um... Gotta be careful here, we're taking a lot of damage. Okay. This guy hurts quite hard. Gotta keep an eye on lightning here. If she falls any further down, I don't want her to end up dying or some shit. We've got tons of potions, so. Alright, stagger. Nice. 
I actually kind of miss this game, man. I'm enjoying playing through it just now. I know it's fairly simplistic and basic, and we don't really have a lot going on, but it feels good to be playing it. Visiting Platypus? Guys, I'm going to tell you a secret, right, and I don't want you to laugh. This is, quite a, this is quite a grim and serious topic, right? Okay. When I came outside... Listen, listen carefully. This is a no-nonsense kind of talk, right? Just focus for a second, right? If those of you don't know, Platypus is the nickname we've given to my next-door neighbour. She lives in the flat across the hall. She's an old lady. She's not really old, but she's... She's past middle age, shall we say, right? And she lives by herself. Now, the other day, I think it was my day off actually, I went out into the hallway for a walk. I went out of the flat, I took all this rubbish out, so I was going in and out. And when I was going in and out before I went out a walk, I kind of realised that like the hallway was very, it had a very strong, uh, pungent kind of smell. Very, very strong and not pleasant. So I was like, what the hell? And I'm like checking around all the carpets, just looking to see if anything's weird or out of place, you know? There's this really strong, nasty-ass smell, guys. And I was like, what the fuck? Now, there's only two doors leading into the landing. My door and Mrs. Wolfie's door, and then obviously Platypus. So I looked around, there's a little cupboard under the stairs where like all the kind of um, electronics stuff is kept. And there's a bunch of other shit in there, like a hoover and some stuff, like a snow shovel. Checked in there, there was nothing weird or dying or... It, there was nothing strange going on, right? Oh, Riri? Yeah, Riri. And, uh, anyways, I kind of went back in. I was like, Mrs. Wolfie, I need you to come and kind of listen to it, like, have a little smell out here and tell me what you think. She was like, okay, cool. Oh, no, yeah, that smells rife. What the hell is that, dude? That's awful. And then I was like, shit. What happens if Platypus has died and nobody's came to check on her? And I was starting to get really anxious. You know when you start building up a, a, a narrative in your mind and you start kind of, like... You start really starting to believe, like, your imagination fills all the gaps. I was like, holy shit, dude, what if she's dead? So, like, as I took some more of the rubbish out, I made a, I made a point to look over my right-hand shoulder as I went through the front door and just look straight into our living room window. And she was just sitting there in her, in her armchair quite contently, and I was like, oh, thank God, she's not dead. Okay, cool. And then the next day, the smell wasn't there anymore, so I don't know what happened. I don't know what caused it, but something was explosively dead. And, uh... Oh boy, I hope that never comes back. I think, do you know what? I think Platypus might have went for a big steamy number two or something. Um, our bathroom is quite close to the front door. In fact, it's the closest room to the door. So I'm wondering if Platypus had like some sort of nasty Indian the night before. And just went ham salad, I don't know. But anyways, uh, we survived and it never came back, so... Robotic death machines. Yeah, Fantastic. robotic death machines indeed. Alright, anyways... Those things are still around. Might be some soldiers trapped in here too. Except they'd probably be Lassie by now. Huh? Not even human anymore. Just post Lassie. Enemies of Cocoon. Can't show them any mercy. Hmm. Back to sn back to snow. There's the next one. I'm gonna make myself a little bit bigger here, guys. Same with this one. Just a little teeny tiny bit bigger. Alright. Let's go back over here. Cool. Snow, what's up, mate? We fine with you again? I think we've explored most of these other parts, right? Although this whole area has completely changed. Yeah, look at this. This is where you get rewarded for being a little cheeky, searchy person like me. A bit of a sad ass, to be honest. Two potions, not exactly the grand prize I was hoping for, but we'll take it. I think Jack pissed on the wall again. No, this time that was not the case. Um, I've never actually done that. I was wrongly accused. I'll have you know. Classic deflection. Jack has clearly been pissing on the wall. Guys, I, I can confirm that if it was me pissing on the wall, I wouldn't need to investigate what the smell was. But this was, this was a lot worse than that, you know? This was like, imagine an antelope had died in someone's basement and then rotted through the floorboards for like three weeks. That's what it smelled like. It was grim. I, d I don't know what was going on. I, uh, I was just pleased that she wasn't actually dead, you know? <clears throat> she was just sitting around her armchair and we kind of, we kind of awkwardly made eye contact as I was taking the rubbish out. You know, when I looked in her window, I was like, hello, are we still alive in here? I don't know her well enough to go and ask her if she's okay, you know? That would just be fucking strange, so. I just looked in her window and she's sitting in her armchair watching the telly. Just how powerful is he anyway? And I just like looked at her and she was just watching the TV and she just went 
and looked at me and I was like, Oh no, she's still alive! Keep on living in there! Maybe spray your bathroom though, it's a bit humming. Yo, what's up Roxas, welcome! How's things? Warm welcome to you, sir. Yeah! Yeah! Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> Alright, we made it. So, just a little bit more. Do I want to explore up there or do I want to just activate this bad boy? Let me just go and have a little peek. You're gonna die, clown! Thank you for using the walk ons, guys. I appreciate that. You're gonna die, clown! Alright. We got no food! We got no jobs! Our pets' heads are falling off! Guys, why are we all doing the walk ons at once? What's going on here? I appreciate that though. <laughs> Welcome, Roxas. Hey Roxas, hey Roxas, hey everyone. How's all it right. going, sir? How's your Thursday going, Rox? You doing all right, mate? Um, did we just? I, we don't really have to investigate all the way back there, do we? I feel like I might regret this, but we'll just go on. Things are okay-ish. Won't pay much attention to the stream. We'll play well. We'll have in the stream on the side. Alright, no problem, I'll take that. It's good to have you here. On, baby. Your hero's on the way. That's like me, chat, whenever I post in the Discord that I'm about to go live. Hang on, baby, the hero's on the way. What do you guys think of that? Obviously, I turn up. Thanks, Snow. Obviously, I'm then proceed to be five hours late, but you know. The thought's there, at least. He's coming our way. Well, what should I do? Tell him what you need to. But nothing I say will change what happened. Hmm. We could just run away. <laughs> I hope wants to confront Snow about his mum's death, but he doesn't have the balls to do so. Hey Jesse, what's up? Thank you for the raid. Skill, t skill tree on Twit. <laughs> skill tree on Twit. Ch. I need to make that bigger so that the box is larger and it'll be able to fit more stuff in. Welcome guys. This is becoming a daily trend. A dwarf. Oh right. Blah blah blah. Better streamer. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Welcome. Alright. How's things? What's up? Yeah, I'll take that. I feel like we're getting all these all these score points, and I feel bad, because we're not really getting any XP for this. Which makes me sad. Oh, God. Angry doggos. Let's go ahead and... Oh, we've already opened this, I see. The game is... Oh, we've just kind of reset, right? The area has just reloaded, kind of thing. So we're supposed to be going that way past Angry Doggos. Is there any point to us going this way? Yeah, there's an item over here. And a save machine, I think? Or that's that's just hope. Okay, we'll fight these guys. Hey, uh, welcome Raiders. E -ma Master says thank you. Thank you, E Master. Welcome. I'm at old Maxter. E Maxter. Welcome, guys. How's it going? What's new? Tomorrow the red paw will be ours. I liked yesterday, Roxas, when you were like, yeah, tomorrow we shall don the red paw. <laughs> that made me just, it made me laugh. It actually made me think of Slay the Spire. Because there's a, an event in Slay the Spire where you can don the red mask. And that's all I could think about. Alright. Mm-hmm. To four as well. Cody coming in with another gifted sub. You guys are uh, being popping off today. I don't know why. It's the fucking it's the curse of Thursday. Where you guys start going ham salad in the chat. I don't know why Thursdays are super popular, but uh, I'm really grateful, guys. Thank you. Um, e Maxter, welcome to the the wolf pack, mate. Officially, you're part of the team now. Whether you like it or not. Nobody mentioned about the sacrificing of babies. Okay, we don't do that. That's a lie. Okay. If anybody mentions that, it's just a meme. 
a welcoming match there. Thank you, Corey, for the gifted sub, man. Second gifted sub. Getting a lot of love today, guys. Thank you. Our, uh, our sub count is continuing to grow and grow, and I, I actually can't believe it. Ridiculous. I never actually addressed the fact that I was late today, guys. Um, I don't really have a good excuse for being late to the stream, other than I was just being uh, super tired and lazy. I had multiple opportunities to get up today, and I went back to sleep every time, like a dumbass. I didn't want to, um, and I, I shouldn't have done it, because I had that kind of guilty moment where you wake up like every 15 minutes, and you're like, what time is it, what time is it, what time is it? I should have just got up and actually been productive with my day, but in the end, I ended up fucking around, so I do apologise. I hope you guys didn't mind too much. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the pack, Eat Maxter. Skill tree sniped you. It's a meme about the truth. Now, now, now. Nothing, nothing to do with the truth, okay? As far as I'm aware, we've never sacrificed a child within the realms of our community, okay? If you actually have done that, don't tell me. I don't want to know about it. I'm going to pretend that we're all just fun-loving, kind people who just like each other. And nothing else weird. How about that? How about that, chat? Can we try that? <laughs> we saw you play FTL a few days ago, Jack. Wait, when did you see me playing FTL? You, we saw you play FTL a few days ago. I didn't play it on. Uh, I didn't play it on stream. Yo, Ryan, I've just seen you. Been, you were in the chat as well. Welcome, man. Spent hours troubleshooting a function yesterday. Didn't work. Boot up today. It works. Hate my life. Wow. That's grim. I'm glad it works, I guess, Ryan. Hmm. It's the fundamental basis of how our pack came to be Digimon Persona 5, Electric Gas Kukumon, and Lord Mara. Lord Mara, this is where Jamie appears. The priest. That's just, um, that's, uh, it's just what he has to say for legal reasons. And Phil, don't forget Phil. St uh, stream snitched on you. Steam snitched on you. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Um, it's true, it's true. I did play FTL a little bit the other day. Playing it quite late, actually. Yeah, I've been a naughty boy recently, folks. I keep staying up way past when I'm supposed to. Last night, I actually had my dinner. Watched some TV with Mrs. Wilfie, because that's like what we do now. It's like a recurring theme where we kind of talk about each other's days. If she's had a bad day and she wants perked up, then I'll talk to her about that. If she wants to hear about my stream time and I've got stuff to talk about, I'll talk about that. And then... I went to sleep and I fell asleep at around about like half past seven and then what happened was I woke up at like five past ten past eleven and I was wide awake and I was like oh shit no not like this so I just got up for a little while so I had a little nap last night and then I woke up again and then I started uh, I played some league with the guys for a little while we played two games of league and then I ended up just listening to podcasts before I fell asleep so I ended up going to bed at like a really ridiculous time like 3 a.m or something so that's why I ended up sleeping in today, so I apologise. Mm -hmm. Phil and Bill Larson. Good old Bill Larson, says J-Bob. I'm pretty sure Bill Larson is the lord of J-Bob's community. He's got full rights to the Bill Larson story. Yikes. Okay. So what's going on here, guys? Oh, here's snow. Let's even these odds. Right, so quick explanation. These zombie creatures are as as explained by Vanille, these are uh they've they've given a name, it's like Seath or something like that. And what she means is when she see, when she means that they are like Falsi who were given a focus or Lassie who were given a focus, and basically the big th creature that we are inside right now, the Falsi, is like the big boss. He can turn these he can turn regular humans into monsters. But what he does is he gives them a specific agenda. He gives them like a, a quest to do, and if they if they if they succeed, I think they they survive, right? Or they become cleansed or something. But if they fail, they become these horrific monsters. So basically, the monsters we're fighting now are people who have been given tasks and have fucked up. We'll do a bit more explaining and understanding of that later, but that's the general principle. See, the combat in this game feels really smooth frame rate wise, but it's the uh, 
It's the actual running about that feels a bit laggy sometimes. At least on the PC port, that is. Seath tier. How'd you get in here? You gotta leave. <laughs> okay, listen. Find some place to hide and keep quiet. Once I find Sarah, we'll all leave together. Uh, You'll be home in time for dinner. <laughs> you. Wait! Who's Sarah? My wife. Future wife, that is. She's a pulse, let's see. No. She's here somewhere, along with that foul sea. I gotta find her and set her free. What's wrong with you? Why do you want to help a sea? They're the enemy. Huh? How can you save a sea? You're not. You're not. That's insane! <laughs> Probably. But I gotta do something, right? I'll be back. Uh. Mm. Should we wait around for him and hitch a ride? I'd rather go to Pulse! Why is this happening to me? When they found the foul sea the other day, we were just visiting Bodum. But the army took us, threw us on that train. And because of that guy, Mom is. Probably shouldn't leave them alone. And he wants to help us, see? Hey again. Hey. Let's go with him. You gotta talk to him, punk. If you don't take this chance, you regret it forever. True. Okay. Okay. Let's go. God bless. Alright. How far along in the game are you? Haven't played uh, Final Fantasy since PS2. We're only two hours in, Emac. What's gotten into you, soldier? And even then, we talked shit for like twenty minutes at the start. So we're only about, I would say, like an hour and a half into the game, an hour and forty-five minutes in. But we've been doing a lot of blethering. I'm pretty sure if you were like really kind of mashing through this, you could get quite far. We're this is this is pretty much the start of the game. We haven't even met the entire cast yet. Um, let me see here. We're working on Wolfpack lore, Alam uh, Almanic. Um, so Jesse, I don't, I don't know if I want to know about that. Well, Bill Larson was on the TV, wasn't he? Says Roxas, yes. Yeah, we text you two or three times to go to bed. Yeah, actually, I did get those messages later on, Roxas. You've been doing that a lot recently, actually. I've been telling Mrs. Wolfie, I've been like, Roxas keeps messaging me and telling me to go to bed, and I don't know how I feel about it. She's like, hey, that's cute. I'm like, hell yeah. Wolfpack got my back. I'm sorry, I should have been on a better schedule, guys. I should have been. But yeah. The Sea are given a focus uh, by the Falsi. The Sea complete their focus, they turn to crystal. If they don't, they become Seath. There you go. Thank you, Ollie. Much love. I hate these dweebs, says Jkram. That's right, console is king. Uh, maybe an hour in. Snow's a bad person, really. Uh, he's not a bad person, really. Just hope has issues cutting to the point he's trying to make. Mm -hmm. Yo, Aquia, what's up? Welcome. Welcome to the party, says Jesse. I still need to continue playing 13, yeah. Thought you came for I'm looking forward to seeing the ending to this game this time around, guys. My sister. Your sister? Dad? She's a lassie. What? A pulse lassie? The Falci has her captive, but I'll find her. Is she still... I... What was her focus? When she became a Lassie, what did the Falci order her to do? Uh, it wasn't blow up Cocoon or anything like that, was it? I didn't ask. Yikes. <gasps> So, if we know that Snow's future wife is a post Lissy, and S Lightning's sister is a Lissy, when a person a... gets cursed by a foul sea, they become a Lissy, and they get given a focus, right? Yep. How do I put this? If they don't carry it out, Lissy end up as one of those things. So there you go, there's a bit of explanation. What I'm saying is, if your sister's gone that far, I mean, she might still. How, how can I? Oh man. Saz, please. There's no way to turn a Lucy back mm -hmm. into a human. Even if she completes her focus, there's no changing her fate. Mm -hmm. 
She'll live her life as a foul sea slave. <gasps> Don't make her suffer. Just say it. Any Lassie, anyone who might ever become a Lassie should be wiped off the face of Cocoon. It's people like you that started the purge in the first place. Rip. All right. So, if it wasn't already clear. Snow's fiance is a Lassie and Lightning's sister is also a Lassie. They're the same person, which is Sarah. Lightning's sister is Sarah and Snow's fiance, future fiance, is also Sarah. So now we're getting a bit more explanation as to what's going on here. There's a weird dynamic in this game where the big monsters can turn people into little monsters um, if they complete their task that they're given. It's like a unique kind of quest, as I mentioned earlier. They uh, become crystallized. It's kind of like their saving grace. And if they fail, they become these ugly monsters that we're fighting right now. So the whole discussion that Lightning and Saz have just had with one another is basically um, explaining that, you know. It's quite weird because Saz is obviously aware of Lightning that Lightning knows, but Saz has got to give explanation to the rest of the audience. So he's like, you know, if you find your sister, you should, uh, you should try and not make her suffer or whatever. And obviously there's the belief on this planet, on Cocoon, that if... Um, Lassie exists, they should be killed because otherwise they have the chance to like pass on their disease. I don't even know if that actually can happen, but that's what the citizens believe. And so that's why the whole purge is undergoing because this big falsy has turned up and the, the government's scared that the entire populace will become affected and become monsters basically. Here's a power wristband, that's a great find for us. We're going to go ahead and equip that. Um, I'm pretty sure this just gives us straight up strength and physical will, yeah. We're going to do this, I'm going to take the iron bang off lightning. Uh, which is a bit risky, in all honesty. Uh, you kind of want to have as much HP and Lightning as possible because if she dies, the game is over. But we'll transfer that on to Saz for the time being. Lightning has 200 HP now, so we have to keep an eye on that. But I think it's better to just max Lightning's damage as much as possible. You could argue that's not the right play, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't think it'll matter at this point of the game, if I'm being completely honest. Just want to have a quick peek around and make sure I'm not missing any items down here. Is there any items there? No, that one's already been accessed. I'm going the wrong way, I know, but I just want to have a look and see if there's any items kicking about. I think we were getting up to this point, so I think we're okay. We can just push on. So, yeah. I don't like snow, says Aquia. I mean, I think that when I was younger, I didn't really like snow either. He's very cheesy. Very cheesy, borderline cringe, but uh, we'll see if that changes. Um, I, I'm wanting to use snow this time around and kind of try him out. Give him a bit more love. You see that Lightning's doing a little bit more damage now, which is nice. Cool. Um, I need to go. Got lots of work to do, says Aquia. Bye bye. Take it easy. Thanks for stopping by. Roxas says, Our working theory is that J Bob is the way he is because he lives in the harsh lands and had to learn how to be kind to people in a land that is not as kind to people to stay human. Wait, what was this? Our theory is that J-Bob is the way he is because he lives in the Harshlands and has to, had to learn how to be kind to people in a land that is not kind to its people to stay human. I mean, maybe. J-Bob is a, a super kind guy. That's a strong theory, I could understand that. People in Cocoon fear Pulse and are told that anything from Pulse is a threat to them, so they always believe that Pulse will see only want to destroy Cocoon. Yeah. Which is obviously not the case. Thank you, Ollie. I might need you as like a constant lore bound slot Ollie to just run my theories by. To make sure that I'm actually explaining things properly. Later, Aquia. Good luck with all that works, says Cody. Hell yeah. We're getting a lot of uh, Fortisol here. Later, Aquia and Lol Roxas. That is a good theory. Sometimes I think that J-Bob is actually just an angel. Sometimes I think he's an angel sent from heaven. What do you guys think? I tell you, if he is an angel, he, he beasts at DPS on Reaper. I'm just saying. The best Reaper angel I've ever seen. <laughs> It's quite funny because Re <laughs> Reaper, Reaper is obviously some sort of like version of the Grim Reaper. <laughs> I like this. I like the TD crafting. Roxas, do we have any more theories? This is great. All right, we're slamming through these guys. I say we just continue on. Um, I don't think we need to fight these guys necessarily, but we'll do it anyway. I'm happy to make good on my tail of Lorekeeper Ollie. Thanks, Ollie. I appreciate that. 
for the most part I know what's going on, but there is some things that I, I, uh, I have yet to remember or have to understand, so I will ask little questions here and there as we can explain what's going on. And if I say anything that's incorrect, you guys obviously feel free to correct me and we can kind of talk it out. There's a guy behind me, I'm not going to fight him, we're just going to push on here. Going to get a preemptive strike here, hopefully. Yep. We'll uh, try and get a blitz off here and stagger both these guys if possible. Nice. Kill one of these guys, and he should die. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, as an atheist, we don't really believe in heaven, but J-Bob could make us believe. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's true. It's true. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't contest. All right. Here's a big monster. It's a nemesis-looking mofo. We could have potentially um, used our Fortisol against this guy, but we'll just take him normally and see how we go on. We've got the HP band on Saz now, so he can actually take a bit more damage, which is nice. Falling from the sky, yelling, die, die, die. I tell you, J-Bob, see when I was watching the other night and you got that Reaper on, uh, on the Sandy map, the Egyptian map, the Temple of Anubis. You head above the doorway as they came in and you got the quad kill. That was some good shit right there. I was like, oof, that's my boy. Destroying! Destroying, it was good. I was going to say, Zinnia from Pokemon Alpha Sapphire gave me the title, but I remember she named me Successor Ollie. She was the lore keeper, so I guess it's kind of the same thing. Nice! Alright, we're gonna... Ooh, can we buy new stuff? Outfitters. Oh, we can buy a new Iron Bangle now, which is nice. Um, we don't have the need to do that yet, but... Can we get anything new from the... No, we're still kind of broke. We could sell a bunch of our potions if we wanted to make money, but I don't think we, we need to necessarily do that just yet. Let's save. There we go. Alright, onwards. More progress, please. Oh no, we're still... Uh, we're still fine. I thought that was going to be a cutscene for sure, but never mind. My bad. Chop, chop, chop. There we go. Pew, 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 pew. Oh, that one turned around feels bad. I thought we were going to just get preemptive like preemptive strikes all the way along here, but alas. It does feel kind of um, sluggish to fight some of these guys over and over, but the, the fights are fairly fast, which is nice. And you do get your health back after every battle, which is also a plus, so there's no... I feel like in uh, some of the other Final Fantasy games that we've played, you're constantly topping up your HP after every kind of training session. Which is fine, because I kind of like the difficulty and challenge in that, but it also can be a little bit tedious. 13's got this weird kind of full heal system. Um, which is great for grinding, at least. Uh, maybe we could just run past some of these guys. Try and make this a little bit more smooth. Alright. I'm gonna blitz these guys. Fine to it once might be a little bit awkward. Alright. Oh, and Jack, for leveling up, you mentioned earlier you get all the XP you collected until you unlock it, dumped on the character as soon as you unlock it. Oh, is that real? So wait, any XP I gain now, I, I gain later on in like a big dump, is that right? So it's actually beneficial to fight these guys, is that? Oh, maybe it is worth our time to fight these guys then. I don't know. Don't kill me. Oh, we could actually die here. Please not kill me. Thanks. That's how I remember it, at least. You might be right, Rox. If that's the case, we will be f taking these fights. Points per second. Hmm. Yeah, it gets added up and you can spend it according to the Crystallarium. Alright, cool. In that case, I will fight some of these dudes. We'll take a little bit more XP while we can. Because these enemies are pretty straightforward. And it's 2v1 for the most part. It's probably not that much, but... I mean, if it's as fast as that, then we'll take it. Again, we're gaining gil for doing this as well, I think. Right? No, no. We're not getting any gil. We're getting some spoils, at least. Uh, Alright, sure. Last enemy. Let's fuck him up. Thank you guys. I didn't actually know that. So I guess it is kind of beneficial. 
I could buy extra bangles and hang on to them, but I'll, I'll just wait and see until we get the rest of the group, because I think we have a couple of spare bangles at the moment. Well, we actually don't have any spares, but I don't know if we have a need for new ones either. And as long as there's a save machine, we'll be able to visit the shop, so... Plus the iron bangles are kind of basic buffs, you know, they don't actually add that much other than the 50 HP gain. Here is Vanille, I think? Oh no, this is Sarah. Sarah! My, my bad. I was like, why is Vanille lying down? Time to go. We have to leave before the army. What? That's a pulse brand. That girl's a Lassie. I already told you that. Pulse Lassie are the enemies of Cocoon. So they should die? Listen, if she fails her focus, you know how that'll end. And killing her is a mercy? You came. Sarah! Big cutscene coming up, guys. Yo, Jesse, what's up, dude? Warm welcome to you, sir. Let's get you out of here. Hands off. I'm taking her home. Sis. I'm, I'm not your sister. You couldn't protect her. It's your fault. She can save us. Sarah? You can save us. Or protect us all. Save Cocoon. Save Cocoon? Sarah? That was your focus? Anything. I'll do anything. Leave it to me. We'll see. I'll protect Cocoon. I'll save everyone. Somehow. I'll make things right. You just relax. Thank you. Oh. Uh. Sarah! Uh oh. She's alive. No. The legend. Remember the legend. Lassie who fulfilled their focus turned to crystal and gained eternal life. It's the same with Sarah. Eternal life. She's not dead. Sarah's my bride to be. I promise to be hers forever. I don't care how many years I have to wait. <coughs> it's over. Open your eyes and face reality. Sarah, does becoming a Lassie really mean losing everything? Oh. Oh, what now? The army. All right. So obviously, as explained there by the characters, Sarah the was a Lassie. Sarah had a had a role to fulfill, and we never actually got to find out what it was, but. Here's the interesting part, and I think we can gather what it was. In, in meeting Snow and Lightning and telling them that they have to save Cocoon, which Snow and Lightning then agree to, you know, in their panic and in their, you know, their haste to help her, they're like, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do ever, whatever it takes, we'll, we'll do anything. So that then instantly fulfills her purpose as Lassie, so I think you guys can guess what her, her role was supposed to do. She didn't turn into a monster, instead she turned into a crystal statue. Um, I don't know how Snow's going to end up marrying that ass, but I mean, pff, we'll figure that out later. Right? Never existed. 
Right. So we are on the foul sea right now, which is this big creature that they're all attacking. We're on board that, that's why it's shaking. And uh, the government is trying to cover this up and pretend that it was never here. So they're trying to kill it fast. Cool. So we gotta get off. The party has to get off of the foul sea before shit hits the fan. Completely. Look at these two. Is it over? I'll be right back. Hold on. Accidentally snaps her hand off Trench by accident. Go. Where you going? Day with the foul sea. Got some things to talk about. What? You gonna ask it to help her? <laughs> Are you out of your mind, kid? That thing wants to chew us up and spit us out. Well, what do you want me to do? Uh, what? what? Uh, lightning? Here we go. All right. So we get the full team now. Well, the lightning and snow, for the most part, and the, the rest of the gang are kind of lagging behind. There's no other items that we want to miss, so let's just push on. We've got <laughs> Sarah's crystallized booty just chilling there. But now we get lightning, snow, and Saz, actually. Which is actually baller, because now we've got, like, all of the best guys that we have in our party at this point. Snow, lightning, and Saz are probably the strongest. Um, you can get into detail about who's better later on, as in Vanille and Hope and whatnot. But for the time being, without our paradigms or anything, I'm pretty sure these guys hit... Um, probably the fastest, which is nice. So let's just go on here. I was trying to hit that enemy, but I couldn't find it because it flew up. Lightning has a good haymaker, yeah, true. Alright, looks like this guy's got a lot of dodging abilities. Am I able to hit him as a flying target? Maybe not, actually. Maybe I gotta uh, go for the ghoul first. Do I have any? No, I don't. There we go. Let's go for the go again. Alright. Can we just kill this thing? Thanks. Snow was about ball punching level there. He probably just slapped that guy right in the stones. <laughs> we get two stars for that fight. Whoops. That was a yikes. Alright, uh, who have we got here? We got a save machine. Have we got any items kicking about down here? I don't want to miss anything. Again, the camera angle is kind of... It feels kind of wang, to be honest. Uh, let's fight these guys. Let's take down uh, Ghoul Boy first, I think. Yeah, I'll fight the gas first. Magic doesn't miss, actually. Too bad you don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. Feels bad. Alright. We'll just auto-battle for the time being. I think it's fine to get through most of these fights like this. Mm-hmm. Hey, Valkyrie, what's up? Wolfie's quest through Final Fantasy XIII hallways. Saz is great. I love the character. Yeah, Saz is alright. I used to like Saz a lot. Probably one of my favourite characters. But Saz has a moment in the middle of the game as well where he gets a bit, eh, uh, gets a bit grumpy. And you're allowed to get grumpy as a Final Fantasy character. It's just there's a lot of grumpiness in the uh, in this particular game, I find. A lot of characters find a lot of a complaining to do. Um, which is fine because they're thrown in a world where... You know, they're under a lot of stress and duress, and there's a lot of individual conflicts going on. Saz has his own agenda later on that he needs to kind of iron out, and Hope's got his own problems, Vanille's up to things, Lightning and Snow are obviously trying to get Sarah back. Um, it's just, it feels like there's a lot of moaning that goes on in this game. Uh, we'll see later on if it's justified, but for the time being, this is just what I remember. But Saz is a, honestly a really cool character. We do like him. 
All right, here goes. This is the Falsies in our kind of chamber. Sir Feroth. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm focus and she did it. You got what you want. Now let her go. Please, turn her back. <laughs> the lore of the game is really interesting, yeah. Instead. True. Fine. You go on begging. Like this thing gives a damn what we want! Lightning, please. Lightning! It's this thing's fault the purge started. And it's people who are dying. Sarah told us to save Cocoon. That means this thing needs to die. Uh oh. Two stars might as well delete the save and restart, says Cody. Cody, please. <laughs> the foul sea, says Valkyrie. I would never see that coming, Kappa. Alright. Where are you going, you little pussy? Prepare for the tattoo parlor. Come on, it's just like going going on holiday to Spain with the boys. Come on now. You really think you can kill a Falsy? I'm doing this for Sarah. Dodge. <gasps> Dodge? Kadaj? Sephiroth. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm in. Daj, although we don't know it yet, is Saz's son. Saz has a, a boy. Thanks. All right. Here we go. Let's fight. I'm gonna all battle here. Anima. Can't remember. Oh yeah, we can actually attack the right and left arm. What happens if we attack the right arm? It's actually pretty, uh, pretty weak. Okay. Is it when we kill the arms that the torso becomes weak or some shit? I can't remember. I'm gonna actually attack this once. Initiate and rege regeneration. We're gonna use a potion here. And then we're gonna wail on the main torso. So the arms are the thing that's doing damage to us. We just need to take those out so that we are uh, free to hit on the main thing, I guess. Well, it initiates regeneration, it doesn't actually attack back. I don't think there's any way for us to actually stun this, is there? Let's go ahead and take out the arms again. Ow. Okay. I don't know if you need to do this, you could probably just attack the main body. But you're starting to get a bit of a taster for like how long boss fights can be in this game. Um, and the game's trying to show you that when you go in a boss fight there's multiple uh, arms and stuff that you can attack normally. There's normally a couple of parts to the boss to kind of make it vulnerable and whatnot. I'm going to use a potion here on snow. Alright. I mean we could probably just go for the main torso but we'll just play it nice and slow. Isn't it magic? Oh god, there's a decent bit of damage. We'll try and reduce that as much as possible. Alright. Kill it. I think we take it out of the game here. This should be us. Um, Dash is an important figure in Final Fantasy XIII speedrunning. The Falsi is named Anima. The thing's it's uh, is the mother of Seymour Guado. It just stops the arms dealing extra damage. Yeah, yeah, I got you guys. Um, 
Final Fantasy Thirteen fights long? Question mark. I mean, longer than what we've experienced thus far, right? I think we can agree on that. Don't at me. It's been a while since we've played this game, but what I'm trying to imply is that there's more than just slapping an enemy to death. Sometimes you got to work on different aspects of the boss. So that's what the game's trying to teach us. Where are we? What's going on? The MAGA tattoos. Maga tats. I think we should all get I love Magaluf with a pineapple. Lightning would definitely be down for that, I can tell. Hope is a pineapple, so he would be fine. Uh oh. Cover your eyes, children. I've seen this in adult cartoons. All right. When I couldn't see a future, and I was afraid. When the future was clear, and it hurt to see. I'd just close my eyes, and lose myself in happier days. In the music, the moment you wanted, mom's spaghetti. All right, save our progress. So what's happening here, guys, is Again, it's going to be explained in a second, but all of our main characters, all of our main cast have just been branded with their very own, uh, fa uh, like, Lacy, Falsy kind of brand, which means that we, our main characters, now have their own focus, and if they don't achieve that, they're going to become monsters. So it's kind of, um, you, you know, you can start to see the shape of the story taking place. What our focus is and what we're supposed to do yet, I don't think our characters are aware. I don't actually know what happened to Anima there. Did Anima die in that fight, guys? Or did Anima just disappear? Obviously, it showed you all the water turn into ice, and now we're going to be in this kind of crystallarium kind of era. Slash environment. Check this out. Alright, this is a flashback, and this is a really, really nice cutscene if it's what I think it is. Yeah, check this out. I remember when this... They live in the seaside city of Bodom, okay? So this is where Hope and his mum were visiting. This is meant to be like the nice kind of tropical era. And this is back in the past, okay? Really, I remember watching this cutscene when I was younger, and it blew my mind. They used this for a lot of trailers as well. Important easter egg character in the background there, did anybody see that? Pog champ? Bodum sluts. Thanks. Sorry about that. Now, who'd you say you were looking for? Whew. Fine, please. Oh. I mean, what? That was a joke. That was a joke, guys. All right, so Snow's on a mission. What's he up to? Let's find out. Oh, hey. Our father, please get rid of the big guy. Oh, shit, he's here. Maybe I was. I was hoping that tomorrow I can tell my sister. <laughs> Don't be so mad. 
Knowing I hid it from her? Uh, don't worry. I'll take the blame for you. You know, you should ask for something bigger. These are wish-granting fireworks, like in the stories. I wish for a PlayStation 5. <gasps> Bandit, she's already got a brand. You see that shit? We'll see who can fill their focus. They become crystal and gain eternal life. <sighs> Would help if they gave you some clue about what you're supposed to do. <sighs> we'll figure this thing out. You will never be one of those monsters. So what will I be? A crystal? Yeah, you'll be a nice ornament in the front living room. I'll put you next to the sofa. Yesterday at the store, I got us something. <laughs> we don't know much about jewelry, but I hope you like it. Oh, snow. Look at the size difference, dude. I will stand by you. No matter what happens, I'm yours forever. Sarah. My one. My only. Oh, my. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes. Hi. Yeah, guys, I don't know, like, Sarah, Sarah and Snow are kind of cute. This is the cutscene I was talking about, by the way. This one right here, check this. This is absolutely, this game came out, like, fucking absolute yonks ago. Look how good this looks. PS3 era, mind you. Snow and Sarah are quite an unusual couple. I feel like Sarah's a lot smaller than Snow, and she looks very young. You gotta love these fireworks. So you get a kind of creepy vibe wish. from it, but that's just me. Wish. Before I asked you to marry me, I wish that you would say yes. Then maybe they'll grant mine too. What's that? To have the courage to tell lightning that I've become a lassie. Hey, our engagement is way bigger news. <laughs> oh. Man, I can't wait to see her face. <laughs> She'll be my new sister. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Is she always gonna be a bitch? <laughs> Snow just like realizes that she's about to be her sister, or uh, that Lightning's about to become his sister. He just plows straight into the wall. Oof, we in there, boys. Time to take you home to my place, baby. I'll show you why they call me Big Snow. <laughs> there you go. Sweet! Really, really nice cinematic, guys. Really nice animation. Um, this game done absolute work for being, like, for its time and its era. Absolutely incredible. So, uh, yeah. 
Good old Final Fantasy, man. They've always been fucking miles uh, ahead of their time in terms of cutscene. Uh, but yeah. Alright, so that was obviously Sarah and Snow giving a bit of backstory on those two as a couple. They're obviously very happy together. They're obviously um, wishful of the future. Snow is over the moon when she agrees to marry him, etc. Um, but obviously this is in the past and we know that Sarah actually just becomes a crystal... Uh, you know, she becomes a crystal ice cube. So whether that is going to... Whether they're going to achieve their dreams is yet to be seen. Let's uh, probably go back into the middle of the action now, I guess. Yeah, here we go. All right, Lake Brescia, Cocoon Lowlands. So we're still on Cocoon, but we're kind of, uh, from what I gather, we're getting kind of closer and closer to Pulse. Um, did anybody answer my question earlier about the foul sea? Well, I guess we fell from up there, and the lake turned to crystal. Mm-hmm. Help me out here. I mean, did the foul sea do this? How in the world did we end up here? How should I know? We're alive. How? Sarah! No one survives a fall from that high. Not without a miracle. Sarah saved us! Sarah? Listen. It's all your fault. She got... Oh. Hey, hey, hey! Watch out! Oh. There you go. The mark of the foul sea. So we've basically just become what Sarah was before she completed her focus. Alright, so now I think Snow has magic. Are we going to get more tutorials? Yeah, the Paradigm system. So this is kind of where the game starts to kind of open up, guys, and you get to actually do the tutorial. I'm going to... or do the fights properly. I'm going to view this tutorial. Um, you can assign characters the most effective roles for a given situation by changing your party's Paradigm. Paradigm is basically um, the when you set up your, your team to be in a specific kind of group of roles if that makes sense so you're gonna see what i mean in a minute but i'll let it i'll let it explain itself you can switch between your paradigms as often as you like first press the tab to access the party's paradigm deck i think that's l1 on controller uh l1 each paradigm assigns specific roles to the members of your party each of these roles dis um define the spells and abilities available to the party member as well as their general behavior in combat so you can see down here um, just below me, if I move myself, you can see that Commando mode for Lightning has been selected, whereas the other two, Vanille and Snow, are Ravagers. Build an attack and chains more easily with enhanced strength, whereas Ravagers charges the enemy gauges. So, let's uh, let's see some more of this. This is how the, the kind of combat works. We're going to go from Relentless Assault to Solidarity in a minute. There's a wide variety of paradigms to choose from, and I think later on you can also customise your own. Offensive paradigms concentrate on dealing damage to enemies, while defensive ones focus on party protection and healing. It's very important to shift paradigms to suit your situation, so if you're getting your ass blasted, you kind of want to take a knee, change into a more defensive stance, and buff yourself, heal yourself. Um, at the start of the fight, you might even want to debuff the enemy, and then you're going to ravage, ravage, ravage until you stagger them, then you're going to go like commando damage and vice versa, okay? Um, your current paradigm, Relentless Assault, is an offensive paradigm in which multiple ta uh, attackers coordinate their efforts. The paradigm's two ravagers target each other, uh, whichever enemy the commando attacks, with the goal of quickly filling the gauge if you wish to use. Um, if you want to continue using that one, press the tab to close the paradigm deck. If you want to change, what else have we got? We can do Solidarity with a Sentinel and a Medic as well, but I don't think we need that just yet. Uh, one of your party members has just taken damage. Now be, might be a good time to open your deck uh, and swap. So again, if, if you need to, you can go into another mode where Snow becomes the tank, Vanille becomes the healer, and then you take a more kind of defensive stance, pretty much. Uh, we don't need to look at too much of that right now, but... I think we're okay. I say we just stay in this mode and kill these guys fast. So you'll see now that we're in Ravager mode, we actually build damage so much faster, which is nice. Looks like Lightning's also got an extra ATV gauge now, which is really nice. And we just close out the fight nice and easy. Alright. Tier of Frustration, uh, Seath tier and Decept is all as well. Cool.
The gang are powered up at this point. For real? So we really are Lissy. Stranger says he give her the love kiss. Yes, kiss and the kiss. There you go. Oh, Vanille, please, TOS, don't look, chat, don't look. Uh oh. Why me? I don't even know you. Will you have to go and attack that thing? Just leave me alone. It's your fault. It's your fault, my. You could have. All of this is your and Sarah's fault. Watch it. She just spits on him. <laughs> Sorry. Everything's gonna be all right. You'll see. Come on. Off we go. All right. So, do we get access to our crystallarium now, or is that a thing that happens later? I'm not entirely sure. Yep. We're all playing for Team Pulse now. All right, we're back playing as Lightning, which is kind of cool. So, uh, do we have any items back here? Anything worth picking up? No, I don't think we do yet, but we've got our Paradigms, which is nice. It means it gives us a bit more flexibility and a bit more damage when we fight as well now, guys. Which is cool, so we'll be able to actually strategize and build our team a little bit more at this point, which is pretty cool. You guys doing alright? FF13 Pog. Indeed, yeah. Alright. Oh. More hope talk here. Okay. If we don't know our focus, how do we complete it? I think I saw it. Saw what? That is how a focus comes down, people. The Fauci, they don't spell it out with clear-cut instructions. All you get is a hazy glimpse. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's what they say. You know, legends and all. You know, there's legends. <laughs> Did you see anything? <sighs> I, uh... I just... It's all kind of foggy, but... I saw this big, I mean, towering. What, what, wait a minute. Hold on now. Do we all have the same dream? Ragnarok. Ragnarok comes. It's funny because we just finished playing God of War. So, we all saw the same dream. We all heard that same voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was our focus? But how are we supposed to know what to do from that? Mm -hmm. That's the tricky part. The dream's the only hint the Falsi gives us. Figuring out what to do with it, that's our job. Okay, okay. We're pulselessy, right? Enemies are cocoon. So, does that mean that our focus is... Are we supposed to save her? Say what? <laughs> Our focus is to protect Cocoon. Really? Okay, and why's that? Sarah told us. Let's do it. We're all in this together. <gasps> I'm gonna look for Sarah. She ought to be nearby. Uh, Cue the Wildcats oh, music. Too. Wait! Jeez. That boy can't stay still. Really? Alright. Decent. Commando Ravager Ravager. Balance team change. So basically we have a... Uh We've dropped out Saz and we've gained Vanille. Having the C, uh, the, part, the members of your party can now develop their powers, learn new abilities or improving attributes such as strength, magic and HP. So this is your level up system in the game. Uh, let's view the tutorial. Sure, first open the menu. So we go into the Crystallarium part, select the character we want. Let's start with the Lightning. 
Now this level up system is kind of interesting guys, I'll hide my webcam so you guys get the full picture to begin with because some of you guys will want to see all of this and kind of help understand how it works, but this is the Crystallarium which allows you to develop a character. There's abilities in various roles, Lightning can currently develop as a Commando or a Ravager, each has its own path of development. Now we have a lot of people who can kind of um, like level up as a Ravager right now and I think Lightning is our only Commando at present so we're probably going to focus on Commando but who knows, maybe that's a mistake, we'll see. Select Commando and press Tab. So, as you see, Ruin crystal, uh, crystal is illuminated. Illuminated Crystals represent known abilities. Lightning can use Offensive Magic Spell Ruin whenever she is playing the role of Commando. So she already has this. She's been granted this as a Lassie right now. Um, and we can do what else? The crystal, the crystal next to Ruin is dimmed, but by extending the line of uh, cry, <laughs> Crystal Genesis to reach it, Lightning can obtain the crystal and add, uh, add its benefits. So, you can advance the path of the Crystal Genesis by holding Tab and doing so with the points. Character developments always require CP, so we have 101 of that. Go ahead and advance Lightning's path uh, of Crystal Genesis, press tab and the line will extend, gradually consuming CP, holding, um, I guess that's enter until the, the line reaches the next crystal, so uh, we just hold X. And we gain 4 strength. Abilities can only be, uh, 4 strength uh, increasing Lightning's strength by 4. Abilities can only be used when in the corresponding role, but attributes bonuses like this one apply across all roles. So basically her, like, if you gain, what the game, what it's telling us here is, you know, you can pick up Life Siphon, you see that ability just above us, it's over here. Um, we can pick that up and it'll only be available in the Commander role, but these kind of boosts, or these boosts are like our strength and our HP and our, all that stuff, that's across all of Lightning's different roles, so. That's kind of cool. At times you must direct the course of uh, Cryo uh, Genesis. Normally the line will stop until you run a CP, however, it will stop automatically at branching points. So, uh, we're going to hold up here and go for HP. We've run at a CP at the moment. We want to pick up Life Siphon, I guess. Um, so we'll just chill for the time being. Uh, you can develop the other party members as well if you wish to do so. Let's, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, looks like Lightning's going to come across the power chain. Bolster attack a ruin at the head of the attack queue when target's chain gauge is empty. Um, we've also got life sign in here. Recharge one ATB gauge segment upon slaying the target, so it's like a reset. That's kind of nice. Um, we've also got some magic damage, magic, and then eventually, I think when we get to this, we level up, right? We've came from around here, so we've already got attack, magic, strength. These these are here, but we we've already gained this. This is like the beginning of the game, and the game kind of gives you this for free, so we don't actually have to work work our way around this. Um, and we don't have any points to like buff Ravager, but these abilities are here as well, which is kind of nice. So you can kind of choose what to do. Um, let's go ahead and look at Snow here. Um, we're probably going to get to choose between his, all his roles here. Yeah, we, we can actually raise him as a Commando, a Ravager, or a Sentinel. Um, interesting. I think for the time being we want to raise him as a Ravager, but I don't honestly know what to do. Let's go ahead and have a look and see what options are available. So if I come into Sentinel, uh, we've already got all of these I think, right? F uh, fringe ward reduces damage to nearby enemies when you are the target of an area of attack, so that's cool. Um, yeah, I guess like um, Snow actually can't learn too much in this tree, so let's just hold X. We'll get him, give him that ability. Sure, we can't go anywhere, so we're chilling. Uh, let's let's increase him as a Ravager. Uh, we could make give him HP, or we could give him magic. Magic would give him damage, obviously. Uh, I say we just go for HP, I think, right? What is our other option as a commando? We can go for straight up strength 18. Jesus, that's actually insane. CP cost of 40. We could give him 18 strength straight away. I actually kind of want to do that. I think that would be more useful in all across all schemes. We'll just give him the flat buff to his uh, to his strength, guys. That's not bad at all. And this one costs 40. Can I give him anything else right now? Uh, maybe in the Ravager tab. That costs 40 as well, and 40, so everything costs 40. Um, we'll probably just leave him chilling for the time being and decide that later. We've also got Vanille. Uh, Crystal Genesis, what a weird way to say level up, yeah I know. Um, okay, so Vanille was always my medic, so let me go ahead and have a look at some of this stuff. Uh, Vanille only has 350 HP, which is a lot less than some of the other characters, but it's not the worst. Uh, we want to kind of give Vanille as much magic as possible early, as far as I'm aware. What else can we get here? This would give our strength into water. That would be nice. Um, what way do we want to take Vanille? Do we want to give her more damage? I think get, giving her water would be really useful. Trying to get our magic spells as fast as possible. Or we could just try and get to the uh, the end of here. Cure. She's already got cure. 
So these are just raw stats. I feel like we should go for the other direction. I say we go Ravager, which is a bit uh, unexpected, but we'll get her towards water, try and unlock that ASAP. Can I actually buff Saz and stuff? I can, yeah. So Rav Saz is like your staple Ravager. Yeah, he only gets the Ravager kind of class, so he's only got one kind of direction to go, so he doesn't require as much uh, concentration, if you like. He's fairly straightforward for the time being, which is nice. And then Hope, Hope should uh, Hope should have his own unique class. I wonder if I'll show you. Yeah, Synergist. So he can be a medic and a synergist, which is why I kind of like having Hope here. Let's go ahead and look at his synergy stuff. Um, again, we've only got stats here leading to the center. Ravager, we could help him learn magic here, HP and strength. Hope is uh, pretty squishy, so HP definitely wouldn't be unwarranted. Last but not least, medic, what have we got here? Strength. These are just raw stats again. I think I'm going to level up his synergy stuff because I really do like the buffs of this game. Um, it's hard to know what to do, so we'll give him HP and we'll work towards magic. There's not a lot of uh, options for hope, right? Well, there's actually tons of options, but there's not a lot of like immediate buffs for him, which is a shame. Uh, Zombie Killer says, Mr. Wolfie, I just saw the games you played through the years and how is it that you never played Kingdom Hearts, says Zombie. Uh, we actually have played Zombie. Welcome to the stream if you're still here, mate. Um, we have played Kingdom Hearts recently. We've played Kingdom Hearts uh, 1 and 2. Just uh, I, I played Kingdom Hearts at the end of last year and I played Kingdom Hearts 2 th at the start of this year, so we're actually doing alright. We haven't played Chain of Memories yet, but we're going to get to that at some point. Oh, he did. My bad. I didn't see it. Sorry. No, it's fine, dude. Don't apologise. I actually hadn't played it for my entire life. I grew up with all my friends telling me to play Kingdom Hearts and I only just recently done it, so you're kind of half right. But uh, welcome to the stream regardless. I've not really been paying attention to the chat right now, guys, so I do apologise. Um, is there anybody who doesn't have... Can I flick between people? Yeah. So we need to get an accessory for Vanille. We need to get an accessory for... In fact, Vanille's the only one that doesn't have an accessory. I wonder if I can... Do I have any spear? I don't think I do. Oh, Doctor's Code. Uh, doubles the restorative effects of potions. Sure. I didn't even realise I had that. Oops. Alright, cool. So... We need to find a way out of here. We can worry about everything else later. Alright, so we've got some buffs there. Our party's a little bit stronger than it was beforehand. Let's uh, push on a little bit, guys, because again, this is kind of... I'm pretty sure this area is fairly bland. I'm looking for a dead end here. There's a dead end with an item. Uh, it looks like it's down to the left. Probably down here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's an item down there, so I'm going to go grab it real quick. Whenever people complain about the enemy AoEs in 13, I always point to Fringe Ward. Yeah, it seems strong, right? Again, I uh, I never used Snow too much in my first playthrough, guys, so I'll maybe try and use the tank kind of functionality of this game a little bit more. Let me see here. Let's go ahead and use Blitz into an attack here. We could even maybe try Lightning's new abilities, because she's got Ruin now. Um, see this? Let's do three Ruins. Um, I'm pretty sure Ruin is magic damage, which Lightning didn't have before. Don't know what the point of Ruin is in terms of like what it does better than your normal regular attacks. I would just imagine that some enemies take more damage from Ruin, whereas other enemies take more damage from physical attacks based on like my, my current knowledge of Final Fantasy games. Um, Nephilim, welcome. What's up? I think he's uh, a good Sentinel, no? Yeah, if we're talking about uh, Snow then, that is predominantly his main role, yeah. He's a Sentinel. Jcram, go in eggs says, at Mr. Wolfie. Whenever people complain, oh sorry, meds in the early game, I find it very ironic that Hope doesn't have Saboteur from the get-go, says Ollie. Saboteur, obviously, we have yet to unlock as uh, as a party, as a whole. Maybe the game's just trying to keep things simple in the beginning, Ollie. I don't know, that would be my answer. Um, Hope's secondaries are actually pretty bad, that's why. Obtained the Pearl Wing Staff, so that is an upgrade for Vanille. Vanille's actually had two upgrades. So, uh, despite the fact she's not been getting a lot of love in the way of accessories, Let's have a look. Pearl Wing Staff gives her more magic and reduces her strength. Um, I don't even know if Vanille has any abilities, does she? Like, can she use... She's got Aero. Um, deal wind damage to a uh, target and temporarily stun it. Um, as a Ravager, she has Aero all the way. Yeah, I think we could do that. Let's go ahead and give her that upgrade. I think that's better for her. Um, plus this... The Perlwing, the, the staff that we had on before is a pretty ugly looking motherfucker to be honest, so. Hey Jack, have you heard of a video game called uh, uh, General Kaiser and Knuckle? I haven't really, no. I have not. Unfortunately. Doctor's Code only works when equipped on the party leader. Oh really? Doctor's Code plus potions can replace the MED role until mid game. 
I see. Oh well, we could ch we could change it back up if we wanted to, but we'll leave it for the time being, guys. Uh, how'd I get up there? I guess I'll have to kill the enemies first. Mm -hmm. Imagine giving strength to Hopper or Vanille. Yeah. Alright. Let's go. So here's your flying enemies. This is where uh, your rune comes in really strong. Because again, you guys said earlier on in the game that magic doesn't miss in this game. Which is really good because our physical attacks on the flying dudes is uh, pretty problematic. So There you go. And obviously now that we're attacking this guy, we're back to physical. Cool. We haven't actually needed to Paradigm Shift once yet, but again, it's the beginning of the game. The game doesn't want to kind of kick your ass just yet. Alright. So obviously we want to get as much, uh, we want to get as many points for our character as possible. As much XP points. Chip fangs, cool. We need chip fangs later on as a resource for upgrading weapons as far as I believe. So any kind of nonsense that we pick up right now, guys, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't know, squid tentacles or fucking lamb wool or whatever. It's probably just some sort of random upgrade for later on. So, to kind of... Kind of summarize our story at this point it is a bit confusing but um basically we've been given our our focus and we have to complete it as far as the team are aware but it makes us stronger doesn't it what's to stop us from putting it to good use so um yeah it seems like saz obviously being like the kind of uh he's a like a reflection of like the average citizen he sees our uh he sees the lucy brands and he's like all oh, enemies of cocoon he's kind of like the voice of reason but um, it's quite clear that Sarah obviously didn't have a she didn't have a focus to destroy Cocoon, um, and in actual fact, it looks like the uh, it's the opposite. They're going to try and save it from it. what we don't know yet. Ragnarok. That's the reason we're Lassie. to stop it, to keep Cocoon safe. Yeah, why don't you give us one reason to believe that? One reason, Sarah. <laughs> she said to protect Cocoon, and then she turned to Crystal. That's the proof right there. She completed her focus. That means ours is to save Cocoon. Sarah's foul sea was the same as ours. Our focus has got to be the same. We were chosen to be guardians, to defeat Ragnarok. It makes sense. What the hell it does? You're grasping at straws, son. Post foul sea are Cocoon's enemies. We just got recruited by one of them. <laughs> if I were a betting man, I'd put us on the other side. So Sarah's an enemy too? Well, I don't buy it. We have the power to save Cocoon if we work together and carry out our focus. focus. The Falsy took Sarah from us, and you want to help it? Whose side are you on? Freeze! So, huh? bitches. Place your hands behind your heads. You fall off the bird's train? Maybe. Are you talking back to me? Huh? Huh? Nice gun. Stop her! Freeze! Kia! Alright, let's go. Command execution, uh, tutorial, what we got? I don't think there's much else for us to learn in the way of tutorials, but let's see. This show tutorial explains how to manually input commands and how to execute uh, partial commands queues. Yeah, sure. If you wish to uh, enter ma commands manually, we can do so with the, the down button. Yeah, yeah, we know that already. We've been doing that a bit. Becoming a Lassie extended the lightning's ATB gauge by one segment. Now our gauge is longer. It also takes longer to fill. However, you can execute commands anytime by pushing E, which on the controller is triangle. Um, now take a look at our ability list below, ATB costs, more powerful abilities have higher ATB gauges, that's fine. We know that Blitz costs 2, and uh, Ruin I guess. I don't know if she does more regular damage, but we'll just stick to her physical for the time being. Um, entering commands manually allows you to determine, determine their order, which is important to chain bonuses by vary, uh, vary by command. Pay attention to the ATB cost, and try to fill your command queue with the most effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that noise. So again, you can cancel. Like if you don't want to, if you don't want to wait for your bar to fill all the way up, you can push the triangle button and cancel, which is quite nice. 
We're getting 21 points per fight here as well, which is good because that will allow us to upgrade our our stats Thought pretty quickly. Guys are psycho, yeah. Looks to be cream of the crop. Yeah, but Psycom's an anti-pulse task force. They haven't fought a war in centuries. Bunch of rookie troops swinging around overpriced toys. So, from what you're telling me, sounds like a regular old soldier has got more training than special forces. Nothing for us to see to be afraid of. Cut the crap. <laughs> Their grunts might be green, but Psycom's elites are cold-blooded beasts. They hit the field and it's game over. Uh-oh. Then let's run away. Ciao! But, hey, hey, wait! <laughs> What's a man to do? <laughs> Ciao! <laughs> Dialogue update, so we can do some research if we want to. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to at this stage. I think we just push on. There's the potential that we could go back and fight enemies to gain uh, experience points, but I, I don't think we can be arsed with that. I don't think we necessarily need to. to Alright, let's do some combat, guys. If I could fight all these guys at once for more points in one fight, I would, but um, it's probably best to just do it to behave ourselves. Alright. There we go. What is techniques? Libra. Can't remember what this does. I think Libra is your way of like understanding what certain enemies do, is that right? Dagger coming through as well. Nice. That smirk. Mm -hmm. There we go. What did we get for that? 36 points. Not bad. That's almost like a free upgrade on like 40 HP or something like that. So we definitely want to be doing that, but I don't want to stop and do it every after every fight, guys. That's pretty efficient, but it's also kind of slow and boring to watch. So we'll upgrade our uh, we'll upgrade our skill tree every every now and then. If we come across a fight that we struggle against, obviously we'll insta kind of use everything we have to beat them but mm -hmm. how can you hate vanille how can anyone hate vanille i'm pretty sure mrs wolfie wasn't a fan of vanille i think she thought she was a bit too fucking perky um but i i actually liked her i had vanille quite a lot in my party we'll see if she maintains that space um in this playthrough all right i think against these guys i should have maybe considered queuing up my um I think I want to queue up Blitz for sure. Just as much as possible. Oh, Lightning's about to die. I did not even notice. I can't stop now. Whoops. Did she insta die? Holy crap, they must have all targeted her. There you go. First death. Feels bad, man. Alright, let's go back in. I honestly wasn't even paying attention when I realised our health was in the red. She was already dead. Oops. Uh, luckily, the game gave us a generous reload, which is nice. These guys were scary. Yeah, Libra shows resistance in HP, thanks. Okay, sometime, somehow we got the, the preemptive strike on these guys. Uh, let's go ahead and use Blitz here. Alright. We we'll want to be very careful so that doesn't happen again. Alright, we'll drop this. We've almost got this guy staggered. I don't know what happened in that fight, but this one was a lot better. I don't know. We must have just got focused, I guess. I did use Libra in the middle of the fight as well instead of like actually attacking, so maybe that was a problem. I have to agree with Mrs. Wolfie. Let me use uh, Libra again. Does it time out or anything? Like... I think we Libra scan each enemy as we go, is that right? does it actually do? No like I know it shows resistances in that but is that like in your, is there like a database or something you can access? Hmm, upgrade our skill tree, hear that Jesse we're giving you an upgrade buddy. Chocobo Chick is the only good character in the game. 
So let the heartaches begin, says Ollie. Fail, delete your stay, restart, zero, this one, let's go. <laughs> Trump it all that. God bless, right. Um, that's probably the way we're supposed to go, so we obviously want to have a quick peek down this alley, make sure we're not missing anything. Lightning just runs in without our team and just fucking insta dies. We gotta be careful of these little scallywags. We got another preemptive strike, feels good, man. There we go. Oh, it's happening again. Got uh, stop lightning from dying 24 7. There we go. Dude, she's almost dead again. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I can't stop now. They love attacking lightning, don't they? Holy shit. One minute she's full and then the next minute she's just dead. Oops. Maybe I gotta do the um, I probably gotta take Snow's Sentinel position a bit more seriously and just pop into that mode more often. I don't know if the game is was the PS3 version of this game also as forgiving guys in terms of the loading. You know how like when we die here, right? When every time we die we get put back in front of the fight we died in front of. I don't remember the original doing that. Maybe the PC version has like a really uh, like good autosave. Stay sharp. There we go. Just stay out of my way. <laughs> All right. Luckily, you can paradigm shift as much as you want and fairly quickly, which is nice. We'll let Vanille heal here. What difficulty are we playing on, Ask Jesse? We're playing on normal mode. There was only normal and uh, normal and easy mode to choose from, so. There we go. Maybe you should upgrade your skills. Yeah, maybe. I think, honestly, a lot of the fight just comes down to RNG and what the. I mean, like, see that fight there? That fight was way easier than when we just died. Um, and I, I really didn't do too much more other than maybe swap stances more often. I think if the enemies just all attack lightning, then you're just kind of up the creek. Um, we could definitely upgrade our HP to stop that happening. Here's a silver bangle, that's nice. Um, I keep pushing pause to upgrade my items. Uh, equipment, let's have a look. Uh, so, she's got the power wristband on. What does the silver bangle actually do? Give HP 100. Do we want to do that? Do we want to take damage off lightning and give her more HP so she doesn't die as frequently? I feel like that might actually be okay. Which means I can give strength over to... not you. <laughs> Maybe I give it over to Saz? He's not really in the fight right now, though. Um, I guess I could give it to Snow. And then I could give you the Iron Bangle instead of Doctor's Code. How about that? Maybe that's a better balance for the time being. That'll stop Lightning from like being one hit, I think, given her 100 HP. That's going to be pretty helpful. Okay. This is one of the more popular complaints. Party leader dies in Game Over, regardless of the other characters being alive. Um... I mean, I kind of get it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the same as like a lot of Final Fantasies, right? I don't know, actually. Now that I think about it. Um, I, I feel like you can just kind of get RNG'd a little bit and just get wrecked. You might have like a, a fight that goes really easily for you one time and then the next time it's actually quite difficult or whatever. Weird, isn't it? All the messed up ways to meet. I might as well make introductions. Is, is Snow voiced I'm by Snow, Troy Baker? Snow Villiers. Snow Villiers. Hope. Hope best time. What about her? Odom Security Regiment. She goes by Lightning. Last name's Farron. First, anybody's guess. Farron. Alright, so we've been introduced to the squad. Let's push on here. Oof, get good. Uh, <laughs> kids have <sighs> Generous retry has always been a thing. No, 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 I understand that you can retry, but I'm pretty sure, don't you load from the... In the uh, in the PS3 version, when you load the game, like, let's say you die, right, and you click retry and it loads up your last point, do you not get taken back to your last save? I feel like that used to happen in this game, but I'm not actually sure. Hmm. Hey, trying to take on the post-foul C. That was our first mistake. 
and shit him out into the sanctum. Hey! Why not? I mean, we've counted on the sanctum's foul sea for food, water, everything we've needed since the time we were born. But you still help us do it. Why is that? Gotta be something. Yeah, it might have been. Not so sure anymore. All right, cool. Data log update. We could we could stop and read some of the data log stuff, guys, but it's gonna update fairly regularly, and I think if we keep pausing, it might be a bit problematic. Definitely a little bit slow. Um. All right, let's go. Tangle with these guys a little bit. Persona does that sadly. Other Final Fantasies actually let you control other party members, so it doesn't matter if your main character dies. Says Ollie. I oh, see. All right, there's one. Let's feel so strong, man. Nice. Just too easy. And yes, Snow is voiced by Troy Baker. Thanks, Holly. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. The harmonica. I heard the harmonica in there. They always stick in the harmonica in Final Fantasy games when you're traveling on the road. It feels good, man. Reminds me of Final Fantasy 15. Phoenix Down acquired. Okay, nice. Um, We got anything up here? We do. Let me grab this real quick. Let me drive the bus. Hope you know that the Sen roll bonus is uh, is for the next boss. You mean the sentient, like the uh, like the defensive roll? We'll see, guys. Well, I know your main character dies in Final Fantasy Tactics as uh, advanced. It's game over. Other characters can die permanently, says Damien, but you can replace them. Just sucks when a unique character dies. Oh, I see. There we go. Nice and easy. Six points for that fight. Ugh. Feels weak, man. Alright, before we go too further, I think we should probably, uh... We'll take this first of all. Eight vials of strange fluid. Um... So I can jump up here, or I can go left. We'll fight these guys first. Collect some XP. I think the soldiers actually give us a lot more XP than like the wolves and stuff. So there you go. Cool. Do we get 20, 20 plus for this? Nine. I guess not. Feels bad, man. Magician's mark. Okay, I think that is a. Uh... Is that equipment for snow? No, wild bear. Uh, who was that for? Was that an item? Magician's mark. Oh, we can straight up grant someone magic. Um, do we want to give that to Vanille? She's really squishy though. Gives her extra damage. Twenty in a magic wall, so she gains resistance. Yeah, sure. Neil's in the party, so yeah, all right, not bad, not bad at all. I think the most important thing to give our characters in the beginning is a bit of HP, just to give them a bit more durability, so they don't die as much. But all right, I will actually open the. Let's have a look at our our crystalladium here and buff a little bit just before we go any further. All right, uh, we'll continue on with commando here, and we'll go towards uh, where we were going last time, which is here. So we get 20 HP, which isn't that much. Um. Yeah, I don't know if that's actually going to be that helpful for Lightning right now, but we'll continue on. Bolster attack or ruin at the head of the attack queue when ch uh, target's change gauge is empty. Sure. Almost got there, but not quite. Looks like a passive buff as well, which is nice. Uh, snow. Let's see what you've got, buddy. Um, against Sentinel, I think we keep going... Uh, we've got all of this, right? Yeah, yeah, so he's completely buffed in the Sentinel role. We can't do anything more. So, as a commando, what can we gain? We can gain 70 HP, which is actually quite a big deal. Um, Ravager, we can go towards HP and Magic. Let's just say, uh, let's just give him the commando buff, I guess. Um, we'll give him that. And then, as a Ravager, we'll give him... Uh, let's give him HP. 
just make him as tanky as possible, because if he isn't sitting on all roll, we want him to tank up as much as possible. Uh, can I give him anything else? Oh, I can. Alright, so Snow's completely upgraded. I can't do anything more with him. Uh, I should be able to just use R1 and L1 to flick between characters as well. I'm sorry. I need to get in the habit of doing that. Medic. Um, give you HP, Vanille, which is nice. Make you a little bit more tanky so you don't die as fast. What else have we got? Water. Oh, yeah, we were going towards that. We want to pick that up for sure. HP and magic. Let's pick up this. Um, and CP costs. We've got zero. How much do we have? We've got seven. All right, okay. Move towards that. Maybe we could have went towards magic and kind of went around this way. I'm not sure. We're kind of dabbling in different trees and I, I feel like that's not the play, but we'll be all right. Saz, you are nice and easy, mate, because you've only got the one tree, which is cool, so we'll just push you forward. Uh, we'll give you some strength while we're there. And last but not least, we've got hope. Yeah, I need to I need to get in the habit of doing like, um, like this. I'm sorry, guys. I'm pretty slow. Medic. What we got? 10 HP. Wow, Jesus. That's pretty woeful, if I'm being honest. Synergist. I think we keep ch chasing this, right? Here we go. Ravager, we could have also potentially given him magic and strength. Alright, some buffs across the board for our team there. Um, let's go on, we'll save our game up ahead here as well. Is there a little indent here, potentially with a chest? Nope. This area does look pretty, pr like it looks pretty nice to just wander about in, which is kind of cool. Alright, uh, let's make a backup save actually. Yeah, I've done that a few times. Character two, uh, Final Fantasy 2 has characters dying all over the place. Power Sheen mainly exists to boost the chain during the first attack ruin, not damage. Cherry's back. He says, might be handy once an enemy is staggered. The first hit then does extra damage. Okay, I see. Um, to boost the chain during the first attack ruin, not damage. Okay, so it just pushes the stagger bar up higher. But then Cherry says, once they're staggered, it does extra damage. Mm-hmm. Cool. The fact that Snow has CP left is triggering, says Sushi. I do re recommend making Lightning uh, magic based mostly. She attacks really fast and as a Ravager she can stagger enemies super quickly. Interesting. Well, we'll see what, how we get on, guys. For sure. We're we gonna have a boss fight here. It feels like there's a boss fight on the horizon. Mhm. Mm Very good advice. Howdy, Cherry, says Ollie. Average Ollie. I'm at work, so I have to have the stream muted. Oh, here she is. Ice cube. Oh no, please don't. Imagine he missed and just sliced off her arm. It just like crumbles beneath him. Will be here soon. If they find us, we're all dead. You think Sarah'd want that? You think you know how she feels? If I leave her, then I'll never know. We'll be fine. I can handle anything they throw at us. No one will die. I'll protect Sarah and Cocoon. No. <sighs> Does she look protected to you? I can save her! What can you possibly do? Oh, whatever it takes! <sighs> Lightning's a man beater, confirmed. Just can't admit it. Stay as much as he does. Oh my. Sana? Oh no, never mind. Stand back! 
All right, let's see how we go on, guys. All right, so let's have a look. Paradigm system tutorial. Uh, do we really need another one of these? What is this one telling us? The enemy stands before he has vast reserves of HP. This tutorial explains how to employ paradigms effectively to stagger it so you can deal extra damage, sure. An offensive paradigm like Relentless Assaults allows you to concentrate the party's attacks, stop those attacks in the chain, bonus you work so hard to build will begin to fall. As a result, it may seem like a good idea to stick with Relentless Assault for the entire battle. However, this enemy's powerful attacks are capable of reducing your party's HP to dangerous levels. If any of your party members take too much damage, shift to the second par uh, paradigm solidarity and con that contains medic. Avoid using a defensive paradigm for too long though, the longer you use it the lower your chain bonus will be and halt it and it'll be harder for you to stagger the opponent. Pay close attention to both your party's HP and the enemy's gauge. Yep, yep, yep. The goal is to stagger the enemy. Yep, we got it. Alright, let's see how we get on. So... We'll take a decent bit of damage there. Staggered. Alright, we'll use an item here. Um, I kind of want to use Libra here. Oh, there we go. Let's do it. Are we too late? Okay. Alright, attack. So we could we could have went into full attack there, but I thought I wasn't sure if he was going to attack us or not. So. kind of doing this out of sync honestly but we'll get as much damage in as we can oh what's happening here did i lose your opponent's up, uh, gauge is fully depleted finish healing as soon as possible and then shift your paradigm yeah, yeah, yeah. all right okay so we are full hp we'll let them attack and then we'll switch there we go We'll get him staggered again and then try and kick his ass. I think this should be good enough. Alright. We'll keep an eye on the fight here because if, if he does one big attack we could end up in a, a world of pain here. Okay. Let's swap out. I think it's just a slow and steady wins the race kind of deal against this guy. We could obviously swap back there. There's a good window for us to just keep kicking it in the ass but... Um, again, I think we've actually killed this thing already, so I just need to behave myself. Here's the big move. So we definitely want to be ready for this. Again, we take a lot less damage there. I think we can go into this mode now. Oh, he's dead. One more set of hits and we're good. Uh oh, quick kill it. Did we die? Alright, luckily Vanille actually hits. Luckily Vanille heals Lightning first, which is quite lucky, but... Alright, not bad. 5 star, we'll take it. Uh, we get 64 CP for that one, which is nice. So, uh, Chris the Gin points looking spectacular. The Jill Circuit acquired as well. Let's see what happens. Not bad, guys. Got a bit dicey at the start, but... It's kind of good to see that the game is challenging. You're leaving? <laughs> we want to help Sarah too. Uh, but without tools, we could be digging for days. The army's on our trail. So for now, we got to keep moving. For now. So I just abandoned her and saved myself? What about your focus? <gasps> what happened to banding together and saving the world? Isn't that what you promised? Now you want to forget it all and die right here? <sighs> Snow, you're nothing but talk. Lainan is a bit of a hard ass. But also, Snow is very kind of immature sometimes, so it's kind of nice that he's called out. Lightning. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll finish this focus and keep Sarah safe. That's my promise. Great job so far. <laughs> oh, God, dude. <sighs> it's 
stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. You too. Get going. Later. Okay. Save it for next time, kiddo. You'll get left behind. <laughs> but... Uh... It's okay, Hope. Light will take care of you. We'll meet again. <laughs> yeah. Count on it. I bet you that really confuses Snow at this point. He's like, what the fuck does that mean? That would have been an excellent opportunity for Hope to talk to him about it, but Hope's not got the balls yet. I'll get you out of there. Snow comes back with his uh, road digger, proceeds to jackhammer uh, Sarah out of the ice. Cool. Battling team change. We've got Vanille and Saz with us now. Um, we've lost our kind of tanky member. I'm not happy about leaving the Saz as, as, as a Ravager. So the pace of our fight should pick up now, but we do have a little bit less security with Saz. Um, let me just have a quick peek at his, uh, his equipment, and then we'll be on our way. The Iron Bangle. Um, no, nah, we'll leave as is. Snow's got our... our our strength damage AM, so we have to leave that for the time being. But offense is a good defense after all, yeah, for sure. I see you guys. I uh, I see a lot of you guys like typing out advice in the chat, guys, and what all you guys do when you play the game. I appreciate it, even if I don't respond to it directly. Sometimes I read it when I'm during the cutscenes, and obviously it's not a good time for me to feed back on what you guys are saying. But I appreciate all the tips and all the pointers. I have played this game before, just so you know. Um, we'll try out our own strategies. We'll see what we like doing. If you guys have got tips, then obviously feel free to give them to us. But if we're not doing things completely um, efficiently, don't get too upset, all right? Just try and relax and, uh, and we'll try our best. If I get to the point where I'm struggling over and over and I'm dying over and over to the boss, obviously we can adapt and maybe take some advice from you guys, but in the time, in the time leading up to that, we're just going to enjoy the game and see what party members we like and see how we like fighting and whatnot. And then we'll build it up, okay? As I said, I've got to the end of this game before, right to the very end, even though I haven't I haven't f saw the final cutscene or beat the final boss. Uh, I stopped playing when I was young. I got to like chapter 9 or something, or however many chapters there are in the game. I got to the second last chapter, so we got pretty far. So I have played the game before. I know how to get past a lot of this stuff. Um, so don't worry about it, all right? But thank you for the tips. Let's push through. Well, I got to go see you later, Ch says Cherry. Take it easy, Cherry. Thanks for hanging out, man. Mm -hmm. There we go. Feels good. There we go. Things getting a bit slapped here. So what we got here, diversity. What happens in this scenario? Is this two ravagers and two? One medic, one ravager, and one commando. Wait, what? Okay, yeah, that one would be fine. This is a more slow and steady wins the race kind of deal where we'll be a lot more safer. But we lose a bit of damage. Vanille doesn't actually do too much damage anyway, if I'm being honest. We'll see. A bit more aggressive than the other one. Mm-hmm. You've lost your tank and your damage dealer. I mean, we've got lightning, and yeah, snow does good, do good damage, but we'll be alright. We'll be fine. We've gained Sazzy Boy, and he's a two for one deal with a Chocobo, so I mean, what's not to like? So I want to go this way first. Where's my items at? There we go. Snow has 98 attack. Did you forget to unequip snow? Uh, I mean, I mean, guys, you, <laughs> you're playing this game like I've. 
like, hold on, let's, let's have a, a quick talk, right, and then I'll push on. I didn't forget to unequip Snow because I forgot that we'd lose him at this point of the game. It's been years since I've played this, alright? Don't make it out like it's a mistake. I didn't know Snow was going to leave the party at this point, alright? Just calm down. We'll get through the game no problem at all, okay? There might be an absolutely perfect way of playing this game, but don't worry about it. We're going to be fine. This game literally turns into Final Fantasy IX with its constant uh, party member changes. Damn it, Jack, play the game how we tell you to play it. Ha 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 ha. We're gonna be fine, guys, alright? Don't worry about it. I know you guys are eager to show me the best way, but uh, just relax, alright? Make yourself a little margarita or something. Maybe a little cup of tea, maybe a glass of water if you're feeling particularly healthy, right? Sit back and get comfy. If we lose, it's okay. It's all about getting better, alright? If you guys tell me exactly what to do, then it's not even... It's not even like I'm playing the game myself at this point. You understand? Cool. You're the one talk taking us through the game like you've platinumed it over five times. No, I'm not doing that. Guys, I'm not trying to pretend you guys are misunderstanding. When, right, if we talk about any other playthrough I've ever done on this channel or on Twitch or on YouTube, all right, I always talk you guys through based on what I know and how the party understands the situation and what we're learning as we go through. If there's games that I'm a master at, I will talk with a bit more confidence. But the reason I'm talking from an educational, explan uh, like an explan explanatory point of view, is because there are people who have never even seen this game before. You guys are like the elite, alright? You guys are here because you love Final Fantasy XIII or you like Final Fantasy, alright? You guys know a lot more than I do. But some people have never seen it before, so if I'm explaining things, it's because I'm explaining it for the people who have never seen it before. Or people who are coming here just out of the blue, you know what I mean? Maybe they've saw Final Fantasy XIII advertised before and they're thinking about picking it up or some shit, I don't know. Because the game does have a lot to explain. I'm not explaining it from a I'm the best in the game kind of deal. Alright? You guys gotta relax. Okay. Right, I wanna go the other way. Tool. I wanna go the other way. Are we cool? Are we comfy? Are we comfy, guys? Mm-hmm. To be fair, Final Fantasy XIII is a terrible teacher. Exactly. So we gotta make do. Alright, we're just trying to help everybody out. The only game I've seen you be a master at was Tokyo Jungle, says Corey. <laughs> Tokyo Jungle. <laughs> There we go. There it is. Alright, guys. Thanks for making me laugh. We're alright. I remember the first time I stopped playing this game, the first time I got it. Oh, here we go. Upgrade for Saz, maybe? Uh, the first time I stopped playing this game was actually after the last boss, and then I went to bed that night. So, uh, we're actually doing further, getting further than I did the first time I played this. And uh, Not in terms of completionist progression, but like, the first time I actually played it, we stopped. At the before now. So Saz, we could give him more magic if we want. Um, why does his strength arrow point down but then it goes, oh okay, because like, okay, this is as if he's got nothing equipped, I get it. Do we want to give Saz magic? Does Saz even have any magic? He's got fire and Libra. I mean, sure. Okay, let's try it. See if it sucks or not. Um, is that the one with the Pomeranian? Yeah, Saz's best mag weapon. Yep, and the graphic re reproduction scenes. Not the graphic reproduction scenes, Corey. Don't bring that back up. I've been trying to forget that for weeks. For months. Alright, don't bring up Tokyo Jungle and it's rabid sex scenes, okay? TOS, man, TOS. Alright, eventually I think we get out of this place. Um, you get this kind of nice cinematic shot. The place is pretty cool. Um, even if it is a little chilly. Alright, frog guys. we got to be careful because these enemies are above an a-hole. I should probably use my XP. Um, I should probably use the CP that I gained from the boss fight as well. Good XP for that one, that was pretty decent. Um, Still couldn't talk to him. You never get past this if you don't say something. Words won't change anything. What's the point of this? You'll learn exactly how I feel. 
Here's Hope giving it all his big man talk, like he's actually gonna talk shit to Snow. We know that's not gonna happen, because right now Hope's in his pussy phase. Um, we got some fights up here, as well as some uh, as an item, so what we'll do is we'll fight these guys. Shame we didn't get the preemptive strike, but we were kind of close. I will fight these guys and then we'll do some uh, leveling up guys, alright? Hopefully these guys don't kill us. I would like to avoid that if at all possible. Oh no, are we doing work here? He does so much damage. Oh my god, look how yellow his guns are actually, what the fuck? Nice. I haven't actually clicked on the store in a while. Um, you know the save points, guys. Maybe I should look at maybe upgrading some of my weapons. Hmm. That was the funniest reaction I've ever seen you do. <laughs> oh gosh. What have I got? What have I got? Examine. Oh. Looks operational. Oh hell yeah. Uh oh. Looks like we've got some enemies to tangle with. Can we not just blast them with the gun as well? Would that have been too much to ask? Let's, uh, before we go into this area, guys, let's use some points. Again, I don't want to get in the habit of doing this every two seconds, but... Um... There's power chain. Take HP. We'll give magic to lightning as well. And eventually we'll clean up some more HP as... So you guys were saying Builder is like a Ravager, is that right? strength. There's water as well, which would be nice. Maybe we should concentrate on picking up some of those. Um, the next time I get the opportunity, I will make sure Lightning gets uh, more XP in a Ravager tree, okay? Alright, Vanille, you've got some solid magic stats. Um, we'll keep having a look at some of your cure and abilities. This is the only thing about this system, is I often forget like which way I was going around the tree. Let's go this way. Almost gave her straight three strength, but couldn't make it. What else are you waiting on? It's quite hard to pick. I feel like you should just commit to one of them. Um, rather than dicking around, but who knows. Sure. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I guess. Still not pushing L1 and R1. I feel like I'm a noob. Uh, right, Synergist, I think we keep going with this for Hope. Which means he's maxed out here, which is fine. Um, a Ravager, maybe? Strength, what else has he got as a Medic? Cure. It's kind of boring. Yeah, we could use Hope as like our backup Medic. That could be a thing. Give him some HP. That was a lot of CP, though, for like, nothing. Feels bad. Alright, cool. Onwards. We're kind of fully buffed at this point. Ooh, preemptive strike, please. Oh, yeah. Chop, chop, chop. So many. I gotta try and get my. Uh... What the fuck, dude? We want to. There we go. Nice. Because we're killing these guys, we're getting the reset on our uh, on our blitz attack, which is nice. The music in this game is actually one of the best bits about it, in my opinion. quite good in this game because you don't actually have to really worry about like managing your MP or whatever. You're kind of just um, letting your healers do their thing in the background and it means you can kind of concentrate on the on the fight. Now sometimes what you can find is the healer will heal like the wrong fucker in the battle and then you're in a, in a bad spot. But uh, yeah, we'll see how annoying that gets later on. They look like water pistols, says <laughs> Ollie. <laughs> cool, eh? Um Says so actually forgot how to shoot his guns when he became a Lassie. As a mage, doesn't uh, doesn't have to be specifically be Ravager. Her rune hits hard. Okay. Actually, physical damage have a 1.2 damage multiplier compared to rune. Rune is much faster though. Okay, good to know. Good to know, guys. 
Mm -hmm. The game showed me that violins don't always have to be sad. They can be pretty motivational. <laughs> Hell yeah. Alright, nice. This game has a lot of fucking negative moments, but... Maybe it'll end on a positive note, we'll see. Right, I want to have a look at the shop here before I save. Is there anything I can do here? Unicorn market. Is this just Phoenix? Right, okay, that's nice and simple. What about the outfitters? Here we go. Power wristband. Strength. And also we can buy magician's mark if we want to. These are expensive, but we could afford one. I don't think we need it, necessarily. Um... I guess we could give ma magic to Saz as well. I've never actually... I don't think I built Saz as a magic user before. But that's a potential option. I think we just hang on to our money for the time being. Let me save, save my game here. How long have we been streaming for today? Let's make a, a backup save here. We've been live for almost four hours. That's not bad at all. I'm uh, going to go and have a quick bathroom break, guys. Um, I'm going to go and uncharge my phone as well, or unplug my phone. I'll be back in like five minutes. These have been fantastic today, folks. We've had a lot of... Uh, a lot of good kind of, I'm trying to think of the word, interaction. My brain feels like it's moving at like 10% speed today for some reason, probably because I got up so late, but we've also had a lot of gifted subs today, guys, and I'm uh, really grateful. So thank you for being here. Thank you for all the love. We'll be back in a minute. Shake it more than three times you're playing with yourself. Not like this. Glances back at chat, quickly sees at CD player's comment. Not like this, chat. Not like this. Right. Onwards with the plot. Oh, hey. Is that a behemoth? That looks a lot like a behemoth. Gran? Mm. Battle technique. Last tutorial, then. What we got here? Uh, sure. Hit me. Techniques are special abilities that you use by uh, expended technical points. Your party's TP gauge appears below. Yeah, yeah, we know that. Successful unleashing a full ATP gauge of queued abilities or, uh, or earning a high battle rate and replenishes TP. Uh, sure. Try using the technique Libra. Well, this is good, actually. I kind of wanted this because I wasn't actually sure. I know what Libra does, but I didn't actually see the benefits on my screen when I activated it last time. So let me just see this. Um, we'll go ahead and use Libra here. Um, using Libra reveals the abilities and weaknesses of your enemies. You can now view the enemy until at any time by pressing C. Um, what is that on my controller though? Revealing enemy attributes will automatically change the abilities selected by the auto battle and by your allies. So that's really good then actually. If we Libra each enemy as we come across them guys, it means that we can actually um, allow the auto battle to function more efficiently. So we want to be using Libra as much as possible. Um, using Libra on this Alpha Behemoth revealed that it's vulnerable to both fire and water damage. If a character's current role has access to that ability, um, the character will now be able to deal damage more efficiently. So we don't actually have water unlocked on Lightning, but the other two guys should be more than fine here. 
Um, cool, additional techniques will become uh, available over time. More powerful techniques consume more TP when used, and unlike TP, it's not restored automatically after the battle. Cool. Alright, that was sore. Power charge in at 25%. Alright. We gotta get this guy ace up. Oh, he looks like he's going. Power charging at 50%. We're gonna keep staggering this guy. We'll use a potion here. We'll just keep pushing him. Try and get him staggered before he charges in time. Almost gone. Hopefully he goes for someone else. Stagger? 90%. Get him, get him, get him. There we go. Can we kill him in time? I think we can. Nice. That was close. I wasn't worried, chat, were you? Right. Get some decent XP there as well. And we probably got our TP points back. Data log updated. Alright, we've got no items out on the ledge. I think we've been... Well, maybe not, actually. Yeah, 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 we didn't get this. Alright, give me this. Libra Sculpt. Must be an item that we can use to just cast Libra, I guess. Alright, I don't know if there was anything on that little ledge over there. Um, I hope not. It was kind of jutting out and I don't actually know if it was like interactable or, or what not. No. You can never be too sure with these kind of games. Sometimes that ledge might actually crumble and reveal a new path or some shit for like a chest or something, so... I thought it'd be worth exploring. Right bumper. Okay. Thank you guys. GG's. You guys are making it weird chat, I'm seeing some weird comments right now. I kind of agree with you though, Ollie. Mm. If you go into the sentence, you might be able to change the button prompts on screen. Um, I don't think that you can, Sushi, and the reason I think that is because I read some reviews of this game on Steam to see if the game actually runs smoother, and one of the latest reviews said that the the keyboard commands are just permanently on the screen, so uh, I might be able to, and I can have a look, but I'll do it off screen later, okay? Maybe we can fix it for tomorrow. But I am skeptical. Everyone made it out okay. So do I. But nowhere is safe for him now. Damn it. Just because they shared a neighborhood with a foul sea. They get treated like pulse tainted rats. People really hate pulse, don't they? Not hate. More like fear. Tens of millions of people. Scan a pulse boogeyman. They'd be shaking in their beds every night if they knew that the sea like us were around. But they'd purge that entire town. It's crazy, I know. But the Sanctum Foul Sea did nothing to stop it. Up until now, Eden's always stepped in to correct their errors in judgment. I guess humans aren't worth the effort. Figure they'll let us just kill each other off. The sea are not human. Listen, you, that's enough! Huh. <sighs> Vanille getting fed up with the whole bullshit already. Alive. That's something! Where is it? I don't know. Oh. There. <laughs> They're sealing off the area. They're trying to trap the stragglers. We gotta get moving before we're caught in the net. Alright. 
dialogue update. We so we can go that way. Do I want to go that way for sure? Is there any other options that I've missed back here? Um. Cool. For the time being, we we chilling, guys. We could upgrade after that fight because I think we got a decent amount of XP. But I, I'm kind of tempted to not go in. Yeah, again. I don't want to top up every like ten seconds. Mm -hmm. PC PS3 gets much more. Uh, what made you play it on PC rather than PS3? Um, I had I, I own a copy of Final Fantasy XIII on PS3, but uh, and it would have been more difficult for me to use my capture card on the PS3 to stream it with you guys. Um, it would have been setting my PS3 up, and then I don't think my current capture card would have been able to work with the PS3. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but I've not actually set it up before, so I don't know how awkward it would be. I already owned it on PC as well, so it was a case of, you know, Although the frame rate is a bit jank at times on the PC port, for the most part the game is fine. Good enough for streaming anyway, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I guess the PC is a bit easier to record, yes, exactly that. You're spot on the money, Ollie. Mm -hmm. Do you actually own a PS3 PS3 thinking about it, Jack? We yeah, I do, I do, guys, yeah. I just haven't set it up in a long time. Um, it's not that the hardware of the PC can't run this game, guys. It's just the fact that the port of the PC of this game is very bad. It's very unoptimized, so your frame rate is really jank. I mean, you can have the best hardware possible, but the, the frame's still going to be a bit jerry at times. It's just the way that it's been coded across. Um, there's a lot of games that are kind of like that. If anybody's played um, Final Fantasy... Uh, what what one? What Final Fantasy has Van in it, guys? I always forget this. <clears throat> Is it Final Fantasy XII, Zodiac Age? Is that right? There's a PC port for that game as well, and it's also not very good. <clears throat> it runs fine, but you you really need a, like a decent machine to be able to power it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a, a new performance boosting mod, though. Well, there you go. What capture card have you got, Ask Mr. Snowbar? We've got the Elgato HD60, I think. I think that's the one that we've got. But this is fine for the most part, guys. The combat looks great. It's just some areas of the game look a bit uh, ugly. Van is 12, yeah. Thanks, guys. I know you have to remind me of that constantly. But it's just one of the ones I haven't played, so I, I don't remember it as easily. I always get mixed up between 9 and 12 for sometimes, or for some reason. Thankfully, 12 plays itself. I can use the HD60 with my 360 just fine, so it should be good with a PS3 if you wanted to use that in the future. It's not that I wouldn't expect it to work, it's just that I don't know how to set it up, because the, uh... Well, I guess it would be pretty much the same, I'm just thinking about like the, how the audio is produced and stuff. It probably wouldn't be too different, but... There was something that's been holding me back. I would also have to update my console as well and things like that. I don't know, my PS3 might actually die. There is a possibility that the PC actually does actually... Despite the, um... So despite the fact that certain environments might be a bit jerry frame rate wise, there is a, there is the possibility that the PC would just boot and load the game faster. So you know when we die and it loads the area again as you come back to the start? That would load faster on the PC, you know? If you are load, booting up the game and launching it, it instantly launches on PC and then you go straight in. PS3, you're gonna have to wait on a lot. So PS PS3 is great and stuff, but it also has like a couple of downsides too. Um, I do wonder about that. They should still have the the 13 trilogy source code. You think they could then scale it for the Switch? Just the same as the PS4. I would I would imagine that it just comes down to whether they expect the game to make enough money if they re-release it, because obviously they'll have to put in a little bit of effort, and they must have a target. I would imagine. I think as a company they have. I think they have targets about how much money they want to make and they probably look at the how well games are received and how popular games are in the current kind of uh, environment. So I think they look at all the games they think that would make them money to re-release as a HD edition. Like Final Fantasy X and X2 is very beloved, right? So they re-released that as a HD remaster trilogy. Or as a HD remaster, sorry. And... Uh, I think that's because they knew that that one was very beloved amongst a lot of fans and so it was going to make them a certain amount of money. I think if they re-release 13 it wouldn't sell as much and so that's probably why they've held off doing it uh, on things like the Switch and things like that. 
I, I, I honestly think it comes down to how much time... If they had unlimited time, they would probably just re-release everything, right? Because ultimately, um, if you re-release 13, it's probably going to make more money um, on the Switch than it would cost to port it across to the Switch, right? I don't think that's a very hard job, even though I'm not a programmer. But then certain games are going to make a lot more, and I think that they spend their time picking and choosing which games they're going to re-release on different ports. From a business point of view, that's how I imagine it works. I could be way off on that, but I think it comes down to them choosing... You know, we could make 60 million extra if we port this game, or we could make 30 million. Obviously, they're going to go for the one that makes the most. Um, sometimes it's nice to think that they care about the fans, but at the end of the day, a lot of these companies are trying to run a business, guys. They're trying to maximise profits for shareholders. And, uh, yeah, no half targets. Uh, we're going to jump up here. Do I want to go that way? I'm looking for the chest. I feel like there's a chest here somewhere. We can go left or right. I don't think it matters. I just hear Vanille squeaking the whole time. Yeah, I can I can hit a chest. There we go. Can I have this please? What is that? 50 gil! 50? There we go, we got another chest here as well. What I would do if I had 13 source code. I know Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 had to be rebuilt for the HD remasters. Make it into a more playable game, right other? I think I remember about 10 having to be rebuilt, which is why Tidus' face model looks different when compared to the PS2 version of the remasters. <laughs> Tidus' is HD remaster face, Craigasm. It must be quite difficult, guys. I mean, there's some games that they, uh, they obviously remaster and adapt, and then other games that they don't remaster as much. I mean, look at Final Fantasy VIII and the kind of criticisms that's received when it's been remastered. Because obviously they updated all the sprites and all the characters, but then now they're sitting really, really defined on this kind of old-fashioned background, and I feel like uh, there's definitely different levels of effort that go into these things. Again, I think it's how much money they expect to make, how many sales they expect to make. Probably defines how much uh, work they're going to apply. Alright, I don't know if this is a boss or not. We got a preemptive strike on it though. There we go. I think I should have killed the little guy first. But now that this guy's staggered, I'm tempted to just go for that. How, how much damage are you going to take, buddy? Should have definitely not swapped Tarpy through this fight. Just stay out of my way. Huh. All right. Stay sharp. Uh, I probably want to use my Libra more often here. I lost my stagger bar. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Vinyl, please. Oh, is she dead? Oh, I think we interrupted his move. There we go. His lips always don't. Uh, his lips seem so big in the remaster. <laughs> It must be quite hard, guys, because the thing is, when these games were made back in the day, they weren't made for, like, widescreen TVs. A lot of them were made for square televisions, and now you've got these big widescreen fuck-off TVs that are, like, stretching the graphics of the old days, and it must be quite awkward, I think. Frankly, I don't too much put, uh, put too much faith in the corporation, says the other. People turned uh, the turned on the FF8 remaster real quick, like, Mon Square doesn't love Final Fantasy VIII, they give it a remaster, Square doesn't love Final Fantasy VIII, yeah. I'm not entirely sure. I hate the soul, uh, soulless meme, but the Final Fantasy VIII remaster does objectively look worse style-wise than the original. Yeah, no, I feel where people are coming from on that. It must be... I don't know. It must be difficult. There's a lot of people who will have been pleased with the remaster, and they're happy playing the game, but then, obviously, it's difficult to please everyone. The thing is that I've found, guys, as a, as a like... I wouldn't go so far as to say a content creator, but, like, at the end of the day, that's kind of what I'm doing on Twitch and YouTube, right? When I do Let's Plays, 
and when I do like playthroughs of games or even if I do a video covering a topic about Final Fantasy, one thing I have super super like found to be like really clear is that like Final Fantasy fans are some of the most passionate but also like self-centered people I've ever encountered. And I don't mean that in a rude way because I, I consider myself a Final Fantasy fan, right? I've got a lot of knowledge of Final Fantasy 7, 8, 10, 10 to 13 and 15. Those are the ones I've played the most, right? So I consider myself a fan. That's quite a lot of the franchise. Um, or at least the modern era of Final Fantasy, right? But there are so many Final Fantasy fans out there that will find so many problems to fight over. It's unreal. That's why I don't envy, you know when the when the Final Fantasy 7 remake came out, there was people who like loved the idea and people who hated the idea and then the people like me who were nervous, right, because I was scared they were going to fuck it up. I would never have ever wanted to be the guy behind the, the design and the direction of the, re, the remaster because no matter what that guy does, if he produces the best video game that the planet has ever seen, there will still be a huge amount of fans who are, who are disappointed by it or find problems with it. And... On one hand, it's nice because it means that these fans are they really care about the games, but sometimes the way that they respond to certain elements are is really obnoxious, if I'm being completely honest, you know? I am the type of dude that buys a, a Final Fantasy game and I'll play it because it's a Final Fantasy game, I'll play it to see how it goes, I'll play it to the end to make sure that I enjoy it, or at least most of the way through, um, before I give judgement on it. If I ever give judgement and I haven't completed it, because let's face it, I've not completed this game before, I've got to chapter whatever, the the, 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 fin the second last chapter, Final Fantasy 15, I never finished, but when I give my thoughts on the game, I always give that disclaimer, you know, I haven't played it right to the end, I haven't seen everything the game has to offer. Some people are just so quick to dismiss, you know, and people think to themselves, oh, because I've played all of the Final Fantasy games, I am the biggest fan, so therefore I have the, the strongest opinion. And it can get quite messy sometimes. It can get quite messy. Um, videos where you give your opinion about what you would like to see in upcoming Final Fantasy games, they can get as many likes and dislikes as each other, um, even if you're being really positive and energetic, you know. If you're saying like, you know, I would, I, I want this game to be so great, I want this game to have this, 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 and this. I would like to see this done better. This would be really cool if they copied this part of this game that I really enjoyed. It doesn't matter how you present your argument, there is always a, a huge portion of the community that normally stands up and be like, actually, I don't like that, which is fine. But just a heads up, it can be like that sometimes. Especially, Final Fantasy is like one of the only franchises I've seen the fans so kind of... Um, it's, it's like hard to make them happy and please everyone. There's so many different opinions, so many different thoughts, so many people want different things. It must be really difficult to design a Final Fantasy game in the modern era. Maybe because there have been so many different editions at this point. Um, I'd rather have a competent port than trying to improve the original. I do like the 7 remake because it's trying to be different but in a good way, says the other. I think that the Final Fantasy 7 remake looks absolutely fucking incredible, guys. I think it looks fucking top tier. And uh, if there was a large portion of people who were nervous about it being, you know, potentially done poorly or changed or whatever, um, hopefully the vast majority of the, these people are, you know, feeling a bit reassured because every trailer I've seen of the new Final Fantasy game looks absolutely bonkers. Um, and every time I see new footage, I'm like, holy shit, this game looks absolutely incredible. Now, obviously, there's the issue of it being released uh, in kind of segments, you know? Like, they're releasing part one, part two, and whatever else. Uh, people might have a problem with that. I could understand that issue as well, but I would much rather that they take, at least in my opinion, I would much rather that they take enough time to make the perfect game than to rush out something that's half-assed, because that seems like it's going to be a worse off time. Just my thoughts. You guys don't have to agree. But, uh, like I said, everybody's got different thoughts on the matter. Mm -hmm. I wonder what it'd be like to become a crystal. Abby. You're gonna complete your focus? <laughs> Maybe. If I knew what it was, I probably don't want to know. Hey, Lightning, did Sarah say anything to you about her focus? Yes, it involved a toaster and a swimming pool. Nothing. Uh, you know what? She probably didn't want to worry you. Or she just... 
didn't think she could trust me. Oh, Lightning, please. Oh. Not like this. Okay. You do get little breaks in the action for character kind of reflection. That's going to be happening a lot, guys. Um, so we saved here. Do we want to do our Crystallarium ship? Let's take some more fights before we do that. Try and min-max a little bit here. Hello. Mm -hmm. We need more people in the industry like Yoshi, says Sushi. Willing to completely shut a game down in order to provide the product he was proud of. Yeah, Final Fantasy fans are very hard to please. You mess with their nostalgia. May the various gods have mercy on you. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting, guys, because like you can <clears throat> you can make a video about a game, right? About a Final Fantasy game, and uh, e again, even if you're like super positive, people will find things to gripe at and have issues with, which is fine because it's good to be critiqued. But the thing is, like, if you make a Final Fantasy video, the vast majority of people who watch it are watching it because they have some sort of um, interest in the in the franchise or the game that you're talking about, right? But it's unbelievable how many like arguments can start within fans, you know? Everybody turns up because they love the game, but then within that small group of fans, they somehow end up trying to punch the fuck out of each other the whole time that they're there. Instead of just being like, I'm looking forward to this game. Here's what I like the look of. Not so sure about this, but that's okay because I love the game. It never ever comes back around with that, you know? It's always just, no, they better not do this again because this sucks. That shit. I hated when they did that. I hated it. Oh my god, I hate Like, okay, relax. It's just a fantasy game. Literally called Final Fantasy. Anyways. Gets a bit tiresome, is all. It must be really hard, like, for the for people to receive criticisms on their games. Um, the Final Fantasy devs, that is. Yeah, I hate that they don't... Uh, I don't mind that they take their time on a game, but releasing it in parts is a bit mess, is Jess. I, I guess, like, so... It is, to me, it's kind of sad, right? Because to me, let's talk about Final Fantasy VII real quick, guys, right? And I, I won't keep this up for too long because, again, we're going to end up in one of these discussions that I'm just talking of right now. As far, my, here are my thoughts on the sequential kind of... Um, the fact that they're releasing it in little chunks, right? First of all, Final Fantasy VII, when it came out, it was on three discs. So, I mean, to a certain degree, they, they, they tried to make something epic and they, they had to release it on like three discs because of technology restraints at the time. Now, the thing is when you bought three discs, you got them all together, you got the entire story there and then, right? So there's a difference there. But the point I'm trying to make is I guess back in the day they tried to make this kind of groundbreaking game, which it was because if you look at the, the graphics and what Final Fantasy VII achieves as a, like a, a small PS1 game compared to all the other PS1 games, it's absolutely insane. Like it's absolutely incredible. Whether you like the game or not, the effort level put in is pretty substantial, right? So there's that. I think that my hopes, and I don't know if I completely agree with my own argument here, but my hopes is that in releasing separate games that people have to pay for twice or even three times if they release part three, I don't know how it's going to work just yet. Um, my hope is that it just means that they put a lot more resources into each part, which means that when the final thing is complete and you've got Final Fantasy VII Remake, if it's in part one and part two or part one, two and three, I don't know, right? The, the hope is that that's like, a really good fucking effort, you know? And if that's if the fans want the best of the best, then this is the way that they do it. Because you could argue that they're making more money doing this things this way, which obviously they're trying to do, but at the same time, it also means that they can put more time and effort into each part. Each each individual part is going to get its own love and it's going to get its own kind of uh, amount of effort, which I think is kind of cool. I'm kind of sad because to me Final Fantasy 7 really begins once you leave Midgar. A lot of you guys have said before, oh no Jack, I really like the Midgar aspects. And that's cool, but for me, I really get excited when I'm playing FF7 when you finally get out of Midgar for the first time and suddenly you've got the entire world map, the entire adventure awaiting you, you know? Midgar's very cool and it's very unique, but it's also quite gloomy and depressing in a way. And I feel like the game really opens up once you leave Midgar and I don't even know if I'm going to get to see that in part one of Final Fantasy 7. I don't even think I am. But we'll see. The different parts are all meant to be the length of a full game, says Sushi, yeah. So, I don't know. It is, it's obviously very controversial. I guess they've done it for their own reasons, but hopefully they produce some good shit. That's, that's all I can hope for. 
I always felt Seven got more attention than it needed. Like it was just a single entry in the franchise, and then Square brought um, out the completion or the compilation of Final Fantasy Seven. And there's some pr uh, pretty fun games, but I gave the Seven fans higher expectations for that part of the franchise. I remember people saying Seven deserves a remake, and I thought, well, how about an FF1? Shouldn't they be remade that in order, as opposed to starting halfway through the franchise? I mean, I would I would agree with that, Ollie. But the thing is. It's, you can't, I don't feel like saying halfway through the franchise is fair because each installment of Final Fantasy is its own story, right? So, I mean, if they, let's say they went back to remaster Lord of the Rings and they started on the on the two towers or something, right? You'd be like, what the fuck? But I feel like Final Fantasy VII was the first game, the first Final Fantasy released on the PS1. And so because of that, the that's where a lot of the fans were born. I'm not saying that Final Fantasies 1 to 6 are unimportant or that they're bad. Because, well, first of all, I haven't played them. And two, like, I wouldn't do that anyway. But I think that the reason that Final Fantasy VII, may, people might argue that it deserves a remake is because that's for a lot of people where their Final Fantasy journeys began. Um, it might even from there, um, all of those fans who started Seven, a, a large portion of them went might, might, might have went back and then started to play the other ones because Seven was so good. I do feel like Seven was a remarkable game for its time. Um, again, compare it to any other PS1 game and look at the length and the story and the characters and the world and the systems that are all built. I mean, you can play Final Fantasy VII today and even though it's a PS1 game, you can get a really complex system of uh, of how you want to lay out your party, who you want to have in your party. It's got secret characters for you to find in the world. I mean, even when we played through Final Fantasy VII on stream together, there was so much f secrets that I'd never seen before. Um, I didn't know a anything about the jungle or the scene with Vincent and Lucrezia um, and behind the waterfall. I didn't know about, um, obviously I knew about the weapons, but we defeated the weapons. I feel like there was a lot of like, a lot of effort put in. You can chocobo breed and go and find Knights of the Round if you want. That's like a whole chapter of the game if you can be arsed doing that stuff. Um, the amount of enemies and diversity in the game is insane. The amount of time you can spend upgrading certain characters if you really want to get their final limit breaks is insane. Like for a PS1 game, it's it's actually unreal and i feel like that's where a lot of the hype comes from if you necessarily like if you don't necessarily like final fantasy 7 the most i can understand why you might feel a bit like ugh why is this game getting so much love why not one of these other ones if i was to argue against that i would probably say it's just because final fantasy 7 delivered so much and it has the biggest fan base but i don't know if that's necessarily true that's just what i would guess if i had to try and answer that question maybe but it's no lie that most of the Western world codes FF7 their first game because the 6 were most released in Japan, America and branded as Final Fantasy 4 and this 2 and 6 is 3. They're vastly increasing the story in each segment and each game is supposed to focus on different groups, says Sushi. Part 1 is all Midgar, there you go. I've stood back and looked at the development of 7's remake and there's so much uh, uncertainty and strains during pr uh, production. I really hope that the 7 fans will appreciate the work that's gone into the remake and as opposed to just writing off as a bad remake, says Ollie. I'm sure people will give it its fair chance guys, but I mean who knows. The, the thing is, when the game comes out, you can't really, instead of worrying what other people are going to think about it, I think all you can do is just like play it, find out and decide for yourself what you think, and then make your voice heard in amongst all the other comments, you know? If you play it and you feel like it's underwhelming, then sure, you can say, hey, I was really looking forward to this. It didn't really hit this point, this point and this point, which I really hoped it would scratch. You know, I thought it would deliver on this, this and this, but it's actually fallen a bit short. It's kind of below my expectations. I'm sad, but this is my thoughts. Or, if the game is really good, you can stand up and say, actually, I had a blast with this game. Fuck the hairs, you know? It, you, you can't get caught up in what other people think, because in the modern era, when games have become so ridiculously crazy, uh, crazy good, it must be hard to continuously have your expectations fulfilled, you know? Because ex expectations are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not going to give a fuck about what other people think when I play the game. I'm just going to play it, and if I think it's shit, I'm going to say, hey guys, I think this is shit. If I think it's okay, I'm going to say, hey guys, I like this, but I didn't like this. If it's really bad, I'm going to be like, guys, holy shit, I don't know. Yeah, well, if it's good, I'm also going to point that out as well, obviously. I'm just going to tell you guys how I feel. I always try and do that. Um, I'm hyped for the remake, but I'm also way excited for Persona 5 R. I'm still quite curious on Digimon Survive, says Corey. Yep, for sure. Someone said Persona 5 R. I'm literally dying of anticipation. Lol. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Still need to wait a month and a half, says Corey. It is going to be good, guys. I was thinking about Persona last night when I was trying to decide what I was going to play next. I was talking to my mates about it. I was talking to both uh, Ian, uh, who is Noobster, who sometimes comes to hang out, and I was talking to um, Billy, whose name is Infected Griffin in our channel. I was talking to those two guys, and they were kind of helping me try to decide what I was going to play next. 
and we were talking about Persona 5 and I was just saying how excited I was to play it but um, but yeah that was me lol still need to wait a month and a half says Corey hell yeah but at least we've got something to look forward to guys that's the most important thing every game is amazing for its time then something comes out with graphical enhancements better gameplay and suddenly the older game's not so stellar according to people unless they have fun memories with it says so, Ollie I'll literally be playing the 7 remake I've enjoyed 7 before now I'll be interested to see what they do says Ollie mm -hmm. hmm Billy's here. Even if there's literally no difference other than the graphics, I'd still pay full price for it. The last trailer won me over in so many ways. Yeah, some of the trailers I've seen for the game look fucking, un like, absolutely unstoppable, dude. Like, just seeing Red 13 in HD is gonna be, like, so bonkers. It's, it's gonna be good. As long as the content isn't removed, I'll, uh, I'll be content. There you go. Yeah, I agree. I agree as well, guys. Um, a lot of people want different things, and again, it must be so hard to fulfill... Uh, to fulfill all those like expectations it must be minging like I can't even imagine sitting in a fucking boardroom imagine you have a really good day of developing the game guys and then your your PR team or whoever's in charge their marketing team or something somebody's working on the trailer for all of your hard work right and the trailer drops and you expect it to do really well and then there's like 60% dislike ratio or something you know it must be really hard to go into office for the next month and just continuously work on what you've been doing and like stay motivated. Like, I don't think people take into consideration how how the human mind works and how difficult it must be to stay motivated when making these huge projects, working like long ass hours every single week for like three years. It must be such a fucking sweat fest. Like, I don't know, man. Sometimes I feel bad for the game directors, but again, when they pull it off and they succeed, they're obviously rewarded in history. But, oh boy, dude. I, I do not envy them in the slightest. I think before we go too far here, let's uh, have a look at our, our XP here and just upgrade a little bit. Mm hmm That one COD trailer, LMAO. Yeah, exactly, right? The, the, the COD trailer that dropped where it had like 10% likes and 90% dislikes. How, as a team... How, as a development team, have you meant to then take the next eight months of development and stick on target when you know that you're that the community already before you before they've even seen the product, they're already throwing tomatoes on the stage? It must be really hard. Most importantly, I'm most hyped for Wolfie's All Metal DW1 run. Please, not like this. Um, I decided with Lightning, I was going to try and get my way around to uh, that ability here, because if we give her the ability to cast water, she's going to be useful in more fights. Um. That being said, we are already close to a level up here. We could get to level 2 magic if we wanted. Hmm. Do we want to just grab that while we're here? I don't think we do. I think we start working towards getting to the, the water spell as fast as possible. We, got, we should have picked that up sooner, I think. Mm-hmm. I just want more HD Sephiroth. Hell yeah. Sephiroth. Um, Ravager, Medic, what we got here? What were we doing? Oh, hell yeah. So I can get Strength here, Magic, and HP. Fuck, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go Ravager. Okay. Alright, Saz, last but not least. We could also upgrade hope here as well, but uh, yep, we'll take that. We'll take HP. We've got arrow here for Saz as well, which is nice. Give him some wind. Oh, never mind. We couldn't quite get there. Feels bad, man. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I guess we upgrade hope as well. He's got 214. Uh, I'm going to keep upgrading his synergy. Oh no, we've already done that. He's maxed out there. That's fine. Uh, as a medic, maybe? 10 HP, what a disgusting amount required for that. Ooh. Ravager. Have we got any new skills soon? No. Oh god. I guess we go medic. Feels so gross. Alright, we're still at the point where we can't really grind against enemies, which is a bit of a bummer, but. We'll just have to make do, guys. Let me save on this bitch. Alright, let's save over this one. Save the two chapters. Is that? Yeah. Alright, cool. 
Let's go. People know that's it, that it's going to bomb. What do you mean, JK? Do you mean, are you talking about Final Fantasy VII? Oh god, uh, I think we need a forest all here. Ten six hundred gil. Alright, let's get a preemptive strike on this bad boy's booty. This should be an absolute slapping. This is an alpha behemoth. Alright. Stagger this bad boy ASAP. I'm gonna use uh I'm gonna use Libra on him. And you guys are saying that once that's cast I can do right bumper, yeah. So he is vulnerable to fire. Um and water actually. Thank you. We're kicking the shit out of this guy. He's dead. Later. That's gotta be a five star. Gotta be. Nice suit. Cool. That reminds me of Adele when she released the teased hello. Hello. Can you hear me? But didn't that go on to be like super successful? Isn't that, isn't that song like really, really successful? Hello, it's me, Adele. I'm locked inside the freezer and I can't get out by myself. Ugh, what a magic Kingdom Hearts remind, <laughs> remind flashbacks. All right, let's, uh, let's go here. We're getting strong. Yeah, it was amazing and done amazingly. Ow, ow, ow. I don't know if I've Libra these guys. Maybe I'll Libra these guys. Can I check? Oh, we have done it on these dudes. Cool. Mm, I don't think I want to change yet. Electro kick's coming through though. Alright. I need heals, please, Vinny. Okay. Teaser played for the first time she ever opened her Twitter and sees nothing and she had just assumed no one cared because she hadn't uh, made music in years but her partner was pissing himself because he opened his phone mere seconds later and Twitter was exploding. Oh I see. I didn't know that story. That's pretty cool. I always feel like Adele's quite an interesting character as a, as a music artist because isn't a lot of her songs about that one guy that she used to love and then he kind of like broke it off with her and then she's never quite gotten over him? Even though she's like married to like her husband and has children with him and stuff, she like still kind of writes songs about the like the love that she kind of broke up with. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I'm not exactly a, a master of Adele but I'm pretty sure a lot of Adele's like... A lot of her songs are fucking singing about like the guy that like she fell out with and that they never got back together and stuff. I always find that must be quite weird for our new husband. Imagine having a partner whose like career is really successful because she writes songs about someone she loved before. It's kind of weird. We are cold -blooded beasts, I, take it. I mean I'm assuming she loves the, loves the new guy. Oh hell yeah, double front flip baby. Hey. I could have maybe looked for the preemptive strike on this guy, but I just kind of decided to run in like an idiot. I don't know if I'm going to regret that or not. Uh, status immunities. Can I uh, flick between these? Oh yeah, okay. Let's uh... Okay, I do want to use Libra on this guy. Let's use it on the Ranger. Did I just lose Saz? No, he's still alive. I might use this again on him as well. 
he is not vulnerable to anything. Alright, go. There we go. Again, finally got some like change of colours in this area as well, which feels good, guys. Nice to see some actual yellows, as opposed to just white blue. All right, not bad. All right, fine. I never used to Libra anything when I first played this game, like a little idiot, and it would have made my life so much easier. I think there's a trophy for using it a hundred times. I don't know if I ever got that on the PS3. Alright, we're gonna go that way in a minute. I just no, 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 no. Yikes! I was trying to get the preemptive strike, but I actually couldn't see if that guy was walking towards me or not. What a dumbass! Right, we'll kill the rangers first. Alright, we gotta cancel that. Okay, get some heals. Wait for the cure to come through. Nice. Pew, pew, pew. Staggering around an enemy in this game actually feels so fucking satisfying, it's not even funny. You just did massive damage. Feels awesome. He nearly did. Nice. So Little Baba Wolf was a single digit two. Pardon? Sushi, I came at the woman I was five billion IQ. What are you talking about? The only reason I'm not as smart now is because I forget things. Spark ring. Interesting. It's gonna be lightning resistance, right? With mint. Lightning. Resistance 20%. Um, I think I'll dodge that for the time being. Maybe that's good in a certain fight coming up, but I think I'd rather just have the flat HP. Maybe that's a mistake, who knows. Okay. Uh, do we get good XP for these fights or nah? Because I might do a bit of leveling here as well. Alright, I've got an item here. What you got for me? Three potions. Why does that make me think there's a boss fight coming up? Oh well, we got a save a save point. Yeah, I could fight these guys, sure. Probably not gonna get very much for this. Chill music here, not gonna lie. Yeah, I agree. I think one of the best parts about this uh, game is the soundtrack. Something I've always said. Even when we talked about Final Fantasy XIII from a negative point of view, I've always been really optimistic about the, the music. I still listen to the music sometimes. I think the prelude is phenomenal. Just like the opening music, you know when you're on the home screen? Like to load the game or start a new game and all that jazz. Um, one thing I just want to quickly check: sends, uh, keyboard sends, gamepad controls. There's no way to actually on-screen button explanations controller. Maybe that'll make things better. We're gonna do that earlier, and I never actually did it. Enter? No, I don't want to enter yet. Can I even get through there? I'm not sure. Uh. Sure. Let's do it. Um, what happens if I try to get in there? Oh, we can enter it. Okay, shit. I kind of want to go back through. 
I feel like I missed some shit. Hold the phone, I'm not ready. I think this is just like a shortcut for like... I don't think this is actually anything important. I just wanted to make sure we've got everything we need. Oh, these guys have respawned. Oops. Nice. Jack, you are the best streamer I've ever seen in my life, so she says. That's why I will always watch you and always write king things in your chat. Thanks, Sushi. I just took a nap and I feel worse when I woke up, says Couch. Oh no. To be honest, I felt worse after sleeping in for too long this morning, Couch, so I kind of feel where you're coming from, homie. There's definitely an issue with oversleeping. Um, I tend to find I get really dehydrated. Oh, hey. Oh, hello. Have I used Libra on that guy before? No. He is weak to nothing. Let's get our stagger bar up, boys. Pew pew! Oh, he dodged it. Take a bit of healing here. In case this guy's got a big scary move. I don't think he does, but you never know. Oh, the nail. Not like this. There we go. Alright, kick his ass. Go ham. I want to be crystallized and sleep forever. <laughs> That's why your name's Couch Potato. It all comes full circle. I get it now. I'm so sleep deprived because my neighbor's dog. Oh no. Does your neighbor's dog like dancing the, the cha cha slide over and over again at like ridiculous times of the day? Couch, is that what you're telling me? Not like this. There was a shortcut for us to travel through there and dod, like skip all this, but I feel like this is good XP. Gonna make us stronger in the long run if we do this now. Alright, bitches, let's go. Kia. Couch Potato is an amazing name, says Jesse. I quite agree. Quite agree, guys. They just go to work and leave it. Oh no, feels bad, man. Ah, oh, that sucks. There'll be a lot of people that do that, I think. Leave their dog in the house all day. Does he bark all the time, Couch, or...? I feel bad, man, like, people that get, like, animals and then just fuck off to work all the time. I know that's how, like, they live, but, like... I think if you're gonna have, like, a, a, a happy animal life, you need to be able to, like, have a job where you can take your animal with you or some shit. I know that's not always possible for obvious reasons, but, like... I don't know. All right, we've got a lot of enemies coming up, so we'll buff ourselves a little bit here. Okay. Um, Ravager, we were going for. Let's go here. Can I get down to water? I think I can, right? Strength 10, that's good. Almost got 15 magic, that would have been nice. All right. Come on in, Vanille, you daft cow. All of the strength buffs, great. Just what I really wanted. Saz, buddy, what were you up to when last we met? Aero, okay. Some extra HP. Extra strength is nice. We're not going to get to the next part, though. I uh, hope you can suck a dick. I don't care about you just now. Hey! Call their work and bitch enough that they'll maybe take their dog. I mean, I don't know. Certain, I think certain pets, when trained well, can like sit in the house all day and be completely like comfortable and stuff. But if you don't look after the dog properly, then it is going to be a really noisy dog. I don't know. I feel kind of bad. There's like, there was a dog that used to live in my street. He was very well loved, by the way, and looked after. But I, he used to always like sit and watch 
from the window on the owners coming back every day. And you could see him sitting watching out the blinds just on the top of the couch, just waiting. What a life that dog must lead. Nice. Yeah, they're so bored and they bark at everything. Yeah, I can't imagine, dude. It'll be like being in a prison. Because I think as well, when people go away and leave their dog in, in the house, they probably just leave the dog in like two rooms. They'll maybe like leave it at the kitchen and the living room to walk around in. It must be quite rough. Pardon the pun. Rough. Um, Alright, speaking of dogs. Come here, you little fucker. Mm -hmm. My dog was like that back back when I worked. It must be hard, guys. The one of the one of the main reasons, and this is like a true story, right? I think that I could have a dog right now. Um, not in the flat that I live in, actually, because they've got a, like a no pets policy. But I think if if that rule didn't apply, me and Mrs. Wolfie could get a dog right now because I'm in the house all the time, so I'd be able to look after it. I think he'd be a good companion for being in the house by myself, and he would also help me keep fit because I take him for walks regularly. I, as a person, love walking naturally. Okay. I would easily be able to go for long walks with the dog, and I think it'd be cool, right? Um, but the one thing that holds me back, and this is so tragic, but like, you know when you go on holiday and you have to like try and explain to the dog that you're coming back and you're not abandoning it somewhere? That is so tragic, dude. Like, how are you supposed to explain to the dog that you're leaving for three weeks to go to fucking Mexico or something, right? And then the dog just has to be like, he's, he's seeing you walk away and closing the door on him. And it must just be so shit. Like, how does how is the dog meant to understand for like three weeks when you're not there that you, you haven't just fucked off? I think that's like mega sad. Uh, and I know people can can deal with that, but like, dude, I don't know. That feels really grim. Maybe if the dog is used to being by itself, it would be okay. But I don't know. He's quiet-ish, but he just stared out the window. My pupper only starts barking when people chap the door or clean on the windows. <laughs> He's probably just excited, or she's excited, I think, so she, your dog's a, a girl, right? My dog is a dick, he barks everything, but he's a rescue. So God only knows what he went through before me, says Corey. Yeah, there's that. I think I told you about the cats my auntie adopted, right? My auntie took two cats home from the shelter that were like really not well looked after before they were put in the shelter. And they're they're so crazy, like they're they're absolutely mental, like borderline feral. Like you try and feed them and they just they go crazy, just like <laughs> the whole time. Um, I I can't imagine. Some people the world has dicks in it, guys. Like the, some people on the planet are just dicks and they don't treat animals with like love and attention. And I just don't fucking understand how that's possible. <clears throat> How can you how can you look at a dog and not just not want to pat it and, and look after it? Like I don't understand. Some people are so fucked up, it's unreal. I'm not talking about people who go to work and leave their dog in the house, by the way. I'm talking about people who literally will like they'll get a dog and then abandon it in a park somewhere. Who does that? Like, who can I Just beyond me. Uh, I'm gonna like kill this ranger at the back here because he's doing my tits in. Would you behave yourself, mate? There we go. Right. Let's go. Yo, Doom, what's up, dude? One of my favourite games of all type. Good old old type, am I right, Doom? <laughs> all these sick playthroughs lately. Like Craigasm. I'm glad, man. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Do we feel like the battle volume's too loud when we're fighting, guys? I feel like I could turn that down a little bit. I keep hearing Vanille moaning loud as fuck. It's actually kind of weird. Hold on, I'll jump into uh, diversity and I'll actually just turn down the game a little bit. See, the thing is, this is one of these games that you get to the cutscene, you want the volume levels to be like loud so everybody knows what's going on, but then you go into the battle and Vanille's just in the background like, ah, 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 and I'm like, fuck's sake, Vanille, like, please. I want to hear the music, I want to hear the ambience of the game, I don't want to hear you getting fucking pounded 24-7. Uh, let's see here. If I just take this down to like, like here? 
It's maybe a little bit better. We'll see. That's it. It's been adjusted by like 10%. Hopefully this is okay. I kind of looked at my levels there and I realised the game volume was like way louder than it probably should have been. I'm glad you're enjoying the content then, man. I appreciate you saying that. That's why you get me to stay in your flat and dog sit, Sisushi. We FaceTime every few days. Uh, oh god, Jack. So don't make me think of that, says Jess. Yeah, I, d I don't know, man. I'm not trying to be like a douchebag or whatever, but like, going away and leaving your dog when you go on holiday is like... That's a fucking mega yikes, dude. Like, I'm not even trying to be a memer or anything. Like, I just... That would kill me. That's literally the reason why I don't want to get an animal, because I wouldn't want to leave it. Alright, I got one item here. Dude, I feel like there's a boss fight coming. Two Libra scopes. My uh, my mum and dad have talked about getting a dog for years. My dad really wants one. My sister is absolutely desperate for a dog. But my mum's like, mm, she's kind of in the middle of the road. Because my mum likes animals, but like, I think she's looking at it from a more practical point of view. How much effort is involved, you know? She's kind of like the strategic mind. But yeah. My neighbor's rescue cat visits me every day because I pet it one because I, p I patted it one time. Nice. My cousin's dog understands that when I come in with a bag, she knows I'm in charge for an undisclosed amount of time. That's quite cool. I mean, dogs are very clever animals. Don't get me wrong, guys. I think a lot of dogs will understand. If you're someone who goes traveling, or let's say you're a businessman that owns a dog and you have to travel a lot and you can't take the dog with you, the, do the dog probably settles into a life of, all right, Jim, the owner, is away for, you know, a week. So maybe those kind of dogs are fine, but... I don't know. If you're in the house all the time, the dog might get really upset and confused, and that that sucks. Uh, <clears throat> all right, I, th I guess we just go for this. Complete here. All right, nice. So lightning's done for the time being. Vanille, can I do anything else with you? What were we doing, medic? Hell yeah. Uh, Ravager, I guess. Yikes. I don't know where my obsession with the word yikes has come from, by the way. Oh, you are kidding me. Hello? Hello? What the? What? Come on, man. This, this, really? Really, though? Feels bad. I uh, hope, I guess, we just fucking upgrade your ass while we're here. Synergist is maxed out, so we don't have to worry about that. Medic. I'll give you 20 HP for sure. Uh, Ravager, maybe? Maybe I don't spend the points. Maybe I just hang on to the... Fuck, I don't know. He can use magic for sure. Alright. Saz, I'm so sad that you missed out on 7 AP there, but... Alright, let me save once once more, guys. I don't know what's going to happen when we get up here, but... We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, time... Oops. Vanille was my childhood crush, and my childhood... I mean, 15 Kappa. <laughs> really? I mean, Vanille's got like a lot of kindness about her. Um, I like how the Vanille is the only character with the Falsi uh, or the Lassi logo branded directly on her upper thigh. I mean, I feel like that's a, a bold choice, Japan, but I mean, whatever. Vanille, um, I'd smack someone in the head with a bat if I ever seen someone do that. I genuinely became my cousin's go to dog sir. He knows I'll do anything to spend time with doggos. I could sell you a pet lobster, guaranteed it wouldn't, it wouldn't give a shit if you left for a while. <laughs> A, a premium Cory Lobster. Seems ideal. Alright guys, let's have a look at this shit. We're finally out of the lake. Uh oh. Close. I want to look around. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Yeet.
Alright. Here we go. So, we have got Vanille, Saz, and Lightning in this fight. Uh, I probably want to use Libra on this thing ASAP. Um, techniques. Let's go ahead and do that. Try and gain some more info about this guy. He has weakness to air, which is excellent because Vanille does a lot of air damage. Wow, this guy's getting absolute. He's got. He's actually getting slapped, dude. When I unleash my entire combo here, look at this. Oh, dude, he's dead. Put him in the ground. See ya. That was nice. Oh, he's got a mouth on his ass. Phase one over. Oh, lightning. That was kind of badass. Barrier. How does this work again? Um, common drop, stagger, rare drop, none. Resistant. Still weakness to air though. Alright, get him. I don't know if I can break the barrier, I don't think I can. No, we just have to keep wailing on him for the time being, I think. Alright, the Aero Gang is just fucking wailing on this dude from the back. Hellstorm Bolt. Okay. Got a heal mode here. Back to the line of assault. I need to set it up. I need to set up some sort of command where like all three of my guys are in Ravager mode, like triple Ravager. I think I need to do that soon and make things a lot easier. All right, get him. Mm -hmm. My dog seems to know exact the exact time my mum comes home because he'll wait by the door at four thirty. Yeah, it's it's bizarre, but there's probably a lot of indicators to the animals. Um, to, to like help them understand. I mean, it could be anything. It could be the dog literally has some sort of time calculation going on in its brain, or it could be it knows that when it gets darker at night that your mum's, or sorry, who did you say? Yeah, your mum comes home. Maybe it's like some, when someone across the street's van arrives, maybe he knows that that means that because that person gets home 15 minutes before your mum that your mum's about to arrive. There's, there could be a whole, a whole number of things. What are these noises? Vanille sounds like a baby. Yeah, Vanille does sound, uh, she's unique for sure. English person pretending to be Japanese noises. This was the fight that taught me commando slowed the gauge degra uh, degradation. You almost never want three Ravagers. I think in this we would be alright. Although I guess three Ravagers, yeah like you're saying, commando st stops it from like reducing. I think if you get your bar halfway up it would be alright. Synergist roll is now available to Saz. Saboteur is now available to Vanille. Nice. Cool. So Vanille could be our saboteur slash uh, medic. Check it out. <laughs> Come on, up to it. Let's go. <laughs> How is that thing balanced on that? How does that make any sense? missing an engine you shouldn't be so negative and you shouldn't get your hopes up <laughs> that music though Stagger would wear off far too quickly, you're much better better off with Rav Rav Calm. I mean, we can set up multiple paradigms for sure. I'm going to try Triple Ravager, and uh, we'll see if you're right, Sushi. We'll see. Let's save our game here, sure. We'll make a new one. Uh, triple Rav is decent after hitting a few times with Calm versus Doom. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If you soften them up, get the bar high enough so that it can't drop in between your attacks or whatever, I think, I think Triple Ravager could be fine. 
But honestly, later on, you usually want a sab rav rav. A saboteur also slows down uh, degradation. Cool. And well, there you go. This whole time, Snow's been ice picking away. Funny if he just like cut the head out and walked away with the rest, just stuck. Let's see. You gonna lend me a hand or what? Oh. These guys look like the frogs at MGS4. Do you guys know the cutscene I'm talking about with the frogs? I love that cutscene. Oh, yikes. Snow. John Snow. Do you think Snow gets a buff in the icy environments, guys? Do you think he gets like an attack buff? I'm kidding. I know he doesn't go on to that. Alright. Dude, he's so fucking tanky, dude. Oh no, don't do that. Don't do that. Just attack him, please. I feel like I need to use a potion or I'm gonna die. Oh, these guys are tougher. Sure. Oh, that did not put us up more than I, as much as I thought it was gonna. Potion is weak sauce. Pew pew! No, you had plenty of potions left. You're fine. Oh wait, is this a summon? Oh, I remember this. Dude, he actually does get a buff in the snow. Is this Shiva? Oh hell yeah. Nothing like motorbike sisters. Am I right, chat? Mermaid more big sisters. Holy moly. What's happening? Oh my. Oh my, it's a thigh. Fine, what's up? Do we have to beat these guys? Is that how this works? Hello, uh, Idolon Combat, is that right? Idolon Battle, let's see. This tutorial explains how to fight the mighty beings known as Idolons. Defeat them in combat and their powers will be yours. Sure, let's go. At the start of the battle um, against an Idolon, a time limit is imposed on you via a Doom counter. Um, if you demonstrate your power to the Idolon, its Gestalt gauge will slowly fill. Attack the Idolon until the gauge is full and then press X to claim victory. All right. Attacks are not the only way to charge up the gauge using Libra Technique may provide you with hints. Defensive rolls are also effective against the Shiva sisters. Um, sure. Use Libra Technique. Yeah, Alright. Let's go ahead and do it. Alright. Uh, what else can I do then? Maybe I'll have to go into like Sentinel mode, is that what they want? Dude, I don't know. That, that kind of felt kind of shit. My bar. We've got 15 seconds left. Um... 
check your Libra. Um, chain resistance is normal. It's normal against everything. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, guys. But we're slowly losing. Um, have I supposed to use, like, the grenade ability or some shit? Come to me, Persona. Um, can he heal and send yet? Or is that, later in the, is that later in the game? I think it's later on. Dude, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. We're not ch charging this fast enough. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think you're meant to defend against their attacks. Well, she better fucking hurry up. Well, this sucks. That was pure combo. I mean, I think we've just timed this really bad, because now my gauge is going to run out and she's going to attack me again. Come on, then. Shit. Alright, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but... So when she's charging, you're supposed to attack her, correct? But then when she attacks you, I've just timed this fight so poorly. I didn't know that's what I was supposed to do. Time. Yikes. 25 seconds. I don't think... Come on, then. Dude, we're so close. If I just punch her now, can we get it? We're very close. Well, that's kind of no! AIDS. We were close. Really close, actually. The game did tell you defensive techniques are good against them. No, the game said attacking is not the only thing you can do against them. But uh, I didn't know I had to time it with our attacks. Well, that's kind of lame. Alright, let's go again, I guess. Do I have to fight the soldiers or do I just go into that? At least I know what to do now. Skip. There we go. Alright, we have to kill some soldiers. My bad, guys. I fucked up. We almost got it, actually. We almost made a comeback. We're just a little bit shy. Fucking shiver, bitches. Feels bad, man. Alright. Swark. <laughs> Amigo face me. Don't need to trade. I defended against them halfway through the fight in Sentinel mode, but I didn't time it so that um, she was attacking me when I did it. So I kind of gave up really quickly. I tried to like build some sort of attack against her or some shit, which was a mistake. Alright, well, let's use an ability here. Alright, we'll skip this, get back into the fight. We don't need the tutorial this time, we'll be more than fine, alright. Thank you, game. Skip. Alright. Alright, we'll just hold it this time. Wait, what? Why did that, r that just fucking disappear so fast? What the hell? Dude, whenever he steel guards normally like that, it goes down super slow. Why did it drain so fast? Dude, I am honestly baffled. Come on, then. Dude, why did they think this would be fun? Right. Okay. 
That's fine. We're getting there. Oh, no. I fucked up again. Cancel, 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 cancel. There we go. Alright, dinner. Yeah! Really cool. Didn't use Libra this time. I should have done that. Oops. Hey, that's cheating, and you know it. Revolt. Um. Jack needs to learn to pay attention to his UI. UI more like goodbye? What do you guys mean? Because he wasn't using Steel Guard. I'm very tired. Ignore bad jokes. Yikes, I fucked up again. There we go. Pew pew! There we go. Shave your pussy. Oh wait, just stop mode is there. Oh, yeah, it says push X, but it means square. It's X for Xbox controls, which is a bit of a pain. How'd you like this, Shiva? All right, Grant. Well, that was a bit fucking. That was fun. Cool! Shiva, uh, it's not gained an ATB gauge, which is nice. Cool. Alright, sorry that took so long. But we got there. Oh my. Twin sisters. I gotta hand it to you for taking them down. But don't gloat just yet. Might come a time you wish you'd let them end it. And made things easy. <gasps> More of you, huh? He's a let's see. Take him. Back off. You want to keep breathing? Shut up and come quiet. <sighs> oh, hit me harder, please, Fang. Just like that. Anytime you like. Alright. Wasn't that Makoto's persona? Snow's a ripoff, lol. Alright. GG. Dude, Fan can knock me out with a karate chop anytime. You just said I get said I just getting wheelbarrowed across. Don't worry, we're just taking her to the cooker. Stand down. Take him to my quarters, where I will interrogate him you naked. Two. Why are you helping them? If I were you, I'd worry about myself. Hm. Pog. All right, cool. Me 
Out of there. They're still on us. That was pod racing. Sorry. Wrong franchise. So sorry. Sorry. Okay, I've got peace out now. Have a good one all. Oh, and sweet red claw jack. Thanks, Corey. Thanks for being here, Corey. Thank you for the two gifted subs earlier as well, my dude. Alright, hugely appreciated. That goes a long way. Thank you. The Pope. There's no denying the enormity of the strain the purge placed on us all. But given the tens of millions of lives at stake, there truly was no alternative. The evil Pope. Primarch Disley stood by the move, stressing the necessity of the relocation. When asked about the possibility of future purges, the Primarch remained non-committal. Is that right then? He would seek counsel with the Falci Eden and weigh all options before making a decision. Yeah, that's right. If it makes the Sanctum look bad, it never even happened. In all the centuries since the War of Transgression, Cocoon has been spared pulse aggression and prospered for it. It is essential that we maintain this peace. That is the Sanctum's focus. We will continue employing every resource available to combat these threats to the harmony of our society. Meaning? We'll be running for the rest of our lives. Yeah, it wipes out all the infected. Mm-hmm. Um, who is this guy? <sighs> Evil Pope. I mean, what do they teach kids these days? He is Gallant Disley, the Sanctum Primarch. Murderer in chief. Mm -hmm. According to our insta Just poll, another nearly tool 90% of the of the citizens agree with the Sanctum's handling of the purge. 70% of respondents said they would also support additional purges for the need to arise. Yeah. Let's purge everybody. That'll fix it. Uh oh. Wee wee wee. Ah. Points for perseverance. So this is a different Falci, right, to the one in Pulse. This is the Sanctum Falci, not the Pulse. Oh, yikes. So we flew up from Cocoon into the sky. Um, we went from Cocoon down to Pulse, and now we flew back up past Cocoon to the surface again in the sky, I think. Uh, see, that's where I was confused when I was younger. But we're getting a, we're getting the hang of it, kind of. You know they're the bad guys because they use the word purge. <laughs> because they tell everybody the purge is good. The Star Wars movie is pretty sweet, Kappa. The Vile Peaks, Cocoon Deadlands. Alright, so we're still in Cocoon, but at least we're not in Pulse anymore. Oh, Vanille and Sass, what are you guys getting up to? Oh, angry dogs. Bad doggo. Whoa, guys, get a room. Fucking hell. 
Light in 1v1? I've uh, checked these guys out. Yeah, we have. All right. Oof! The backflip though. That backflip though. All right. Cool. Thanks. Vanille, please. What? No break? They're tracking us. I know that. I know that, but we aren't soldiers. We don't have your kind of stamina. You got enough to complain. Oh, Lightning, please. Oh, that's... Forget it! I think... Um... Oh? Oh, hello. I'd stick with her if I were you. Later then. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. Get going to where exactly? <sighs> the whole of cocoons against us. No matter how far we run, there's no escape. That thief clock. It's still a ticket. Does the uh, harmonica give every anyone else cowboy bebop vibes at all? Just even this with this with the stars in the sky in the background with the harmonica. Does anybody else get bebop vibes? There's still time. You give up too easy, old man. I'm not giving up. There are some things that you just can't change. A kid like you would not understand. Yeah, I'm a kid. I don't understand. Well, I guess we can be fugitives together. Oh, oh. Wow. oh. You ready? Guys. Ready. Fucking hell. <laughs> Love a weird dynamic going on there with Saz and Vanille. Achievement unlocked, instrument of fight. Apparently. Hey, we're playing as Saz and Shall we then? Apparently there's new merchandise unlocked also. Saz actually runs so ridiculous in this game, guys. He looks like he's literally like, I don't even know how I would explain what this run is, but nobody has ever run like this. He runs with a straight back. You know how most people kind of arch themselves forward when they run? They run forward, right? He kind of like runs with his back straight and his arms going backwards and forwards. It's actually the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. Maybe him and Vanilla are meant for one another. Although I don't really know how they age up wise. It's kind of weird. Uh, we can go left or right. Oh shit. Well, we're not going that way. Hmm. The line. hmm. No, we're still on Cocoon, yeah. We're just on like an upper level now. We're closer to the surface. Um. Oh, more flashbacks? I th think this is to do with... I actually don't know. Let me just shut up and watch it. Vanille. Hey, you. what's up? That sounds good. Cool. Day 11, the seaside city of Bodom. Meanwhile, Sarah and Snow are crashing into things on their scooter. Oh, here's Lightning in the same clothes as she always wears. That's kind of gross, Lightning. You look dreamy, Baron. 
Wishing on fireworks, were you? <laughs> and you call yourself a soldier. Ah. Sorry, Lieutenant. <laughs> but I really don't think guard duty is my calling, sir. Well, lucky for you, your shift just ended. Back it up and go home. But, sir... Psycom found something in the vestige nearby. <laughs> they don't want the Guardian Corps here stepping on their toes. They found something. <laughs> I'm sure you heard about the accident at the Uriday Gorge Energy Plant and how it has the Psycom lads in a tizzy. Yeah. More incident than accident. Something pulse related. <laughs> You're taking tomorrow off? Sir, for my birthday, sir. My sister, she insisted on it. <laughs> 21, huh? Maybe Sheesh. it's a good time to send off that letter of recommendation for officer training. Oh, the hand on the shoulder. Lieutenant. You're past due for a promotion, Farron. Think of your sister and your future. And uh, keep your nose out of trouble. Out of Psycom business, you mean? Yeah, nothing good will come of it. Nothing but grief. Whoa, look at that one! <laughs> Whoa. The fireworks are cool too. Interesting. He runs like an old person. Wolfie, if you like Cowboy Bebop, you should check out Super Robot Wars T. For now, I guess. Should we wait? They'll catch up, eventually. Robo Wars T couch? What's that like? Is that an anime? Hope has uh, access to the Synergist role, which is excellent. Uh, really powerful role in the game. Um, currently Hope can use Protect spell, which raises the target's resistance to physical damage. As he develops in the role of Synergist, Hope will also be able to learn Shell, which boosts magic resistance. With both of these spells at his disposal, Hope will be able to help the party endure a wide variety of attacks. Um, Sure. Alright guys, I think what we want to do is just Watch check out. back here real quick. Yeah, the gang's kind of lost behind. So we got a backstory there the for Lightning. Came from Pulse, didn't which is kind of cool. Um, hop over here, grab this. And then I think what we'll do here guys is we'll uh, power up Hope a little bit and then make a save file. Fat Lando. He does look like Lando. He does a little bit. A, li a little bit. <laughs> Fat Lando. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Fat Lando. Jeez. That one was funny. Think of your sister as she careens through the fireworks in front of you. Mm -hmm. SRWT is a big crossover strategy with all the robot anime and Cowboy Bebop clan. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Nice. I'll add it to the list. Alright, I'm gonna open this bitch. Librascope again. Right, I'll tell you what, let's have a quick look at Hope really, really, really briefly. Because Hope's got a lot of dynamic kind of abilities about him. He does he's kinda glass cannon and he doesn't do a lot of, well, he's not even glass cannon, he's just glass. But he's got some cool stuff about him. Um Paradigms, what have we got? Um, what have we got right now, actually? Can I look? No, I'd have to be in a battle. Alright, fuck it. Lightning's got quite a lot of uh, points to spend as well, so... Your character can now develop further. Sweet. So, in terms of Ravager, she can go all the way up to here. Get Spark Strike, physically attack for lightning damage, that's pretty cool. Um, we've also got Aqua Strike as well, which is nice. Uh, let me go back. What else? 25 HP. So that's all buffs and some abilities. What does Commando have based on? HP, Strength and a uh, Fault Siphon. Slightly charged ATB gauge upon attacking target afflicted with status ailments. Um, that's alright I guess. I think I will look at having a... Uh, Lightning as a Ravager first and foremost, I think. I don't know if this is a mistake or not, but um, we should be alright. There we go, there's Spark Strike available. I think we take our Commando points afterwards. Don't know if I'll regret that or not, but 
for the time being, we aight. Alright, Hope, let's have a look at your synergy abilities, because you've got some new stuff. Um, so let's go up. Magic, and here's Shell. So there we go, magic resistance is good. I think sh uh, he will just proceed to put, like upgrade these by himself when he fights. What medic abilities has he got up here? Does he have any? No, just abilities, just status points. I want that. Ravager, what else can he do? We'll pick that up and then give him arrow, yeah. We'll try and give him arrow anyway. Give him some wind damage, that'll give him some more flexibility when we play with him. Interesting. Alright, two two big spells picked up for Hope, that's pretty good. Pleased with that. Um, Equipment. Hope's still got an iron bangle, can I make that better? Silver bangle. Yeah, they've both got it. Must have picked up another one. Alright, we could potentially buff with something else, but I don't know. Does the shop have any new gear? I just want to quickly peek at that shit. Um, here we go. So the Unicorn Mart is still the same. We don't have to worry about that. Up in arms. Oh, here we go. Blazefire Saber. Uh, Vega. Wild Beer. Are these some of the ones that we already have, though? These are like, yeah, we've already owned these. We don't have this, though, in the Narta. That's for hope. Did I miss an item, perhaps? Maybe I missed that. Hmm. And the outfire is what we got here. Silver Bangle, Power Wristband, Black Belt. Uh, increases physical resistance by 10%. Magic resistance by 10%. We could buy a Magician's Mark and give it to hope, potentially. Or we could just chill. We don't actually have a lot of gill right now. Uh, you guys can't see it, but the gill is actually located in the bottom left under my webcam. So if we were to spend money on any of these things, we would lose all of the money we've, a we've assembled so far. But for the most part, I don't think it matters too much. We've upgraded these guys quite a decent amount. I think, guys, this is a good spot for us to call it quits for the time being and just chill here. We'll come back to this tomorrow, I think. I haven't streamed for nearly as long as I would have liked it to today, but that's because I got a really slow start at the beginning uh, because I slept in for too long and, you know, stayed up too late last night playing video games. So I apologise for that. But um, it just means that the first VOD will be nice and compact. So if anybody is watching this, hopefully it makes the video, um, first of all, a bit of better quality because it won't be compressed as much. And also, um, hopefully it'll be a nice kind of more bite sizable kind of viewing if anybody is going to decide to watch this playthrough in the future. But yeah. Um, you can check your paradigms in the paradigm menu. Blaze fire is for magics. Yeah, well, so was obviously I I know in this game you can generate your own paradigms. You can customize them to tailor them to exactly how you want. I'll wait until we have more people together in our team before I start looking at any of that shit, and we'll leave that for tomorrow. But uh, I don't know what chapter we actually got. To. Is there a way for me to check that out real quick? If I could just do a quick catch up here, dialogue, events. We're up to chapter four. Um, there's so much information here that you can look at if you want to. Um, yeah, chapter 4. So here we are here. Their airship damaged during the escape from the army. The Lassie are forced to make crash landing in uh, the Vile Peaks, the Lassie being the team. Accustomed to the rigours of conflict, Lightning immediately sets off in the out distance, uh, to outdistance any pursuit. Uh, trailed by hope, exhausted and on the brink of despair, Saz cannot bring himself to follow. He knows the army will never stop chasing them, and even if they do evade capture, they face transformation into Seath. How can they complete a focus they don't understand? So, that's where we left off, guys. We'll probably use some of these kind of um, chapter recurrences to kind of catch up when we start the playthrough tomorrow and give everybody a bit of an update. So, if they do end up watching the VODs or whatever, it's a bit more understandable, but... That's us. The gameplay is actually, the game's not running too bad on PC. I was kind of nervous, but it's actually doing all right. Um, so yeah, we'll be back tomorrow playing some more Final Fantasy 13. Tomorrow is Friday, so that should be a, a nice day for, you know, hopefully getting up and starting at a good time and whatnot. But thanks for being here, folks. To all the new people who have given me follows and subscriptions on YouTube today, thank you so much. We do have a community Discord. If anybody's at all interested in joining, you can do so. And uh, yeah, I'll quickly, last but not least, shout out some of the gifted subs that we got today because we had a few. We had a host coming through from both Spyro and Jimmy the Hot Pocket earlier on today, which was great. Riley also came through with a host. After that, we got a gifted sub from Jcram to the other 118, which was awesome because the other 118 spent quite a, amount, a decent amount of time here hanging out today, which was awesome. Gave a ton of good advice, so that was appreciated. 
and also subbed Jimmy Hot Pocket and also Couch came back to us as well. So welcome back, Couch Potato, on that one. That was four months you've been hanging out with us, which I really appreciate, my dude. Lastly, uh, Corey also gifted two subs. One, first of all, to Vince, who came back for eight months, and then Corey also gifted one over to Emaxter for their first month with us on the Wolfpack as well. All these uh, subscriptions go a long way to helping me kind of survive as a streamer, guys, and also um, allow us to buy some of the games that we kind of we buy and play on streaming and obviously all that good stuff. So, thanks for hanging, guys. That's me. I'm a shop and uh, peace out. But I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. We'll be back 10 a.m. UK. I'll hang out with all you then. All right. Have a good one. Take it easy.